the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Kalkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guest team at kalkine.com.au. Why is LimeWire making a splash in the NFT space? Remember that cryptocurrencies are associated with a high degree of risk, so it goes without saying that you should do your homework before investing. LimeWire is a name that all Y2K teens would profoundly remember. The platform originally a peer-to-peer -peer file sharing service provider has now undergone a complete revamp. It's made its comeback. And what comes with this new version? Well, let's find out. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm Sage for Calkine Media. The revamped version of LimeWire emphasizes music NFTs. This might resemble the company's previous stint when it enabled free peer-to-peer -peer music sharing. The two key collections right now on LimeWire are the platform's original series and a yet-to-be-launched digital asset linked to musician Travis Barker. It tested its originals NFTs ahead of going live. And now the official website confirms that many of the assets from this collection have been sold to collectors. LimeWire Originals has 10,000 assets, resembling some other popular NFT projects like that of CryptoPunk and Bored Ape Yacht Club. Other music NFTs available on LimeWire include Sulya Boy and Samuel Herb. Some others, including singer Brandy, are yet to be made available for sale. One of the primary reasons behind the recent spike in LimeWire's popularity could be its nostalgic branding technique. A new promotion video shared by the company has stirred the netizens. It starts with two kids using LimeWire's file sharing services to download music on a desktop. The grown-up versions then use the LimeWire NFT platform to get hold of music NFTs. Even though LimeWire is now making waves in the NFT circles, the space is led by names like Beeple, Pack, and CryptoPunks. Beeple is an artist who collaborated with singer Madonna on her recent NFT auction project. Beeple and Pack remain the highest priced NFT artists. The asset of CryptoPunks and its close competitor, Bored Ape Yacht Clubs, have also invited lucrative bids, with some assets having fetched millions of dollars. Thanks for watching this report. Now, if you do like the information, let us know by giving it a like, sharing and commenting below. Please subscribe to the channel. If you press the bell icon, you'll be notified every time Kalkine releases a new video. But for more articles, head to the website kalkinemedia.com. Sage here reporting for Kalkine Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Hello and welcome back to Kalkine TV. This is another edition of Executive Corner Expert Talks. And today we'll be exploring the first hotels DAO on the blockchain, D-Hotels. The community-driven hotel marketplace allows users to own and manage a part of a hotel. And joining us to share their insights is co-founder and CEO Diamante Jankowski. Welcome to the show. It's great to have you with us. Good morning. Thanks so much for inviting us. So it's, it's a pleasure, pleasure to have to be you here. on. It's great to be here and pleasure to have you on. Now, to kick things off, could you walk us through how exactly your revolutionary platform works? 
Absolutely. So um, firstly, I would like to start with our mission. Why we, did, why we created the platform and what was our initial idea. So uh, since I was coming from the hospitality sector before and uh, one of my CEO and co-founders, Gabriela, she was from um, investment banking and blockchain. So we thought that that's a very great idea to combine those things into one and to let people and to educate people to invest. So we wanted to create a very easy platform which stands on the real physical assets, but it's combined as well with the crypto and the blockchain. So we decided to tokenize the hotels and to let people, ordinary people like my or your mom to invest by easily clicking two, two buttons on her phone. So um, also, um, what is the hotels all about shortly? So we are tokenizing hotels and basically um, all the hospitality real estate. We are letting others to tokenize their real estate as well. And uh, that's going to be very easy way for many, many people to invest to, you know, looking at the, today's economic situation. Um, we believe that it's mandatory to educate and more and more people to show how it is, how all the risks should be, you know, diversified and what are the profits and, uh, Basically, we are willing, you know, I think that my colleague, uh, Gabriela Sio, will uh, join us here today as well. So she will explain a little bit more in details how the model could work. But at the moment, as I said, that the hotel is a DAO. So that means that people will not only own the hotel, but they will have the decision-making power, meaning that it's going to be decentralized management. People will have ability to, for example, issue the notes that, okay, we don't like the branding of the hotel, let's change it. Everybody's going to vote and um, then we'll uh, have to implement the same. So uh, the thing is that the DAO principle is not that uh, our team or anyone on top going to decide which hotel to buy or, for example, which, how to manage it. It's going to be all left to the, our token holders, meaning uh, our investors, right? So, you know, many people may ask, so why I cannot buy Kempinski shares? Why can't I buy Marriott shares? So the thing is that, of course, you can. You'll have um, some stocks, but you won't be able to say anything. You won't be able to get a chance to be involved into the process, right? Um, for Bifas, you have the ownership of the real hotel, meaning that the property, the real property belongs to you. And of course, we have all decision-making powers, meaning on uh, strategic questions, uh, brandings, and uh, management. That's incredible. I mean, it sounds like you've had a great journey so far and really fascinating adventure there. So is that the benefit, would you say, of having a decentralized hospitality sector? Well, um, in our team, we do have the general manager of Kempinski uh, uh, other actually other um, hospitality experts. So we believe that these days um, the decision-making process is very slow and the implementation is even more slower. So um, that's the insights what we received you know, from uh, the investors, from the experts. And we believe that this concept, this DAO concept would make things way easier, way faster, and you'll get the how, to, how can I express myself? Uh, you have the insights from the customers uh, because people who will own the token holders, I'm pretty sure that everyone would like to visit uh, their own hotel at least for a week uh, to stay there and to have a good time. So, you know, once you're staying at your own hotel, you're having a different view and you're looking with a different eyes, right? So that's the thing that people will be able to issue the token, no, not a token, issue the note and other investors will vote and all the decisions will be made way, way, way faster. Absolutely. That is an amazing concept. Uh, it'd be great to be able to do that and have that governance option, I think. That would be incredible to be realized. And uh, I understand that D Hotels offers DeFi vaults through which anyone can really invest in hotel real estate, which is incredible to say the least. But do investors need to be knowledgeable on hotel management? Well, I believe that yes. Um, people 
who are involved into the business, meaning that they are investing into it. We believe that they are interested and they want to have the right to decide. So uh, we believe that it's a very important part and um, that's why our investors are very active and uh, they believe in, in us, uh, they believe in the idea and we believe that it's gonna be the big thing in the future. We have a really great examples, for example, FriesDAO. Uh, so these guys are doing pretty much the same thing on the restaurants, on the fast food chains. We can see a very, very successful example on that so we are partnering with them and looking from their perspective uh, we see the very bright future i don't doubt that it is amazing to see how web3 is really shaking up every sector specifically hospitality rather and uh sounds like you'll be getting in on that as well now could you shed some light for us on your native token and its utility absolutely so basically our token is utility token so our token holder, holders will have two options, as I said before. First one is to own the real estate, the real hotel tokens. So this concept is already legalized in Switzerland, in Cyprus, in Estonia. So there is nothing in a gray area as it was before, because uh, now the laws are there and the whole process is very clear for us. So token holders will own the real hotel, real estate, also, they will have ability to manage it. So these are the two parts, right? Also, um, our hotels will be on a metaverse. So people will have a, a chance to walk through them on a metaverse to see what they want to change and they can issue the note on the metaverse as well. The third thing is that it's gamified and uh, it's going to be very easy to issue a note. Then everybody's going to vote, uh, we'll have a chance so our investors can uh, discuss with them. So it's going to be a very interesting platform that it's not existing as yet, but we are on the process and we believe that uh, it's going to be a very, very great chance for ordinary people, as we say, who are not very much into crypto and a blockchain to learn, to invest and to get profits. Absolutely. It is certainly a revolutionary idea that you've got there. And at the moment, as I understand it, you're undertaking several funding rounds, if I'm correct, which is certainly exciting stuff. What can we look forward to seeing from D Hotels over the coming months and beyond? Yes. Yeah, so uh, at the moment, we are uh, doing our pre-sale. Uh, so actually, um, we are speaking with the investors who would like to participate in this. So. Um, Everybody is welcome. You can always contact us for the hotels token and we can, you know, explain the whole details um, more and um, we'll go it, you know, more into it. So uh, our team is very big. Everybody has uh, many years experience in the business. So um, I think that everyone who want to join and to become the hotel owners you can you're welcome you know to join us sounds like an incredible opportunity there and uh, you've got an incredible uh, few months ahead of you and beyond uh, just judging by your roadmap there so wish you all the best with that and we'll definitely keep an eye out for all your future developments but so uh, that said thanks very much for joining us today Dave Monte it's been really great to hear your insights Pleasure to have you on the show. If you've just joined us, that was the co-founder and CEO of the game-changing Hotels DAO, D Hotels. And if you missed any part of that chat, you can catch the full interview here on our YouTube channel at Calkine Media. Make sure to stay tuned. I'm Holly Shields reporting for Calkine TV. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Calkine Media's growing platform, Calkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Calkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at calkine.com.au.
popular online game Minecraft created NFT Worlds in February this year, and with NFT Worlds, it now brings Minecraft into the Web3 era, combining the popular online game with the metaverse. The project is split into a thousand unique NFT worlds, where NFT holders can create play-to-earn metaverse experiences. Minecraft is a popular online 3D computer game where players can build structures across a variety of different environments and terrains. Set in different virtual worlds, the game involves gathering resources, building structures and then also combat. Minecraft was first released in 2011 and has since become the best-selling video game of all time and it can be played across a variety of platforms, ranging from smartphone to PC. As a combination of Minecraft and NFTs, NFT Worlds uses the Minecraft engine, which allows players to use tools such as World Edit and MC Edit to build virtual worlds. NFT Worlds is currently one of the more in-demand NFT projects, with more than 100 million users worldwide. Meanwhile, NFT Worlds' native token, WILD, or World, has performed quite well of late, with a rise of 7.26% in the past five days compared to the wider crypto market, which is down by 0.38% in the same period. The Investors Observer, which offers a sentiment score on a wide variety of cryptocurrencies, has offered a very bullish rating for NFT Worlds over the past five days, based on its volume and price movement. But what about you? Are you bullish on NFT Worlds? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and share the video. For more content, you can subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, Continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. What is a recession and what are the types of recession? A recession is a macroeconomic phenomenon characterized by a dip in economic activity, a fall in aggregate demand and soaring unemployment levels for an extended period of time. While some experts define the onset of recession as a negative economic growth rate for two consecutive quarters as a technical recession, the COVID-19 pandemic rang bells of a technical recession across the globe in 2020. During a recession, the economy faces sluggish retail sales, crushed consumer confidence and a dip in business sentiments job losses, reduced manufacturing output and sales, with even a decline in the nation's overall gross domestic product, or GDP. Economic monitoring agencies such as the National Bureau's Business Cycle Dating Committee maintains a chronology of United States business cycles in the forms of peaks and troughs. And while the peak is defined as the month in which several macroeconomic indicators reach their highest level, a trough is identified as the month in which the economic activity reaches a low point and begins to rise again for a sustained period. The period between a peak and a trough is a contraction or a recession, and the period between the trough and the peak is an expansion. So here are some of the leading indicators of looming threats of economic recession. Negative economic growth rate, yield curve inversion, sharp stock market declines, dip in unemployment, asset bubbles, sudden economic shock, excessive debt and high inflation levels. Because the US is the world's largest economy and has robust financial and trade linkages with several other economies, most of these internationally synchronized recession outbreaks also coincide with US recessions. While there's no specific classification system to define recession shapes, economists tend to refer to four key shapes of recession and the resultant economic recovery. V-shaped recession. Recessions that start with a sharp fall in economic growth but then discover a bottom and rebound strongly are categorized under V-shaped recessions. U-shaped recession. 
These are recessions that commence with a relatively slower fall in economic growth, but then stay at the bottom for multiple quarters before turning around and reviving. These are classified under a U-shaped recession. A W-shaped recession. Recessions that initially start with a V-shaped recession but then turn back down again after exhibiting false signs of recovery, demonstrating a down-up, down-dip shape akin to W are deemed W-shaped recessions. L-shaped recession. Recessions in which economic growth quickly falls and fails to stand back up are termed as L-shaped recessions. Though V-shaped recessions are a best case scenario for an economy, L-shaped recessions that offer no hope of economic revitalization are believed to be the worst case scenario. Thanks for joining us on the report. Now if you do like this information, let us know by giving a like, sharing and commenting on the video below and subscribe to the channel. Do press the bell icon, you'll be notified of the most recent videos from Kalkine. But for more articles, head to the website kalkinemedia.com. My name's Sage for Kalkine Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Welcome to Expert Talks by Calcane TV. I'm Sage. Today's guest is Jordan Tentori, CEO of Zemi Limited. For some background, Zemi Limited is an innovative Australian Internet of Things company that targets to enhance the connectivity of electrical devices from homes through to high rises. So to find out more about this expanding and pulsing industry, we have invited the CEO himself, Jordan Tentori, to share insights with us today. Welcome to the show, Jordan. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Glad to have you join us, Jordan. So, Internet of Things is your biz, and hasn't it been buzzing in recent times? Indeed, it has been buzzing. <laughs> um, it's actually quite incredible. When you think it was only a few generations ago we saw electricity adopted in the home, from lighting to hot water and appliances like the radio and the TV, and then in less than a lifetime we've seen computers and the Internet and smartphones changing how we communicate, take photos and do business, and even stream entertainment. And now the IoT, or the Internet of Things, is a pretty simple concept where anything that can offer economy or sustainability or convenience or entertainment in turn becomes a device connection opportunity. So it's a very exciting time, and you've seen Google and Apple and Amazon changing this with the smartphone now, and voice control which we've learnt from a young age. And I think that anyone can enjoy technology from young to old. And it's really seeing the IoT grow at an incredible pace. To answer your question, there's more connected devices on the planet today than people, with analysts expecting the device count to triple by 2030. Wow, and 2030 is really not so far away when we come to think of it. Totally. There's been some, like you said, it, it's made the life of elderly people so much easier, which you'd think doesn't really match up. But it's wonderful how you said the young and the old can enjoy this. How do you see the IoT segment growing to the scale that it's expected to in the coming years? Yeah, I think, look, the, the growth has definitely put uh, pressure on supply pipeline. Um, there's been significant growth in different industries. Um, things like electric cars are using nine times the components now. Uh, the world is rolling out 5G connectivity, towers and phones and everything being upgraded. But also in the recent two years, we've seen that consumer demand with many people working from home, spending more time at home. You know, the demand of consumer electronics um, and indeed smart home or connected IoT devices is growing significantly. So it is putting pressure 
on supply chains. Um, for Zimi, we've, we've definitely had to react to this. We've established a bonded inventory of key components to help mitigate this risk. But initiatives such as the CHIP Act passed by the US Senate last year, which includes 52 billion of federal funding, is helping decentralise supply of electronics and, and, and we hope it will improve in time. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jordan. Zimi has been expanding as well with the growth in the sector and its product range has evolved and grown with the introduction of multi-dimmer switches to its family of smart switches. What are the next plans for expanding the product portfolio, please? Yeah, we first introduced PowerMesh, which was a family of smarter switches, which quite easily add smart control in any home with your existing lighting, fans, doors or appliances simply by swapping the switch. So we've made announcements by expanding that range, um, but we've also announced Sonoa, which is our smartest range of premium glass switches with the power to do more. This includes our new accessibility range, which enables us simple things for everyone. Um, some things we take for granted, people with disabilities, it's really satisfying seeing that everyone can benefit from these devices in the home or office. And generally, people are becoming more educated now on the many smart things that they can do. We're also, yes. we're also expanding our portfolio into safety. Uh, we recently announced the new Zimmy Smoke Connect. Uh, in Australia, smoke alarms are indeed legislated and we wanted to innovate with connected smoke alarms. So we've got the new Smoke Connect that can even make a phone call too. So no matter where you are in the world, if there's smoke detected in your home, you're the first to know. So this is just one of the many exciting developments we have coming up. So yeah, look out for more, more announcements from Zimmy. That's great. It's hard not to be passionate about what you do when it's evolving at such a great pace, expanding at such a great pace and coming out with such fantastic safety features as well. So how is your company placed on research and development within the IoT market? Yeah, the smart home or smart spaces is evolving more than ever before. Apple, Google, Amazon and other companies have come together over the last couple of years to implement a new connectivity standard called Matter. And this just means that there's a seamless connection between all the different companies' devices, which will make it easier for people to adopt this in the home without the complications of how to set it all up. Zimmy is indeed developing a new Matter module um, and we'll roll that out in our devices in the year ahead. But we also look to expand to global markets where we can fast track other manufacturers to market with this solution. Secondly, we are investing significantly into AI or artificial intelligence, which can provide more value from the devices as they gain the intelligence in your lifestyle. I'm very passionate about this topic because the intelligence of automating things or the very little things, it could be just simply avoiding a house fire by turning off a heater that was accidentally left on or manage precious resources like electricity and water for a more sustainable lifestyle that's based on your behaviour. So plenty of uh, developments and very exciting to be part of it. That's great to hear. So as we reach the end of the discussion, and before we hear about your goals for the next 12 months or your vision, can we talk a little bit about tips for use and safety, especially in regards to manufacturer passwords. I think that's where sometimes people can fall short to um, exploiters of the situation and, and the products. How can people avoid um, the exploitation from bad actors? Yeah, look, security is always a big concern. And uh, I think what's really good is uh, technologies like Bluetooth or proximity sensing is making things much safer in the home. Uh, the elimination of passwords just by you being present uh, is a, a really solid way of security and it means that people can't hack from elsewhere in the world. But all of these smart home products are essentially hosted on Amazon and Google and share the same security and encryption that we see with banking and probably other areas that are more desirable by hackers than perhaps turning your light off or on in your smart home. Right. Thank you so much for clarifying that. So where do you see your company to be in 12 months from now? Yeah, well, at Zimmy, we've done a lot of the hard work to position us for our next phase of growth. And the next 12 months is exciting indeed. We've established an excellent partner network in Australia. Uh, we have Trader Electrical distributing to over a thousand electrical wholesalers, which support the electricians across the country, plus over a hundred beacon lighting stores where customers can go in and get help with the design of their smart home. 
Harvey Norman Commercial, another important partner, are providing solutions from the home to high rises. And finally, we've partnered with Steelline, Australia's largest door manufacturer, and Polyair, Australia's largest air conditioning manufacturer, and they're providing the industry what's required to really get everybody enjoying this technology, uh, indeed from their homes and in their office. So I'm really excited for the year ahead. And more importantly, I'm very grateful to be a part of this very exciting time as everything that can be connected is. Thank you so much, Jordan. Best of luck with your plans moving forward and for joining us today. We appreciate your time. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. If you just joined us, we had a very interesting discussion with Jordan Tentori. He's a CEO of Zimi Limited, an Internet of Things business. If you missed any part of the discussion, please head to Calkine Media's YouTube channel and keep watching Calkine Media for more of these expert talks and live market updates till the next episode. Stay apprised and invest wise with Calkine Media. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Calkine Media's growing platform, Calkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Calkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guest team at calkine.com dot au The year 2022 hasn't been very kind to UK stock market, but the market has still managed to stay afloat despite facing rough times. Since the beginning of the year, UK's FTSE 100 index has lost around 4%, but even after that, it's performed relatively well compared to other global markets. So in light of this, let's take a look at three FTSE 100 volume leaders that investors may want to keep an eye on. The first one is Lloyds Banking Group. Shares of the UK-based provider of financial services, Lloyds Banking Group rallied by 1.43% on Friday. Lloyds currently offers investors a dividend yield of 4.8% per year, and its EPS also lies in the positive zone at 0.08. But the stock's year-to-day return and one-year returns stand at negative 12% and negative 12 as well, respectively. Another stock to keep tabs on is Barclays. Shares of the globally operating banking company rallied by 2.05% on Friday. Barclays currently offers investors a dividend yield of 4% per year and its EPS also sits in the positive zone at 0.38. The stock's performance, however, has depreciated lately and its year-to-day return and one-year return stands at around negative 20% and negative 12% respectively. Another one is Vodafone Group. Shares of the leading British telecom firm rallied 0.96% on Friday. Vodafone has enjoyed better luck lately with both a year-to-day return and one-year returns giving positive returns of 15% and 9% respectively. And that concludes our list. Now that you're up to speed, hit that bell icon to stay up to date and boost your financial IQ. I'm Holly Shields reporting for Calcane Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Privacy coins are cryptos that have two primary objectives to provide users with privacy and data security. Now, these coins also use blockchain technology in a distributed ledger. While most crypto transactions on a blockchain are generally public, 
They are recorded on a public ledger. Privacy coins, as the name suggests, provide anonymity during transactions. Blockchain transactions are hard to conceal from public view, so it's easy to identify an individual's address. On the other hand, privacy coins use a cryptocurrency tool to hide the user's wallet balance and address. Let's look at the top three privacy coins under one US dollar. Oasis is a leading privacy-focused scalable layer one blockchain. Its protected architecture offers a high throughput and low gas fees. The next gen Web3 platform powers applications related to decentralized finance, GameFi NFTs and the metaverse. Oasis had a market cap of $257 million and its fully diluted market cap is $511.3 million. The token's maximum and total supply are $10 billion and its current circulating supply is $5.03 billion. It returned 5.93% gains in the last 30 days and it can be traded on Binance, KuCoin and Gate.io. Now, Status is a mobile and desktop-based decentralized OS browser and a messaging system. It allows users to interact with a network from anywhere and at any time. It's like client Ethereum node allows access to Ethereum dApps through an application installed on the user's mobile phones and tablets to send encrypted texts or access their wallets. Its market cap is $103.7 million. Its fully diluted market cap is $203.6 million. It returned 19.22% gains in the last 30 days. The token's total supply is $6.8 billion and its current circulating supply is $3.47 billion. The token is traded on exchanges such as Bittrex, OKX and Upbit. Now, Verge is a blockchain that provides decentralized payment networks with a feature to integrate the privacy tool Tor into its Verge Pay wallet for keeping transactions anonymous. Its market cap is $58.14 million and its fully diluted market cap is over $58.31 million. The token's maximum supply is $16.55 billion and its total and current circulating supply is around $16.5 billion. It returned 18.42% gains in the last 30 days. The XVG crypto can be traded on exchanges such as Binance, Hit BTC and Huboy Global. The crypto market is volatile and prone to various cybersecurity risks. Investors should carefully evaluate the digital assets and the broader market before investing in cryptos. Now, if you like the information in this video, you can like, share and comment on it. You can also subscribe to our channel and you can press the bell icon for notifications for our latest videos. I'm Rachel signing off for Kalkine. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calkine TV. The Australian Council of Superannuation Investors, or AXI, has released a report on the salaries of some of the biggest company CEOs. Salaries on the list of the top 10 range from $9 million to hundreds of millions. Despite temporary pay cuts for CEOs during the height of the pandemic, most salaries have increased overall. And in this video, I'll take you through the top five highest paid CEOs of ASX listed companies, starting with number five, Brad Banducci, the CEO of Woolworths Group, with a salary of 11.7 million Aussie dollars. Woolworths, the retail giant, has seen booming business despite the loss in consumer demand during the pandemic. The company has long been established as one of the biggest supermarket chains in Australia. And Woolworths has a rich history and has been in business since the 1920s. Brad has been the CEO of Woolworths since February 2016 and has seen his salary increase consistently throughout his time in charge. Number four, Shamara Wickramanayaka, the CEO of Macquarie Group, with a salary of 14.6 million Aussie dollars. Macquarie CEO Shamara is the highest paid woman and person of colour in the position of CEO in Australia. The 60-year-old assumed the role in December 2018, following a career as a lawyer and banker. She was ranked 24th in the list of the most powerful women in the world for the year 2021 by Forbes. Number three is Greg Goodman, the CEO of Goodman Group, with a salary of 37.1 million Aussie dollars. 
Goodman Group is an infrastructure company and has become one of Australia's largest property businesses. The company is engaged in building property parks around the world, with many of them being situated here in Australia. Greg Goodman founded the company back in 1989 and the company was then listed on the ASX in 1995. Greg has been the CEO since the company's inception. And the second highest earning CEO of an ASX listed company is Paul Perrault, the CEO of CSL Limited with an incredible salary of 58.9 million Aussie dollars a year. CSL has been one of the most crucial companies to operate during the pandemic as it significantly contributed to developing the COVID vaccine. Over the years, CSL has become the world's third largest biotech company. It was founded in 1916 as a federal government department before being privatised in 1994. Paul was appointed as the managing director and CEO of the company in July 2013. And the top spot is jointly held by the co-founders and co-CEOs of Afterpay, Anthony Eisen and Nick Molnar, who take home an insane salary of 264.2 million Aussie dollars each year. Afterpay grew exponentially during the pandemic due to the non-EMI loans made available by the company. Many individuals were able to delay the payments on everyday use items thanks to Afterpay. Due to this feature, buy now pay later companies quickly became consumer favourites in times when most Aussies' incomes were impacted. Anthony and Nick founded the company in October 2014 and have overseen its growth since that time, acting as co-CEOs. Not a bad sum to take home, right? Are you surprised at the amount some of the CEOs on this list are being paid? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and share the video. And for more content, you can subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. I'm James, reporting for Calkine. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Welcome to Expert Talks by Kalkine TV. I'm Sage. Today's guest is Aidan Slack Watkins from AXO Fight Club. NFTs have made a huge appearance in the art world and philanthropic circles last year, you may have noticed, raising money for many worthwhile causes. And today's guest, AXO Fight Club, combines the power of celebrity with conservationism in an impact NFT project to help raise awareness and funds for the critically endangered axolotl amphibian species. Axolotls are unusual as they reach adulthood without going through metamorphosis like other amphibians. Well, here to tell us more is Aidan Slack Watkins, an NFT expert from AXO Fight Club. Welcome to the show, Aidan. Hey, how's it going? Great to see you. Yes, thank you so much for being available. Now, I understand you also run another NFT project called Divine Dragons, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Awesome. Well, could you share the mission behind your impact project, AXO Fight Club? Yeah, absolutely. So you mentioned a little bit about it, but really the purpose of our project is to try and help save the endangered axolotl. Um, it's a really interesting sort of anomaly of a creature because as a pet in pet stores, it's a really widespread, widely owned animal. Um, a lot of people own it in their households as pets. They're very popular across the world um, in the millions in pet stores. However, the estimates for their wild population at this point are less than a thousand. Um, so it's sort of this weird, I guess, uh, um, uh, it's, it's strange that so many people are so aware of them as pets and so few people are aware that they are as endangered as they are. So I yeah, the mission, the mission of our project basically is to try to bring awareness and a global community together around the axolotl. 
That's so interesting that you raised that because I was just looking into it as well. And in Australia, it says that you can buy them as pets, but we can't actually bring them in legally into the country. So it's a very interesting um, creature. Like there's so many, are they, are they bred? Is yeah. that how they're in the millions yeah. in households? Exactly, yeah. So the, the ones that are owned as pets are actually for the most part bred in labs. Um, they cross them with the DNA of another um, salamander species to give them their pink hue or you know, there's different skin colors they can have as pets. But basically the pet axolotls are not able to go back to the wild. The wild is not a suitable environment for those um, pet axolotls. You know what they actually remind me of? They look a little bit like the sea monkeys that, that we used to see in mad comics like way back when. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so please explain what the corporate benefits for AXO Entertainment Group, who I believe is run by actors Gabriel Soto and Irina Beva. What are the benefits to collaborate with the conservationist, Dr. Luis Zembrano, please? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a, 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 wide, a wide set of board members and, um, and, and co-founders and a really amazing reach to, um, to a lot of the Latin American community. Um, Dr. Luis Zembrano is someone we got in touch with early in the project. It's really important to us as a project that is emphasizing conservation to be able to show and prove that the funds are going to the right place. Um, to prove that we're approaching it in the, in the right way with the conservationist attitude in mind um, and really trying to understand what we can do to help. Um, because, you know, for us, what's the point of building a community around this, this species if we can't actually have real impact on, on its, um, its population and on its conservation status? And so part of that partnership is making sure we can do as much as possible for them and involve them as much as possible in, in what we're doing to achieve our goals. Thank you. So what are the main advantages that NFTs bring to artists and content creators in your opinion? Yeah, well, I think there's a, a, lot, of, a lot of benefits, right? I think largely it comes from interactivity from a community um, and access to special perks and benefits by owning. So, you know, I, I, think, I think saying what can NFTs do for me as a content creator maybe is the wrong way to look at it. I think a better way to approach it is what can I do for my community through NFTs? Because really it provides a higher level of quality in terms of interaction, more involvement from your community and rewards for that involvement. And it just brings the community together in a deeper way. That's great. Thank you for that. And how important is community building? You've just mentioned it a little bit there. Could we elaborate on the community building aspect of impact projects such as the Exo Fight Club? Definitely. Well, I'd say it's, it's the most important thing. Um, you know, having a, a great community that's willing to support the cause and really believes in the direction that your project is going in. I think for any brand or any company or any conservation effort or, you know, any institution in the world, it's critical, right? And that's no different with NFTs. You need to be able to build that community around your project. You need to be able to um, facilitate that community and get them excited about being in a way, partial owners of the community themselves, right? And, and it's sort of a, a virtuous cycle, right? Where it just sort of keeps building and building and building and you get these amazing people around that want to help and be a part of it and they can continue to contribute and benefit from that contribution. So I would say in the end, it's really all about community. Absolutely. And I see that being a real advantage to NFTs as well and that inner contact, sorry, the interconnectivity it can bring but sometimes, unfortunately, it's misunderstood for the shady side, the multi-level marketing schemes and things like that. Um, do you have any um, insights to share on that from your experience in NFTs? Yeah, I mean, you know, I've been in NFTs for two years. I've seen a lot of shady stuff, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it's really important to make sure that you're transparent about your identity, right? I mean, I'd say on a base level, that's why I'm, I'm here and showing my face, and that's something that a lot of people wouldn't do in this, this NFT world. Um, the transparency of the people behind it, the transparency, again, through our partnership with LRE is a great example of this, but the transparency of what you're gonna do, being able to prove it, and on the blockchain, you can prove it, right? So, you know, there's a lot of projects with that'll, that'll leave and take the money and not put it towards what they said they were gonna put it, put it towards, and on the blockchain, you can see that, but if there's no face behind it, there's no accountability. So, um, I think that's a, a really, really important part of it. And I think we're also moving towards a, a phase in NFTs where uh, governments are feeling more comfortable about enforcement behind 
um, shady dealings and they're getting better at being able to track those things. Mm -hmm. And I think in a lot of ways, that's a good thing because I think it makes this entire industry and market more, more stable, more, um, more inviting for larger investors and uh, just a better environment to participate in. Absolutely. Just that uh, ethical, ethically conscious aspect definitely will attract probably better quality of investors and community. So with people being involved and your project incentive being incentivized by benefits, what do people actually get from buying NFTs in the AXO Fight Club project? Yeah, well, um, the goal of our entire community is to build an ecosystem around this, this axolotl conservation effort. Um, and for people to be able to not only contribute money, but also ideas and time towards that conservation effort. So basically everything we're doing is trying to incentivize that participation. Um, on, a, on a base level, through our partnership with LRE, we are able to provide owners of our NFT with access to an adopt an axolotl program, which we're helping create through that partnership. Um, so basically everyone that buys an NFT will receive updates and images of a specific wild axolotl and um and you know really get that connection in that way um you know consistently through that through you know in an ongoing way through that project uh, on top of that we're building out metaverse experiences for our buyers to participate and metaverse items for them to be able to claim if you do our own our nft and those metaverse environments themselves we've been working a lot on 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 starting to design and put together but they really are driven by learning about the axolotl um, playing games driven by our story about our axolotl characters and, and more broadly about the current plight of the axolotl um, and earning rewards through that process of, of playing and being able to use those rewards again to contribute back into the, uh, in, into the conservation effort. Um, so, our, yeah, our long-term goal really is just to encourage um, a community participation in, in the project, to encourage people to be excited about the axolotl and educate themselves about the axolotl um, and give back as much as possible to the restoration effort. That sounds great. I'm really seeing this ed edutainment sector of NFTs and, and blockchain really taking off. And I see there's potential for that to become big uh, with classrooms becoming really exciting places with VR and becoming more tactile. Do you think your project could head into that sort of virtual reality in, the, well, you mentioned the metaverse. Um, do you think there could be virtual reality games and AR games coming out in the future as well? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the technology stack that has evolved around all of this and, and the, the opportunities going forward are really as broad as you can imagine. Um, I think there's infinite possibilities for where we can go. We've been having some really interesting conversations with some extremely exciting partners, um, which will definitely be able to enable that sort of, uh, of an experience um, and even actually broaden our reach with nonprofits potentially past you know, LRE, but still obviously funneling everything back to LRE, but sort of expanding a global reach behind the effort to help conserve the axolotls. So we have tons of exciting partnerships coming up and um, absolutely the goal, I think, behind really what, sh at least what should be the goal, and I think a lot of people have spent a lot of time in NFTs, the goal behind NFTs in general is more interconnectivity and integration with as many different experiential technologies as possible. So um, 100%, that's part of our, our ongoing goal. Absolutely. Best of luck with that. It was obviously just at the beginning stages and the sky's the limit, like you say. Thank you so much. What an inspiring discussion. Really appreciate your insights today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. And if you just joined us, we had a very interesting discussion with Aidan Slack Watkins, an NFT expert from AXO Fight Club. Please watch the full interview at Calcai Media's YouTube channel and keep watching for more expert talks and market insights till the next episode. Stay apprised and invest wise with Calcai Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks 
the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Kalkine Media's growing platform, Kalkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Kalkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at kalkine.com.au. Phantom FTM crypto rises 8%. Will the momentum continue? The Phantom FTM token rose more than 8% on Monday morning after integrating iGain Finance, a decentralized financial protocol on its platform over the weekend. The FTM token traded at US $0.2825. This was current at 9.49 a.m. Eastern Time. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm Sage for Calcine Media. Do keep watching to find out more. Igain said it's collaborating with Phantom for its ability to process 4,000 transactions per second and it will also benefit from Phantom's compatibility with Ethereum Virtual Machine or EVM. And besides its fast and low cost attributes which eliminates the need for Igain's deployment on layer 2 blockchains. Phantom is a layer one blockchain where more than 200 D apps were deployed and iGain could have easy access from their partnership. Last week, Bondex, a decentralized fintech enabled professional talent network, announced collaborating with Phantom to provide Web3 infrastructure and applications for talent acquisition. Announcing another partnership on July 14th, Phantom Foundation said it is cooperating with Maple Block Capital for funds to support DeFi, GameFi, NFTs, the metaverse, DAOs and infrastructure and middleware projects. So what is Phantom FTM? Phantom is an open source acyclic graph or DAG smart contract platform for dApps and digital assets. It provides developers with an alternative to Ethereum for decentralized services or DeFi using Lacasis, an ABFT consensus algorithm. Phantom also addresses the issue of low transaction speed associated with smart contract platforms. Created in 2018, the Phantom Foundation manages all Phantom offerings and Phantom offers a processing time of one to two seconds per transaction at a fraction of a cent. The Phantom Foundation was created by South Korean computer scientist An Byung Ik. It is currently led by Michael Kong. FTM token. FTM is a native utility token of the Phantom ecosystem used for various functions such as payments including network fees and rewards and staking as well as governance. Phantom's current market capitalization is around 718.9 million US dollars. Its trading volume rose 42.10% to reach 220.6 million US dollars just on Monday alone with a circulating supply of 2.55 billion. The token is available for trading on crypto exchanges such as Binance, FTX, MEXC and even more. Now the bottom line, the FTM token rose 16.02% in one week and the crypto market is risky and investors must carefully evaluate the projects before investing in digital assets. Now if you do like this information, please give it a like, share, comment on the video below, subscribe to the channel, do press that bell icon, you'll be notified every time Calcone releases a new video. But for more articles, we update the website regularly. Please have a look. Calcinemedia.com. Sage here for Calcine Media. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calcine TV.
Poker Bridge token gained attention on July 19, rising by 3.17%. The token traded at more than 8.7 US cents after announcing an average annual percentage yield or APY of more than 50% on the staking of PBR tokens on BSC. But first and foremost, what exactly is PokerBridge? PokerBridge is a decentralized protocol for cross-chain functioning. It's designed to work as a bridge between Polkadot and other blockchains. The protocol currently operates on the Ethereum blockchain and PBR is the native token of PokerBridge. The token is used for transactional activities on the network, such as staking collateral, rewards, participating in the initial DEX offerings, or IDOs, swapping cross-chain, and lending purposes. The Poker Bridge ecosystem includes P2P exchange, deflationary farming, staking, multi-chain and cross-chain AMM, launchpad, and also a metaverse. PokerBridge has so far launched more than 50 different projects, and the protocol has more than $10 million of value locked into its staking pools, according to its official website. Other upcoming projects are Trade with Wallet, 24-7 customer support, reduced fees, and a fully secure platform. Just last week, it announced the completion of its integration with the Binance Smart Chain. PokerBridge has also migrated its token from Ethereum to BSC to offer its community low fees and faster settlement times. The announcement has resulted in a price increase of more than 77% over the past seven days. PokerBridge also announced the imminent launch of its Insights platform. The Insight platform of PokerBridge is one of the core projects by its team, purpose-built to educate its community and impart information about the market, other projects, current scenarios, concepts, guides, walkthroughs, and a whole lot more. The platform is currently around 60% completed, and a testnet is set to be launched soon before the fully-fledged launch of the platform. The PBR token is, of course, the native token of PokerBridge, and it has a circulating supply of 51.8 million PBR, and with a market cap of 4.5 million US dollars. Its total supply is around 77.8 million tokens. PBR's trading volume increased 9.21% to 2.25 million US dollars over the last 24 hours. And if you're interested in the project, you can trade PBR on the likes of Mexi, KuCoin, and Gate.io, amongst others. So, what's your take on PBR? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and share the video. For more content, you can subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Welcome to Expert Talks by Calcane TV. I'm Sage. Today's guest is Jordan Tentori, CEO of Zemi Limited. For some background, Zemi Limited is an innovative Australian Internet of Things company that targets to enhance the connectivity of electrical devices from homes through to high rises. So to find out more about this expanding and pulsing industry, we have invited the CEO himself, Jordan Tentori, to share insights with us today. Welcome to the show, Jordan. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Glad to have you join us, Jordan. So, Internet of Things is your biz, and hasn't it been buzzing in recent times? Indeed, it has been buzzing. <laughs> um, it's actually quite incredible. When you think it was only a few generations ago we saw electricity adopted in the home, from lighting to hot water and appliances like the radio and the TV, and then in less than a lifetime we've seen computers and the Internet and smartphones changing how we communicate, take photos and do business, and even stream entertainment. And now the IoT, or the Internet of Things, is a pretty simple concept where anything that can offer economy or sustainability or convenience or entertainment in turn becomes a device connection opportunity. 
So it's a very exciting time. And you've seen Google and Apple and Amazon changing this with the smartphone now. And voice control, which we've learnt from a young age. And I think that anyone can enjoy technology from young to old. And it's really seeing the IoT grow an incredible pace. To answer your question, there's more connected devices on the planet today than people, with analysts expecting the device count to triple by 2030. Wow, and 2030 is really not so far away when we come to think of it. Totally. There's been, it's... There's been some, like you said, it, it's made the life of elderly people so much easier, which you'd think doesn't really match up. But it's wonderful how you said the young and the old can enjoy this. How do you see the IoT segment growing to the scale that it's expected to in the coming years? Yeah, I think, look, the, the growth has definitely put uh, pressure on supply pipeline. Um, there's been significant growth in different industries. Um, things like electric cars are using nine times the components now. Uh, the world is rolling out 5G connectivity, towers and phones and everything being upgraded. But also in the recent two years, we've seen that consumer demand with many people working from home, spending more time at home. You know, the demand of consumer electronics um, and indeed smart home or connected IoT devices is growing significantly. So it is putting pressure on supply chains. Um, for Zimmy, we've, we've definitely had to react to this. We've established a bonded inventory of key components to help mitigate this risk. But initiatives such as the CHIP Act passed by the US Senate last year, which includes 52 billion of federal funding, is helping decentralize supply of electronics and, and, and we hope it will improve in time. Wonderful, thank you so much, Jordan. Zimmy has been expanding as well with the growth in the sector and its product range has evolved and grown with the introduction of multi-dimmer switches to its family of smart switches. What are the next plans for expanding the product portfolio, please? Yeah, we first introduced PowerMesh, which was a family of smarter switches, which quite easily adds smart control in any home with your existing lighting, fans, doors or appliances, simply by swapping the switch. So we've made announcements by expanding that range, um, but we've also announced Sonoa, which is our smartest range of premium glass switches with the power to do more. This includes our new accessibility range, which enables us simple things for everyone. Um, some things we take for granted, people with disabilities, it's really satisfying seeing that everyone can benefit from these devices in the home or office. And generally, people are becoming more educated now on the many smart things that they can do. We're also, yes. we're also expanding our portfolio into safety. Uh, we recently announced the new Zimmy Smoke Connect. Uh, in Australia, smoke alarms are indeed legislated and we wanted to innovate with connected smoke alarms. So we've got the new Smoke Connect that can even make a phone call to you. So no matter where you are in the world, if there's smoke detected in your home, you're the first to know. So this is just one of the many exciting developments we have coming up. So yeah, look out for more, more announcements from Zimmy. That's great. It's hard not to be passionate about what you do when it's evolving at such a great pace, expanding at such a great pace and coming out with such fantastic safety features as well. So how is your company placed on research and development within the IoT market? Yeah, the smart home or smart spaces is evolving more than ever before. Apple, Google, Amazon and other companies have come together over the last couple of years to implement a new connectivity standard called Matter. And this just means that there's a seamless connection between all the different companies' devices, which will make it easier for people to adopt this in the home without the complications of how to set it all up. Zimmy is indeed developing a new Matter module, um, and we'll roll that out in our devices in the year ahead. But we also look to expand to global markets where we can fast track other manufacturers to market with this solution. Secondly, we are investing significantly into AI or artificial intelligence, which can provide more value from the devices as they gain the intelligence in your lifestyle. I'm very passionate about this topic because the intelligence of automating things, or the very little things, it could be just simply avoiding a house fire by turning off a heater that was accidentally left on, or manage precious resources like electricity and water for a more sustainable lifestyle that's based on your behaviour. So plenty of uh, developments and very exciting to be part of it. That's great to hear. So as we reach the end of the discussion, and before we hear about your goals for the next 12 months or your vision, can we talk a little bit about 
tips for use and safety, especially in regards to manufacturer passwords. I think that's where sometimes people can fall short to um, exploiters of the situation and, and the products. How can people avoid um, the exploitation from bad actors? Yeah, look, security is always a big concern. And uh, I think what's really good is uh, technologies like Bluetooth or proximity sensing is making things much safer in the home. Uh, the elimination of passwords just by you being present uh, is a, a really solid way of security and it means that people can't hack from elsewhere in the world. But all of these smart home products are essentially hosted on Amazon and Google and share the same security and encryption that we see with banking and probably other areas that are more desirable by hackers than perhaps turning your light off or on in your smart home. Right, thank you so much for clarifying that. So where do you see your company to be in 12 months from now? Yeah, well at Zimmy we've done a lot of the hard work to position us for our next phase of growth and the next 12 months is exciting indeed. We've established an excellent partner network in Australia. Uh, we have Trader Electrical distributing to over a thousand electrical wholesalers which support the electricians across the country, plus over a hundred beacon lighting stores where customers can go in and get help with the design of their smart home. Harvey Norman Commercial, another important partner, are providing solutions from the home to high rises. And finally, we've partnered with Steeline, Australia's largest door manufacturer, and Polyair, Australia's largest air conditioning manufacturer, and they're providing the industry what's required to really get everybody enjoying this technology, uh, indeed from their homes and in their office. So I'm really excited for the year ahead. And more importantly, I'm very grateful to be a part of this very exciting time as everything that can be connected is. Thank you so much, Jordan. Best of luck with your plans moving forward and for joining us today. We appreciate your time. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. If you just joined us, we had a very interesting discussion with Jordan Tentori. He's a CEO of Zimi Limited, an Internet of Things business. If you missed any part of the discussion, please head to Calkine Media's YouTube channel and keep watching Calkine Media for more of these expert talks and live market updates till the next episode. Stay apprised and invest wise with Calkine Media. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Calkine Media's growing platform, Calkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Calkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guest team at calkine.com dot au There's a new group in the geopolitical arena called I2U2. It's a partnership of four countries. The I stands for India and Israel, and the U stands for the United States and the United Arab Emirates. The group is also known as the West Asian Quad. It's similar to the quadrilateral security dialogue, which was Australia, India, Japan, and the US as members. The first virtual meeting of the I2U2 group was held on the 14th of July. However, its roots go back to 2021 when foreign ministers of these countries met following the Abraham Accords between Israel and UAE. Last week, United States President Joe Biden and Israel's Prime Minister Ayer Lapid connected on a virtual call from Jerusalem with India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi and UAE's Prime Minister Mohammed bin Zayed. Following the virtual summit, four countries released a joint statement which says that these countries aim to harness the vibrancy of our societies and entrepreneurial spirit to tackle some of the greatest challenges confronting our world. The particular focus of the I2U2 group will be on joint investments and new initiatives in water, energy, transportation, space, health and food security. The group also plans to mobilize private sector capital and modernize the existing infrastructure. The I2U2 will also work towards decarbonizing industries and improving the public health sector and vaccine access. On the financial aspect, the governments plan to strengthen the startups and develop critical emerging and green technologies. 
All these areas will be taken care of while carefully ensuring near and long term food and energy security. The four nations of I2U2 have inherent maritime interests across the world and therefore free and open global commons are imperative for their growth and prosperity. A combination of these four nations underpinned by issue-based convergence of maritime safety could ensure the security of trade and economic interests of these nations at sea. Notably, amongst other points, the West Asian Quad Summit also highlighted the importance of the Abraham Accords and other peace activities that normalize ties with Israel between Arab countries. The Abraham Accords signed in 2020 brought Israel and a group of Arab Gulf countries led by the UAE into official partnership and recognition. It will be interesting to see how these four countries engage in an existing strategic partnership to promote discussed initiatives and investments. Now if you like this video you can like, share and comment on it, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can press the bell icon for notifications for our latest videos. I'm Rachel for Kalki Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. The USA's governmental space agency NASA and Russia's space agency Roscosmos have signed an agreement to collaborate for the flights to the International Space Station. Despite tensions between the two countries over the war in Ukraine, this long-sought arrangement will allow Russia's cosmonauts to make a journey on US-made spacecraft, while American astronauts will be able to ride on Russia's Zoyas. As reported by both agencies, the arrangement will start in September this year. The first integrated flights will have NASA's astronaut Frank Rubio and two Russian cosmonauts Sergei Prokhyov and Dmitry Petalin. The flight is scheduled to take place on the 21st of September from Kazakhstan. NASA has also announced another joint mission on the SpaceX Crew-6 will fly out in early 2023. The announcement came along with the news of the departure of Dmitry Rogozin, the former Deputy Prime Minister of Russia for Defense and Space Industry. He was dismissed from his position as Director General of Roscosmos with former Deputy Prime Minister Yuri Bozyov to replace him. As tensions flare between Russia and the US, the development to renew space flights together is being seen as a sign of cooperation. The Roscosmos said in a statement that the agreement is in the interests of both Russia and the United States and will promote the development of cooperation within the International Space Station program. Now, if you like the news in this video, you can like, share and comment on it. You can also press the bell icon to get notifications for our latest videos. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, Continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine.
Hello and welcome back to Calcine TV. This is another edition of Executive Corner Expert Talks. And today we'll be exploring the first hotels DAO on the blockchain, D Hotels. The community driven hotel marketplace allows users to own and manage a part of a hotel. And joining us to share their insights is co founder and CEO Diamante Jankowski. Welcome to the show. It's great to have you with us. Good morning. Thank you so much for inviting us. So it's, it's a pleasure, pleasure to have be you here. on. It's great to be here and pleasure to have you on. Now, to kick things off, could you walk us through how exactly your revolutionary platform works? Absolutely. So, um, firstly, I would like to start with our mission. Why we, did, why we created the platform and what was our initial idea. So, uh, since I was coming from the hospitality sector before and uh, one of my CEO and co-founders, Gabriela, she was from um, investment banking and blockchain. So, we thought that that's a very great idea to combine those things into one and to let people and to educate people to invest. So, we wanted to create a very easy platform which stands on the real physical assets, but it's combined as well with the crypto and the blockchain. So we decided to tokenize the hotels and to let people, ordinary people like my or your mom to invest by easily clicking two, two buttons on her phone. So um, also, um, what is the hotels all about shortly? So we are tokenizing hotels and basically um, all the hospitality real estate. We are letting others to tokenize their real estate as well and uh, that's going to be very easy way for many many people to invest to you know looking at the, today's economic situation um, we believe that it's mandatory to educate and more and more people to show how it is how all the risks should be you know diversified and what are the profits and uh, Basically, we, we are willing, you know, I think that my colleague, uh, Gabriela Sio, will uh, join us here today as well. So she will explain a little bit more in details how the model could work. But at the moment, as I said, that the hotels is a DAO. So that means that people would not only own the hotel, but they will have the decision-making power, meaning that it's going to be decentralized management. People will have ability to, for example, issue the notes that, okay, we don't like the branding of the hotel, let's change it. Everybody's going to vote and um, then we'll uh, have to implement the same. So uh, the thing is that the DAO principle is not that uh, our team or anyone on top going to decide which hotel to buy or, for example, which, how to manage it. It's going to be all left to the, our token holders, meaning uh, our investors, right? So, you know, many people may ask, so why I cannot buy Kempinski shares? Why cannot buy, buy Marriott shares? So, the thing is that, of course, you can. You'll have um, some stocks, but you won't be able to say anything. You won't be able to get a chance to be involved into the process, right? Um, for Bifas, you have the ownership of the real hotel, meaning that the property, the real property belongs to you. And of course, we have all decision-making powers, meaning on uh, strategic questions, uh, brandings, and uh, management. That's incredible. I mean, it sounds like you've had a great journey so far and really fascinating venture there. So is that the benefit, would you say, of having a decentralized hospitality sector? Well, um, in our team, we do have the general manager of Kempinski, uh, uh, other actually uh, other um, hospitality experts so we believe that these days um, the decision making process is very slow and the implementation is even more slower so um, that's the insights what we received you know from uh, the investors from the experts and we believe that this concept this DAO concept would make things way easier way faster and you'll get the how, to, how can I express myself? Uh, you'll have the insights from the customers uh, because people who will own the token holders, I'm pretty sure that everyone would like to visit uh, their own hotel at least for a week uh, to stay there and to have a good time. So, you know, once you're staying at your own hotel, you're having a different view and you're looking with a different eyes, right? So, 
that's the thing that people will be able to issue the token, no, not the tokens, issue the note, and other investors will vote and all the decisions will be made way, way, way faster. Absolutely. That is an amazing concept. It'd be great to be able to do that and have that governance option, I think. That would be incredible to be realized. And uh, I understand that D Hotels offers DeFi vaults through which anyone can really invest in hotel real estate, which is incredible to say the least. But do investors need to be knowledgeable on hotel management? Well, I believe that yes. Um, people who are involved into the business, meaning that they are investing into it. We believe that they are interested and they want to have the right to decide. So uh, we believe that it's a very important part and um, that's why our investors are very active and uh, they believe in, in us, uh, they believe in the idea and we believe that it's gonna be the big thing in the future. We have a really great examples, for example, FrysDAO. Uh, so these guys are doing pretty much the same thing on the restaurants, on the fast food chains. We can see a very, very successful example on that. So we are partnering with them and looking from their perspective, uh, we see the very bright future. I don't doubt that. It is amazing to see how Web3 is really shaking up every sector, specifically hospitality rather. and. Uh, Sounds like you'll be getting in on that as well. Now, could you shed some light for us on your native token and its utility? Absolutely. So basically, our token is utility token. So our token holder, holders will have two options, as I said before. First one is to own the real estate, the real hotel tokens. So this concept is already legalized in Switzerland, in Cyprus, in Estonia. So there is nothing in a gray area as it was before because uh, now the laws are there and the whole process is very clear for us. So token holders will own the real hotel, real estate. Also, they will have ability to manage it. So these are the two parts, right? Also, um, our hotels will be on a metaverse. So people will have a, a chance to walk through them on a metaverse to see what they want to change and they can issue the note on the metaverse as well. The third thing is that it's gamified and uh, it's going to be very easy to issue a note. Then everybody's going to vote. Uh, we'll have a chat so our investors can uh, discuss with them. So it's going to be a very interesting platform that it's not existing as yet. But we are on the process and we believe that uh, it's going to be a very, very great chance for ordinary people, as we say, who are not very much into crypto and a blockchain to learn, to invest, and to get profits. Absolutely. It is certainly a revolutionary idea that you've got there. And at the moment, as I understand it, you're undertaking several funding rounds, if I'm correct, which is certainly exciting stuff. What can we look forward to seeing from D Hotels over the coming months and beyond? Yes. Yeah, so uh, at the moment, we are uh, doing our pre-sale. Uh, so actually um, we are speaking with the investors who would like to participate in this so um, everybody is welcome you can always contact us for the hotels token and we can you know explain the whole details um, more and uh, we'll go it you know more into it so uh, our team is very big everybody has uh, many years experience in the business so um, I think that Everyone who want to join and to become the hotel owners, you can. You are welcome, you know, to join us. Sounds like an incredible opportunity there. Uh, you've got an incredible uh, few months ahead of you and beyond. Uh, just judging by your roadmap there, so wish you all the best with that, and we'll definitely keep an eye out for all your future developments. But uh, with that said, thanks very much for joining us today, Dave Monte. It's been really great to hear your insights. Pleasure to have you on the show. If you've just joined us, that was the co-founder and CEO of the game-changing Hotels DAO, D Hotels. And if you missed any part of that chat, you can catch the full interview here on our YouTube channel at Calkine Media. Make sure to stay tuned. I'm Holly Shields reporting for Calkine TV.
build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Kalkine Media's growing platform, Kalkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Kalkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at kalkine.com.au. Tiger Global leads crypto-focused Meow's Series A. What is Meow? The crypto world is buzzing with new positive activities. On one hand, cryptos have been gaining of late, with Ethereum being up almost 40% in one week, and on the other day, new deals are underway. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm Sage for Calkine Media. The latest deal has been struck between the crypto market participant Meow and a prominent investment firm, Tiger Global. And this comes amid some negative movements, including crypto companies like Voyager and Celsius filing for bankruptcy. And the deal might instill some new confidence in enthusiasts. Let's explore some more. What is Meow and Tiger Global's deal? Meow, a firm that focuses on yields for corporate treasuries, has released a statement about raising 22 million US dollars in Series A. This funding round was led by Tiger Global with others like the FTX Exchange and QED investors in participation. In the statement, Meow has stated its objective of using the funds for developing its stable coin focused product. The company CEO, Brandon Avanagi, has talked about the potential of stablecoins, crypto tokens pegged to assets like a fiat currency or gold, in revolutionizing the world. So what is Meow? Meow is a new company founded Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Good morning one and all. The ASX 200 is set to rise after Wall Street rallies. S&P 500 jumps 1.2%. Welcome to the ASX Stocks Breakfast. My name is Sage. The Australian share market is expected to rise on the last week of the trading session, tracking strong cues from Wall Street, which jumped to a seven-week high despite weak gross domestic product or GDP data in the US. The contraction in the US economy has raised hopes among investors about a less hawkish US Federal Reserve. And on the other hand, domestic mining and energy shares are expected to climb on robust commodity prices. The latest ASX futures indicate that the benchmark ASX 200 index could open 45 points or 0.65% higher on Friday this morning. On Thursday, the ASX 200 rose 1% to reach 6,889.7 points. Although inflation has risen to 6.1% in Australia, in the USA recessions have always involved more unemployment. However, the US unemployment rate decreased to 3.6% from January highs of 4%. Some believe the looming recession could very well be a white-collar one, being termed a milder growth recession. The downturns seem more structural, being impacted by the Ukraine-Russia conflict and energy crisis, rather than cyclical. 
Tech stocks have been reporting this week. Apple and Amazon have been topping Q2 estimates and with strong Q3 estimates in the way. Amazon and Apple both had their investors pleased with sales exceeding expectations. Amazon forecasts higher fees for its streaming service, Prime membership keeping it buoyant, and Apple's iPhone still the little darling of its suite of products with demand being high. Both companies reported lower profits year over year, however, with Apple's decreasing 11% down to $19.4 billion, mainly due to China's COVID-19 lockdowns. And Amazon seemed to be impacted by the valuation of its electric car maker, Rivian Auto. Alphabet Google is still up today, 1.03%, although quarter two reported earnings came in below expectations. It's up 3.04% over the last five days, and Google's currently priced at about $114.22. It could be that Snap Inc drastically falling on Friday by close to 30% after the announcement of low quarter two earnings could have bolstered the blow for the disappointing earnings report from its parent company, Google. And Snap Inc is currently priced at $9.67, being 12.88% down over the last five days. The company reported second quarter revenue of $69.69 billion, being up 13% year over year, and net income was $16 billion or $1.21 per share. Now, Wall Street analysts focused a uh, forecast earnings per share of $1.27, according to FactSet, with a revenue of $69.87 billion. An operating income of $19.4 billion was below the expectations of $20.14 billion. Now, the U.S. economy contracted from April to June to fall for a second straight quarter. The second quarter GDP of U.S. fell at a 0.9% annualised rate, higher than the expectations of economists in first quarter contraction of 1.6%. In the U.S., the Dow Jones jumped 1%, the S&P 500 surged 1.2%, and the Nasdaq ended 1.1% higher. We'll now cut to a short break, but please stay with us. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV. Welcome back. Hope your morning's going well so far as the market markets are set to open here in Australia for the Asian trade on Friday, 29th July. In Europe, the stock's 50, however, rose 1.2%. The FTSE was flat and the DAX surged 0.8% and the CAC ended 1.3% higher. And MSCI's gauge of stocks across the globe gained 1.24%. Over to the bond deals now. On Thursday, bond deals declined following the release of US GDP growth data. The two-year Treasury yields fell further on Thursday after dipping under 3% on Wednesday. And the benchmark 10-year notes yield last fell to 2.6723% from 2.732% late on Wednesday. The yield on the 30-year bonds last dipped to 3.0219% from 3.002%. On to the oil prices, and they remain mixed. On Thursday, oil prices remained mixed as recession concerns weighed on prices. And traders were also concerned after the International Monetary Fund, or IMF, said that if Russia completely cuts off supplies by year's end, the region could face zero economic growth in 2023. So WTI closed at US$96.42 per barrel, down at 0.86%, and Brent crude settled up 0.49%, at US $107.14. On to the gold prices. They inched higher as gold prices rose on concerns over the state of the US economy. 94 spot gold added 1.3% to reach US $1,756.59 an ounce. And meanwhile, the iron ore futures hit four-week highs on Thursday, extending their rally to a fifth session. The prices were boosted by rebounding steel margins in China in hopes of solid economic recovery for China in the third quarter. As we wrap up, let's look at the crypto sector, which actually rose over the last 24 hours in crypto. Bitcoin and Ethereum are both up. Bitcoin is sitting at close to $23,790, being up about 3.62%. And Ethereum, the second largest crypto by market capitalization, is also up sitting at close to $1,715 or thereabouts, being up by about 4.8%. 
So thanks very much for watching. And I hope your day in trading goes well. We do appreciate your feedback, so we'd love to know what you think of our new show, ASX Stocks at Breakfast. And we'd love to hear your thoughts out there because you keep this show going by watching us every day. And it looks like it could be a beautiful day to wind down the week with today and fantastic weather due over the weekend. So dare I say the worst of winter could be behind us here in Sydney? Well, look, have a happy Friday anyway. This is Sage signing off for now. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. There's no denying that lithium has now emerged as a vital component in many rapidly expanding markets and its demand is anticipated to keep rising because of its use in the batteries fitted in electric vehicles and also the telecommunications industry. Due to its great efficiency and energy density, lithium ion batteries are a preferred battery technology for EVs and consumer gadgets such as smartphones, tablets and laptops. As technology advances and the price of lithium ion batteries drop, lithium became a valuable resource. However, lithium prices have recently seen a rise due to the pandemic's impact on the supply chain and rising demand for the metal. Government policies and measures to reduce pollution have promoted the use of eco-friendly activities such as driving electric or hybrid cars. It's projected that new lithium mining and exploration will occur in more countries due to rising lithium demand, mostly driven by its use in electric vehicles. On this note, let's take a look at the performance of a few lithium companies this year. Core lithium shares have grown almost 60% year-to-date and 335% in the last year. The company is committed to developing and expanding the Finnis Lithium project in the Northern Territory and South Australia. Another lithium player, Piedmont Lithium Shares, recorded a negative growth of around 32% on a year-to-date basis and was down almost 40% in the last year. Piedmont is a sizable producer of lithium with a wide range of products dedicated to fostering the development of a sustainable energy economy in North America and assisting in the transition to a net zero society. On the 7th of July this year, the company announced it had got added to US Russell 2000 as one of its members. The business has also been included as a constituent of the Russell Microcap Index as part of rebuilding the Russell Indexes for 2022. Shares of Pilgrim Minerals recorded negative growth of 29.55% year-to-date. The shares have grown around 70% in the last year. Pilgrim Minerals is the world's biggest and most independent hard rock lithium company. In the resource-rich Pilbara area of Western Australia, the Pilgangora operation creates a spondamine and a tantalite concentrate. Now if you like this video, you can like, share and comment on it. You can also subscribe to the channel and you can press the bell icon to get notifications for our latest videos. I'm Rachel for Calkine. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV.
what is crude oil and how is it produced. Crude oil is a naturally occurring liquid unrefined fuel primarily made of hydrogen and carbon found beneath the Earth's surface in underground reservoirs. Crude oil can be refined for various purposes like vehicles, electricity generation and other petrochemical products. It is a non-renewable asset and cannot be replenished artificially to meet its rapidly growing demand. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm Sage for Kalkai Media. Crude oil is stored in underground reservoir rocks which contain ample storage space in the form of porosity and sufficient permeability so that the deposited crude oil can migrate within the reservoir. The extraction of crude requires giant oil rigs to drill holes up to the reservoir depth and extract the crude using primary, secondary or EOR, that's enhanced oil recovery methods. Conventional oil can be extracted at normal reservoir pressure and temperature conditions, allowing crude oil to flow through pipelines due to pressure differences. Conversely, unconventional oil is hard to extract using the conventional method due to tight reservoir conditions. Special methods like hydrofracturing and horizontal well drilling are used to extract crude oil for unconventional reservoirs. After crude oil is removed from the ground, it is sent to a refinery where different parts of the crude oil are separated into usable petroleum products. These petroleum products include gasoline distillates such as diesel fuel and heating oil, jet fuel, petrochemical feedstocks, waxes, lubricating oils and asphalt. Chemically, hydrocarbons are mainly composed of hydrogen and carbon with an aggregate percentage of 98%. And aside from that, different components like sulphur, oxygen and nitrogen are present in small amounts. The composition of crude oil may vary depending on its place of origin and the pressure temperature condition which formed the crude oil. Light oil can contain up to 97% hydrocarbons, while heavy oil might have only 50% hydrocarbons. The presence of sulphur in crude oil is considered an impurity as it corrodes pipelines and other refining equipment. If a crude oil contains more than 0.5% sulphur, it is known as sour oil. If the percentage of sulphur is less than 0.5%, it is considered sweet oil. The prices and demand for sweet oil in the international market are higher than sour oil. There are three main categories of crude oil, being West Texas Intermediate or WTI, Brent Crude and OPEC Reference Basket that set the pricing benchmark for global oil suppliers. According to US Energy Information Administration, in 2021 US petroleum consumption averaged about 19.78 million barrels per day which included about a million barrels per day of biofuels. US total petroleum consumption was about 8% higher in 2021 than the level in 2020. And lastly, speaking about the highest price of crude oil, historically, crude oil reached an all-time high of 147.27 in July 2008. If you like this information, please give it a like, share, comment on the video below and subscribe to the channel. Press the bell icon and be notified every time a new video is released. But we update the website regularly. Please have a look for more new articles at kalkinemedia.com. I'm Sage for Kalkai Media. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Kalkine Media's growing platform, Kalkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Kalkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at kalkine.com.au. Who 
are Asia Pacific's most influential celebrities on social media. The power of social media is undenied and undefied as well. There is no doubt in the fact that how well a celeb manages their social media presence largely affects their popularity and relevance these days. Recently, Forbes unveiled the list of Asia Pacific's most influential celebrities on social media and again emboldening the impact of social media on pop culture. Forbes said that it gave special focus to celebrities who defied different odds and managed to remain active and relevant, largely by using social media to interact with their fans, raise awareness and inspire optimism. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm Sage for Kelkai Media. On that note, let's get to know which celebrities made it on the list. First one on the list, the South Korean band Black Pink. This all-girls band has emerged as a sensation amongst the youth, be it fashion or the other trends. And Blackpink seems to have taken a lead on all fronts, even when it comes to social media. Its members Lisa, Jenny, Rosé and Jisoo are Korea's most followed celebrities on Instagram. Moving on. There is Jackson Yi. Yi is a 21-year-old multi-talented star from China. He is an actor, a singer and also a dancer. Yi also is the youngest member of the Chinese boy band TF Boys. He has over 86 million followers on the Chinese microblogging website Weibo. It is one of the biggest social media platforms in the country. And now, this name on the list hardly needs any introduction, BTS, you got it. BTS has emerged as one of the world's most successful music groups ever. This boy band has made history and broken several records time and time again in recent years. This year, it ranked 47th on the Celebrity 100 list with earnings of $50 million. And apart from these bright stars, various other celebrities also made it big on the list, like Indian veteran actor Amitabh Bachchan, who, through his social media power, helped raise $7 million for COVID-19 relief, and also the Australian actress Rebel Wilson, who displayed her fitness journey on Instagram and garnered followers and appreciation. Do let us know in the comments if your favourite celebrity made it in the list. Thanks for joining us on the report. Now, if you like this information, please give it a like, share and comment on the video below. Subscribe to the channel, press that bell icon, you'll be notified every time Kalkine releases a new video. But for more articles, head to the website, kalkinemedia.com. My name's Sage for Kalkine Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Why Netflix is losing its popularity. Netflix recently announced that its paid subscribers have dropped by nearly 1 million in the second quarter of the financial year 2022. In the second quarter revenue report, Netflix disclosed that it lost 970,000 subscribers, which is more than the 200,000 member decline from the first quarter. Netflix Inc. is a leading over-the-top or OTT media service platform and production company. The media production firm primarily provides digital content through subscription-based online streaming services from a library of movies and television series available on the internet. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm Sage for Kalkine Media.
Netflix has been one of the fastest growing companies in the streaming and OTT platforms due to the modest competition. Netflix has gained many subscribers and attention through their promotions of social media and featured shows. However, Netflix's top competitors such as Disney Plus, Amazon Prime Video, HBO Max, Apple TV and many more are catching up with the market. And due to many events, Netflix Netflix has been losing its popularity in recent times. Netflix believes that they have been losing huge revenue due to password sharing, which in March 2022, Netflix launched an add an extra member feature in Chile, Costa Rica and Peru. Now, from next month, Netflix will launch an alternative add a home feature in Argentina, the Dominican Republic, El Salvador, Guatemala and Honduras. In the Add a Home feature, every Netflix account, regardless of the chosen plan, will include one home where one can enjoy Netflix on any of their devices. And to use the Netflix account in additional homes, it will ask to pay an extra 219 pesos per month per home in Argentina, whereas it's $2.99 per month per home in the Dominican Republic, Honduras, El Salvador and Guatemala. Members on the basic plan can add one extra home, standard up to two extra and premium up to three extras. Overall, Netflix has been the most expensive on-demand streaming service and on top of it, does not offer live TV or sports to its users. While its competitors like Disney Hotstar offer all these features due to which Netflix has been losing its popularity. Thanks for joining us on this report. Now, if you do like the information, give it a like, share, comment on the video below, subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon, you'll be notified of the most recent videos from Calkine. But for more articles, head to the websites calkinemedia.com. My name's Sage for Calkine Media. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calkine TV. Australia's energy crisis has been described by Treasurer Jim Chalmers as a perfect storm. Rising energy prices have added to a hefty list of price side concerns facing everyday Australians. The underlying problem is multifold and thus might not be resolved in the short term. However, this phenomenon is not just limited to Australia. For various reasons, many countries around the world are facing a major energy crisis. In this video, I'll take a look at the challenges in the energy sector. Firstly, the energy crisis triggered due to the tussle between Russia and Ukraine, which has disrupted global supply chains that could in fact curb global growth in the near term. The sanctions on Russian crude oil, natural gas and coal have also disturbed the supplies of key energy commodities, widening the gap between demand and supply and eventually pushing the prices of these energy commodities to multi-year highs. The European Union agreed to ban the import of Russian coal in April this year. Now, most of the major countries in Europe are preparing to reignite coal power plants and accumulate natural gas ahead of the fuel demanding winter season. Recently, the European Union asked its member states to ration energy as Putin has tightened the grip on gas supplies. Russia has resumed the flow of gas through a key pipeline that supplies several European nations, easing fears of a prolonged pause. The Nord Stream 1 pipeline will pump gas to Europe after a 10 day outage. Another concern is the scorching heatwave that is currently afflicting the likes of London. The rising temperatures are pushing Europe's power system to the absolute brink of its capacity. According to investment expert Lane Clark and Peacock, the extreme heat is testing the energy policies, which are usually prepared to meet the winter demand. The rising temperatures are impacting the power production in Europe and warm temperatures are also affecting waterways. Germany's Rhine River is at its lowest level in the last 15 years on a seasonal basis. The Rhine is one of the major European rivers which is now drying up and threatening coal deliveries to other power plants. 
And lastly, the increasingly deepening energy crisis is impacting the economy and ultimately consumers. The sharp rise in energy prices is also pushed up by soaring natural gas and coal prices across the region. As per the Bank of America's estimates, the average residential consumer's bill shot up to €1,850 this year relative to €1,200 Euros in 2020. Italy and the UK are among the highly affected countries where bills jumped by nearly €950. Euros. Skyrocketing gas and energy prices are not only hitting households though, they're also adversely affecting various businesses in the region with industrial consumers witnessing an increase of 100% in their gas costs and a 70% increase in their electricity costs. The issues also extend beyond the confines of Europe. Developed countries like Japan and South Africa and developing nations such as Bangladesh and Nigeria are also facing an energy crisis. Japan's energy self-sufficiency rate has plummeted amidst global energy markets being in turmoil, which in turn has now left the country vulnerable to price volatility. So even though Europe is trying its best to tackle the situation, experts believe that the crisis could last until 2025. Is there a left field solution that governments could consider to overcome the energy crisis? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and share the video. For more content, you can subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, Continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. One of the most popular meme stocks, GameStop Corporation, is looking to split its stock in a four for one manner. It would give investors an additional three shares of GME stock for each share that they own. The four to one stock split is expected to happen after the closing bell on Thursday, the 21st of July. The board approved the recent split on July 6, and notably this would be the second split for the video game retailer. In March 2007, GameStop opted for a two-for-one split. So what would the stock split mean for investors? The stock split would increase its total share count to over 1 billion from its current shares of around 300 million. However, it would not necessarily affect its market cap or its valuation. The stock split of the GME stock could attract investors' attention due to then increased affordability. According to the company's statement, the stock split would offer more flexibility for future corporate needs. Meanwhile, several analysts expect that the split action could fuel a short squeeze, bolstering gains in the stock. Over the past 30 days, the price of GME's stock returned a 13.17% positive gain. However, some experts argued about the company's intention for a stock split as its financial results are declining to be in tandem with its stock price. In the first quarter of fiscal year 2022, its net loss was 157.9 million US dollars compared to a net loss of 66.8 million in the year ago quarter. However, recently GameStop appeared to gain traction after it unveiled its plans to get involved in non-fungible tokens or NFTs at the end of the second quarter. On July 11, GameStop announced the launch of its NFT marketplace that allows gamers, creators and other community members to purchase, sell or trade non-fungible tokens. Amongst its other recent developments, GameStop also appointed Diana Sadid Jajay as its CFO, who served the same role on an interim basis in 2021 and held the role of Chief Accounting Officer. The stock split news of the original meme stock follows the lead of tech giants such as Apple and Tesla. So whilst it could prove to be a smart move by GameStop's operators, investors should still exercise caution given the current market volatility. Is this a positive move for GameStop? Do you plan to invest in its stock or get involved with its new NFT marketplace? 
Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and share the video. For more content, you can subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV. Crypto talk by Calkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, Continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Welcome to another edition of Expert Talks on Kalkine TV. Sage with you again. Today's guest is Stephen Boland. He's the CEO of Acro Formwork and Construction Services Limited. For some background, Acro is a leading hire of formwork and scaffolding systems to large construction and civil infrastructure providers across Australia, operating a network of formwork and scaffolding branches in six states and employing approximately 280 people. Well, that's one way to keep yourself busy. To tell us more about what he does, Stephen Boland, the CEO of Acro Formwork and Construction, is here with us today. Welcome to the show, Stephen. Thank you, Sage. Good morning. How are you? Good, thank you. So great to have you with us. And I believe a congratulations is in store for signing two new contracts together valued at close to 11 million Australian dollars with existing clients. Yeah, that, um, that was actually in our industrial services space. So we, we've got two major parts of ACRO. We've got our civil infrastructure forward business and then, then we've got an industrial services business that um, services um, oil and gas, mining, power stations, etc. So the two contracts you're referring to um, very important for us. One is on the Snowy Hydro uh, project, which is you know, probably the biggest civil infrastructure project in Australia going you know, over the course of the next decade. So that's a sort of an additional $6 million of work in the next 12 months on top of what we already do. And the other one was um, with Origin Energy in uh, Surat Basin in Queensland, which is again an extension of a long-term contract. So um, we've got a nice balance in our sort of our, our revenue mix these days of you know, the, the really strong civil infrastructure, major marquee projects that, that do go sort of project to project. And then we've got a nice sort of consistent underlying revenue stream coming out of our industrial services uh, business. And those two contracts you refer to are particularly in that space. That's fantastic to hear. And the Snowy Hydro project, that sounds like it's going to be providing a lot of energy for Australian homes. Yeah. Um, and the due date for that's been extended recently. Is that where yeah. you're coming into it to help to expedite? Yeah, oh, look, uh, that, the announcements of the last couple of weeks about that, I think, are pretty political, really. I mean, we all know what's going on with sort of energy prices and generation in Australia at the moment. And, you know, the Snowy Hydro project, which was a you know, previous government sort of project, I think it's pretty clear now that the, that the new government is sort of saying, okay, well, this is going to be further delayed or you know, it's going to be longer than was first anticipated to get going. Um, all we know is that the project is going at some speed. Um, we're, we're sort of still, it's quite, still really in its infancy, but over the next five to 10 years, um, I expect that to be hopefully, you know, hopefully the most, you know, the biggest generating revenue project for ACRO, probably going into sort of the FY, FY24 period. Um, it's a huge civil infrastructure project. Yes, it definitely sounds like a lot of forward thinking involved with these types of projects. So the company has recorded about 45 million Australian dollars in new hire contracts over the first 11 yeah. months of the financial year 2022. Yeah. Which factors drove this incredible momentum, please? Yeah, look, that's, that's a really important number for us because in that particular, that's more in sort of the formwork space, we do have to go project to project. You don't get five-year contracts, you get project-to-project project contracts. So we have to keep winning 
projects, filling our pipeline and keeping it rolling. So $45 million year to date to the end of May is up $30 million on the same, sorry, up 30% on the same period last year. So that's, that's a great forward indicator for us about what the next three to six months is going to look like for the business. Um, so, I mean, I know that, that the fact we're up nearly 30% year on year is going to translate to better numbers in the next few months than even what we're doing today. Um, but we've just, we've just struck a real purple patch in this, in this civil space. You know, we're, we're winning probably one in two contracts that we're bidding on at the moment on some of the biggest, you know, biggest infrastructure, you know, transport infrastructure projects in the country, the big rail projects in, in Sydney and Melbourne and Brisbane, the, the Western Distributor project in Melbourne, the freeway project, the Sydney Gateway project, which is the new sort of motorway connection to Sydney Domestic Airport. You know, we've, we've struck a real purple patch in terms of the engineering expertise that our business can bring and solutions expertise we can bring to the, 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 uh, the customers in that space. So, um, yeah, again, that's a really important number. That the fact that we're up 30% year on year for 11 months, um, I know what that's going to translate to within the next three to six months in terms of you know, further growth in our, in our revenue and profitability. Well, I mean, Sydney itself is such a fascinating city in regard yeah. to how much engineering is constantly going on yeah. and changing yeah. it. Um, and sometimes engineers are the unsung heroes, you know, yeah. the people making it all happen. It's incredible. And I can just imagine the amount of uh, executive strategy and, and how focused yeah. you have to be on that to decide which projects to take on um, in regards to your timelines. So yeah. Stephen, we're so happy to have you with us to share your opinions and insights. Yeah. How is the infrastructure and construction sector, in your opinion, poised to grow in the upcoming years? We've heard a little bit of shaky, yeah. um, I don't know, a bit of shaky sentiment resonating yeah. from the area. Uh, I, I, um Again, I think that that's more political than anything else. Mm. If, I, if I look at what's, what's going on, really going on on the ground, and, and certainly what there's a lot of data about forecast of growth in spend on infrastructure, and um, frankly, you know, it's, 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 it's almost impossible to achieve the growth that's been that's actually on paper for the next two to three years. You can't get the labour, you won't get the equipment. That that's you know, I think it's just a, a reality of the, the world we're in today that these significant projects, civil projects that have already started or about to start will take longer and possibly be more expensive than were originally planned. Um, again, labour issues, raw material costs, you know, if you're bringing material from overseas, the, you know, the complications or the logistics of all of that, geopolitical situations, all of that. But for a business where we're basically higher up equipment on these jobs, I think it just means you're going to have a, a longer, flatter um, uplift in, in spending civil infrastructure, which is good news for us. So instead of it being a huge three-year sort of peak and then it drops off again, I think it's going to be a much flatter, um, you know, gradual rise in spend over the next five years. That that is still, you know, I've been with this business nine years. The level of activity at the moment I haven't seen in my nine years in Acro, and I'm expecting that same level of activity as a minimum to continue for the next five to ten years. Sounds like you're very well positioned to progress, uh, considering what you've just said. Yep. And on that note, we believe that the energy sector would continue to grow in the future as well, with the installation mm -hmm. of new mega renewable projects being yep. one of the focuses of the new government. How yep. is ACRO yep. positioned to tap into that opportunity, please? Yeah, well, I think Snow is a prime example of that. Okay? I mean, that was a previous government sort of initiative, but I think it's an absolute prime example. That as we you know we move to that more that more, more renewable style energy project, some of these the infrastructure required to support those projects is, is, is huge, and and, and um, you know we talk a lot about transport infrastructure because it's clear you know you, we can see in our cap in our cities you can see in Sydney and Melbourne and Brisbane Adelaide Perth you can see freeways being built you can see underground rail networks being built, but what you don't necessarily see is the um, utility infrastructure that's going on to to enable um, is to move into a different style of energy production, and that's what things like Snowy are. Uh, you know, that, that is actually going to be the biggest infrastructure project in the country. And there'll be a range of other things. A lot of a lot of new water treatment plant facilities, for example. A lot, lot going on in Queensland. Mm. Um, you know, we anywhere where there is a major project that requires the large pouring of concrete, putting it in its most base form. Um, you know, Acro's formwork will you know is very well positioned to be able to support that project. Um, and you know, our, you talked about engineers before. I mean, we've made it an absolute point of difference for us is the expertise that comes out of our engineering teams. We've doubled the number of engineers working in Acro 
over the four years that we've been a listed company. So we, we listed 40 in April 18. We have got double the number of engineers working in the business that we did then. In a business that also has you know, doubled its revenue and basically tripled its profit over that period as well. Uh, Stephen, and you I said that you've been working in the industry or for about nine years, is that correct? Yeah, nine years without product, yeah. As we wind up the discussion now, um, how has the advancement of technology impacted the type of engineers that you're yeah. hiring for these projects? Yeah, yeah. In, in the in the four work space, uh, a lot. So you you know you're looking. Um, we've got a we've got a, uh, an excellent relationship with a Spanish manufacturer of four work equipment, which is sort of it, this is a very innovative, cutting edge style of industry. It's really important for us to have that relationship. I mean they're doing a lot of work, you know, R&D work on a regular basis about coming up with new equipment to provide the customer with, you know, reduced cost in terms of labour and crane time and concrete pouring cycle time, etc. So look, it's changed a lot. You know, the, the, our, the type of equipment we're buying today and what our kit looks like compared to five years ago is dramatically different. Um, so it, it's been very important to us to have that relationship with a, with a European manufacturer who's really at the front end of of um, you know, in, you know, innovation in this industry, it is a, it is an industry that's got a lot of innovation and development involved in it, and um, you know, we're, we're in a good position to capitalise on that. Right. Well, it'll be really interesting to see as the electric vehicle charging stations and yeah. more of those cars yeah. are on the road, how uh, yeah. your business Acro will be sure. involved in that too. Yeah, for sure. Not for sure. Yeah. So, what are your plans for the next twelve months? Well, look, I think yeah, we've got we've got a lot of activity going on at the moment. We will. We'll, um, we, we will have a very, very strong finish to this financial year. We'll go into the new year expecting to have further growth and you know, strongly expecting to have further growth. Um, we, we really want to grow our industrial services business, potentially in the, in the West, West Australia and South Australia. We're very strong in New South Wales and Queensland, but not so much in the other side of the country. So, you know, we're looking at potentially maybe some M&A activity in that area. But, um, yeah, look, it'll be, um, we're, we're going to have a very strong finish to the year. We're only obviously you know, a week or so away from the end of June, our results will be out at the, in the end of August. Um, we won't be disappointed in terms of our current guidance. And then into next year, uh, again, we, we will see, you know, again, further growth. I mean, this year, our revenue is going to go up by something like 45% year on year. Um, our our NPAT is going to double in, in, 20, in 22 compared to 21. And then we'll get, we won't get that time or the same degree of growth in 23, but it'll still be another very, very good year. So no, look, I'm very confident in the bad picture in our business at the moment. It's, um, it's in pretty rude health. Thank you so much, Stephen. And I think you're right about projects being stuck in the pipeline re yeah. regarding political reasons. We've seen a change right. of premiers in New South Wales, change of the federal government. So hopefully uh, we'll gain some momentum on those important projects for the railways and roads that you've mentioned today. Yeah, yeah I think it'll just continue, I really do. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate your insights. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks for your time. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye. And if you just joined us, we had a very informative discussion with Stephen Boland. He's a CEO of Acro Formwork and Construction Services Limited. You can watch the full interview on Calkine Media's YouTube channel. Keep watching for more of these live expert talks and market insights. Until the next episode, stay apprised and invest wise with Calkine Media. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Calkine Media's growing platform, Calkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Calkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at calkine.com.au. Short selling refers to the sale of a stock which an investor does not own. The investor borrows the stock and sells it in the market and then later covers it by buying it from the market. This type of strategy is used mostly by speculators and can also be used by hedgers. Short selling usually comes into the picture when an investor expects the price of the stock to decline. Such price movement is the expectation against which the investors believe they would be able to buy the stocks in the future and gain a profit too. When short selling a stock, an investor borrows stock from its existing owner. 
Usually the broker. The investor then has to buy back these stocks from the market and return them to the broker. And since the stock is owned by the broker and not the investor, the dividend from the stock should be given to the owner of the stock. Therefore, when an investor returns it, they must pay a lending fee along with any dividends received by them. The investor must also pledge a security against the borrowed stock from the broker. This aspect makes these stock loans secured because there is collateral offered against them. If the prices of the stock were to go up, contradictory to the expectations of the investor, then they would incur a loss. In either case, the investor must return the stocks to the broker, even if that means buying them from the market at a higher rate. Well, that is how the concept of short selling works. What do you think about short selling? You can leave a comment below and you can share this video with your friends. You can also like it and you can subscribe to our channel. You can also press the bell icon to get notifications for our latest videos. I'm Rachel for Calkine Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Brits are struggling with high energy bills after the energy price cap revision came into effect in April this year. These bills are already unaffordable for millions of households, but the situation is likely to deteriorate as they're estimated to go up further this year. So in light of this, let's take a look at some energy related stocks in the London Stock Exchange. The first one is National Grid. National Grid is the world's largest publicly traded utility business with 40.1 billion pounds. The energy and gas company has operations in both the UK and the US and its share prices have witnessed a growth of around 17% over the past 12 months. NG's EPS currently stands at 0.47. Next is Centrica. Centrica is the UK's leading electricity and gas supplier. The company has been awarded the gas storage license to reopen a mothballed storage site off England's east coast as the government plans to have sufficient gas stocks for winter. And with a market cap of 5.1 billion pounds, Centrica shares have given significant returns of 76% to investors over the past year, while its year-to-day return stands at around 21%. Another one is Contour Global. This leading British power generation firm is listed as a mid-cap focused FTSE listed stock. It holds a market cap of 1.6 billion pounds and the stock has offered a return of around 34% to investors over the past 12 months. And its year-to-day return stands at around 32%. GLO's EPS is currently around 0.02. And that concludes our list. Now that you're up to speed, hit that bell icon to stay up to date and boost your financial IQ. I'm Holly Shields for Calcane Media. talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine.
One thing we know for sure, and that is the number of people getting older is increasing. According to the Department of Health and Aged Care, around 1.3 million Australians subscribed to aged care services in 2019 and 2020. And data suggests this number could multiply threefold by 2050, meaning we will need around 1 million aged care workers by that year. The sector is in a dire need of reforms to ensure efficient functioning of the industry across all states. It's essential the new federal government talks about the aged care sector of the country. Recently, the new Minister for Aged Care, Anika Wells, highlighted how important it was to bring in reforms and overhaul the funding model. The primary aim is to ensure quality and safe senior care. This includes prioritisation to put senior citizens on priority. Their needs, demands and choices should be given foremost importance. Navigation should be simplified. Authorities should try to make communication take place place face to face. Another basis for reforms has to be strongly regulated policies for the age sector so that there are no loopholes on the ground level and the services are utilised optimally. Another important aspect is transparency. Often, because of a lack of openness, people may not be aware of all the services available to them. There must be transparency between the sector runners and the care seekers. Accountability is also a must in this sector. Aged care service providers should be accountable for their services and responsible for their actions while interacting with their clients. Authorities need to ensure that the workforce is provided by proper training at timely intervals. So let's hope the aged care sector can step up and provide the ultimate care for our ageing population. So what do you think should happen to the aged care sector? You can leave a comment below, you can like and share this video with your friends, you can also subscribe to our channel and you can press the bell icon to get notifications for our latest videos. I'm Rachel for Calkai Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. If you're new to the share trading scene, a skill that's going to be of importance to you is learning how to value a stock. There are many options available, so arriving at the one that suits you best will be a magic lesson learned. Think of it as shopping for cereal in the supermarket. First step is to explore various brands available. Moving to other important aspects like containers, flavours, price. Similarly, while choosing a stock, investors must understand all the dynamics and value in it before spending their hard-earned cash. Now, valuing a stock can help investors understand if the price is low or high compared to the company's performance and growth outlook. So, without wasting any more time, let's get started with understanding how to value a stock. There are two main methods used to value a stock. Technical analysis, fundamental analysis. You may have heard of them already. Let's find out a bit more about technical analysis. So technical analysis is the study of price actions which is based on the major assumption this is freely traded markets travel in a trend and despite a lot of advancements in the field the primary goal of the field remains the same identify the trend as early as possible capitalize on it for as long as possible and manage the risk along the way now whereas fundamental analysis is a method to evaluate the intrinsic value of a business through evaluating the financial, economic, qualitative and quantitative factors. It's usually applied when investors seek to invest in a business for the long term. However, special situation investing such as buybacks, rights issues, merger and acquisitions and even more also call for using knowledge of fundamental analysis to make profits in the short term. Let's now take a look at a few ways of determining a stock's relative value. First, 
the price to earnings ratio. This is the ratio of a company's share price relative to the earnings per share, which is generally for the last 12 months or annually, also known as earnings multiple. It's widely used by market participants while referring to valuations. It also reflects the current investor demand for any particular stock. Next is the price to book ratio. This is a valuation multiple depicting the market's perception of a particular stock. It evaluates the market value of the stock or per share in comparison to its book value. It can also be termed as the market to book ratio or P slash B ratio. In other words, this ratio can also be interpreted as the company's net assets compared to the sale price of the stock. And the last method is the price to earnings to growth ratio. And this is defined as the price earnings ratio divided by the expected growth rate in earnings per share. PEG ratio is a function of the risk growth potential and payout ratio of the firm. The riskiness is assessed based on beta value. As risk increases the PEG ratio of a firm, it will decline. Thanks for joining us on the report. Now, if you do like the information, please give it a like, share, comment on the video below and subscribe to the channel. Press the bell icon, you'll be notified of the most recent videos from Calkine. But for more articles, do head to the website, it's calkinemedia.com. This is Sage for Calkine Media. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calkine TV. Welcome to another edition of Expert Talks by Calkine TV. Sage, your host here. Our guest today, Thomas Hanley. He's the Managing Director and CEO of Singular Health Limited. For some background, Singular Health Group is a medical technology company that delivers personalised surgical planning and design solutions for better health outcomes. So here to tell us more about what they do is a Managing Director himself as well as CEO Thomas Hanley. Welcome to the show, Thomas. Good morning, Sage, and uh, good morning to your viewers. We're so glad to have you with us. We'd love to find out more about how Singular Health's 25% owned additive engineering has commissioned its manufacturing facility in Melbourne. How significant is this update for the company and its investors, please? Uh, well, great question. Um, I guess to understand the significance of the, of the um, uh, commissioning of the plant, you have to understand a little bit more about our software. So inherently, what our software does is take a CT scan, which is made up of hundreds and sometimes many hundreds of slices, combines that together to create a 3D volume rendered image of that particular body part. And, and recently, we've been focusing a lot on the cranium. So that's sort of this part of the head right up to here. So imagine, for, if you will, taking a CT scan, looking at those individual slices and having a piece of software that combines those slices together to create a, a, a 3D and virtual reality image of that. We then take our software to then what we do, segment that. So we take the, bone, the, the, the skeletal structure of the, the cranium and the, and the head and we basically segment that into what we call an STL or CAD file. So it's a computer added design file. And once you're able to do that, you, you're able to sort of look at the body in, in various sort of components. And this here, for example, is a jaw. So instead of looking at this as a generic jaw or, you know, someone else's jaw, which a surgeon can then practice on, this is actually the jaw that's been segmented from someone's CT scan. And everyone's jaw is different. Everyone's head's different. Um, so this gives the opportunity uh, for us to then send these images to our 3D printing facility in Melbourne and they can then 3D print what we call biomodels. So this is a biomodel printed in plastic or nylon, and this is used for a surgeon to then look at the type of surgery they're about to perform. So in this particular case, you'll see that this is a, um, uh, a, a, uh, a, ch uh, a chin advancement where they've cut along here and advanced the chin. And then after that, the surgeon can then look, work out where the drill holes go, work out where the cut lines go, make that um, incision and that advancement in the surgery and then use uh, custom made titanium implants to tie all that together. And that image that you see here, this uh, 3D printed uh, plastic model, 
as well as the titanium implants that bring all that together are all 3D printed from our facility or our 25% uh, stake in our facility in Melbourne. And that's what really ties our software into that sort of commercial application of surgical uh, precision um, and planning. That's fantastic. Sounds like you're assisting the surgeons to get the job done more efficiently and accurately. So how is Scan to Surgery, your trademark, revolutionising the planning and execution of these surgical procedures and improving the patient outcomes, please? Yeah, so um, again, that all ties back to our software. So um, what we started off was a premise that instead of looking and focusing a lot of uh, complicated hardware, we would use existing CT scans. They would then, so a, a patient would go to uh, an MRI or CT clinic um, traditionally, uh, they would get a CT scan. That CT scan can then be imported into our software, as I said, created into a virtual 3D image of which the surgeon or the clinician can then look at uh, the particular procedure that they're about to commit. They can then go through and segment that and then practice that procedure, whether in virtual reality or uh, in 3D. Um, work out the implants, work, work through the process of, of just how um, accurate that surgery is going to be and then design the implants through the software and then export that to the facility in Melbourne. They will then print out the bio models for practice um, and the implants and that will then go straight to the surgeon. So it really sort of creates an entire vertical uh, process around uh, our application and our software from the point where the, the surgeon or the, or the patient gets their CT scan all the way to the process of actually making that first incision. That sounds great. I mean, this is really putting Australia at the forefront of advanced manufacturing and growth, which is fantastic to hear. And last quarter, the company worked with a group of strategic investors to establish a sales and marketing joint venture in Macau. How are things progressing at this end? Uh, look, they're progressing pretty well. Um, obviously, China has had a, uh, a lockdown or an ongoing lockdown uh, with COVID. But in doing so, we've been able to work with um, a surgical team and some salespeople in Macau, and we're about to release the software for their first initial trials with one or two hospitals in that smaller sort of provincial area of China before we then look to release that into uh, the greater mainland China area. So what's really interesting about that particular market is that, like, um, is that the number of CT scans sort of uh, in the millions and millions. Um, and more and more so, people are asking for that sort of really precise, accurate type of surgery. And it's, it's a growth area, not just in places like China, but also in South Korea, Japan, um, Australia, Europe, the United States. So uh, it is really a, 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 a potential market for us that we can see a lot of upside. That's fantastic. It's great to hear that technology is advancing to help not only the physicians and the surgeons, but also the people going through the therapy who need mm. to get accustomed to the, the, the quite um, sterile and, and cold atmosphere that comes with getting the precision required. So on that note, what is Singular Health's growth strategy for the US and European geographies as well? Excellent question. So we've just gone through, um, we're about to do our final ISO 13485, that's the quality management system for uh, medical technology uh, globally. Um, as we're doing that, we've actually made our first, uh, about to make our first application for 510K FDA approval for our software called um, 3DICOM MD. And 3DICOM MD is part of our suite of software. So our software uh, comes in five flavors, if you would. We've got uh, 3DICOM patient, and that allows um, individual patients to request their CT scans, upload their CT scans into a computer, and then look at their images in 3D. Um, and what we find by doing that is enables patients to get a better understanding of the particular prognosis uh, or diagnosis they're going through. So um, whether that's looking at a tumor um, or looking at uh, a broken bone or a fracture, Seeing that in 3D is a lot easier to understand than looking at those individual slices. That software is available now. Um, 3DICOM R&D is our next uh, software application. Again, that's used at universities, um, researchers, students, etc., to again, understand uh, looking at those CT scans, practice some artificial intelligence tools that comes with it. Um, and then we have our certified product, 3DICOM MD and 3DICOM Surgical, and those are going through their FDA process over the next 12 months. Uh, which will then allow us to work with some of the partners that we've been working with in the United States, particularly around cranial implants, um, 
I, n um, earlier we did a project with a CSIRO to generate, to create an artificial intelligence tool that would automatically generate uh, a cranial implant uh, in about three minutes uh, from a design point of view and send that to the 3D printer. So all those sort of things are sort of building up to a launch probably in the uh, third quarter of 2023 into the US and European markets. That's fantastic to hear. Best of luck with your goals moving forward. And thank you so much for sharing your insights from what you do. It sounds like such noble work and it's obviously doing a lot of good for the industry. Uh, could you just, before you go, inform us on what the near-term goals are for Singular Health? Yes, yeah, so obviously our near-term near goals are to complete uh, and get our FDA and TGA certification for our software. So that's a, a goal that a lot of the team are working on at the moment. Um, uh, that along with obviously getting uh, our, three, our um, uh, manufacturing facility in Melbourne connected through to our software so that the process becomes extremely streamlined from the point of scan to the point of surgery. Um, and then furthermore, we're looking at two or three different additional applications around being able to segment using artificial intelligence various parts of soft tissue in the body. So we're looking at particular projects at the moment where um, using artificial intelligence, and this is an area which is going to have a lot of growth in the sort of medical space going into the future, but being able to use an AI to detect things that you cannot see with a naked eye. So, so for example, early stage lung cancer um, is a really interesting area where if you use AI appropriately, it can kind of detect those areas of concern before necessarily you see them with the naked eye. And I think those are areas of interest for us going forward with our MD software, um, which will make a real difference. Just before you go, on what you've just said there, a lot of people are getting involved with wearing wearables that are mm. recording vital signs and things like that. Does that tie into what you do? Um, look, not necessarily. Um, what we've always, we've always come from the view that when a CT scan or an MRI scan is taken, generally speaking, there's an area of interest which a particular surgeon is looking for and it ignores the rest of the CT scan, which can be about 90% of the information. So uh, being able to apply an AI, an algorithm, that can go through the rest of the scan to determine whether or not there's any other issues that that practitioner should be looking at is really sort of that key area um, of visualization and artificial intelligence that the company's working on. That being said, though, the ability for these wearables to sort of measure um, health outcomes um, kind of will, will then sort of, I guess, overlay that, that uh, diagnostic information and create some sort of connection between the two, which I hope that sort of data will be, will be used by other medical companies in the future. Great. Thank you so much for uh, helping us understand that better. And thank you for joining no us today, Thomas. We do appreciate your My insights. My pleasure. Thank you very and much. If you just joined us, we had a very interesting discussion with Thomas Hanley, the Managing Director and CEO of Singular Health Group Limited. You can watch the full interview at Calcine Media's YouTube channel. Keep watching for more of these live expert talks and market insights. Till the next episode, stay apprised and invest wise with Calcine Media. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Calkine Media's growing platform, Calkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Calkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at calkine.com.au. What is Alec Monopoly NFT collection? Is it expensive? The so-called crypto winter of 2022 is neither deterring new crypto launches nor the release of new NFT collections. The term is used to imply a dull phase during which prices of cryptocurrencies are down with no near-term trajectory reversal in sight. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm Sage for Calpine Media. Now, having said that, in the space of a new crypto launch, one Nox GNOX token is in focus. In the NFT verse, it is minting the collection launched by popular artist Alec Monopoly, which is hitting the headlines. Let us quickly explore these digital assets. And after this, let us take a brief look at how 2022 has been for NFTs. So what is Alec Monopoly's NFT collection? 
The collection, titled Rags to Richie, houses 6,500 NFTs, which come with over 150 unique attributes and 50 artworks of artist Alec Monopoly. Monopoly, an American street artist, is popular for his physical artworks, which include a mural for watchmaker Tag Ur and multiple works with a focus on the Mr. Monopoly character of the Monopoly board game. The NFT collection is being minted and the project is inviting enthusiasts to participate by using either MoonPay or MetaMask services. MoonPay can allow participation through a credit card and while cryptos can be used to make purchases by picking the MetaMask option. It is being said that the giveaway after the Alec Monopoly NFT minting will have US $1 million worth of physical artworks and this will be followed by merchandise and exclusive clothing for NFT holders, a party with the artist and even a metaverse event. The project is also talking about the belief of artist monopoly in Web 3.0. Is Alec Monopoly NFT expensive though? As of now, the minting is underway and the real picture can become clear once the process is over. Separately, since NFTs are tradable like cryptocurrencies, if any buyer of the NFT during the ongoing minting decides to auction the asset, the bids might be high. For now though, the total sales value of the collection is not known and could all the assets be minted is also not clear. Alec Monopoly's physical artworks have, in the past, reportedly earned backers like Miley Cyrus and even Snoop Dogg. NFTs in 2022. In 2022, many new NFTs have been released. These include a charity-focused auction by singer Madonna, collection of actor Bill Murray and scale model car brand Hot Wheels. New marketplaces including LimeWire, GameStop have also been launched amidst fan frenzy. However, this year has not been as hot in terms of price as previous years when artist Beeple's works were bought by enthusiasts at very expensive prices. So the bottom line. The new Alec Monopoly NFT collection is on the block right now. The project is inviting enthusiasts for minting. Will the NFTs attract high prices is a question that might be answered soon. Thanks for joining us on the report. Now, if you do like this information, let us know by giving it a like, sharing it and commenting below. But for more articles, please head to the website calkaimedia.com and if you do subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon and you'll be notified of every new video that is released. Thanks for joining us again. This is Sage for Kalkine Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, Continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. It's tax time once again, and that presents a good opportunity for savvy investors. Companies listed on the Australian Securities Exchange, or the ASX, have to report their earnings at least twice a year. This process gives an opportunity for analysts, traders and investors to read through earnings reports and analyse performance. Some experts even provide insights into how the company might perform into the future. Recently, Morgan's reported that the ASX 200 is likely to close the financial year showing a growth of 21.6% in earnings per share. However, the focus will primarily be on the growth of financial year 2023. Various companies have been dealing with productivity and logistical problems across their global business chains. Rio Tinto, for example, has been quite open about their issues. 
Strong performance of metal markets and the generation of substantial revenues has helped support outsized shareholder returns. As predicted by experts, this trend is supposed to continue in the first half of 2023. Now, speaking of stable revenues, AI Media Technologies' revenue has been stable at $15 million for the past three quarters. The company is a provider of technology-driven captioning, transcription and translation services. This quarter, a revenue growth trajectory is expected from the company as financial year 2023 begins. Supply shortages have been one of the most prominent problems that have affected various companies listed on the ASX. For Centuria Industrial Real Estate, the semiconductor supply shortage has crimped their growth. It remains to be seen how the upcoming quarter will turn out for the company, but as for PWR Holdings Limited, which is a company involved in designing and selling cooling products and solutions to automotive markets, revenue is expected to grow. The continued growth in defence and aerospace as well as battery and hybrid systems cooling and overall forecast emerging technologies can only help the company's performance in the upcoming financial year. So there you have it. Those are just a few stocks worth checking out in August as we start lodging our tax returns and have a little bit of extra cash to play with. Which stocks are you keeping a close eye on? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and share the video. For more content, you can subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. I'm James, reporting for Cowkind. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Investors targeting stable returns over the long term generally look for industrial stocks that could build or improve their wealth. Let's take a look at some TSX industrial stocks worth exploring. The first one is Bombardier. Bombardier recently opened a Singapore service center in the Asia Pacific. And with this new original equipment manufacturer or OEM business aviation facility, the Canadian business jet maker aims to expand and improve its customer service footprint globally. The BBDB stock rose over 15% quarter to date. Another stock to eye is Russell Metals. Metal distributor Russell reported revenues of 1.33 billion Canadian dollars in the first quarter relative to the 855 million at the same period a year ago. The Canadian industrial service provider also improved its profitability by posting a net profit of $99 million in the latest quarter, higher than the $81 million the quarter prior. IUS grew by about 11% week to date, and this TSX industrial stock, however, did dip by around 21% in one year. Another one is TFI International. TFI noted a year-over-year -year jump of 121% in its net income to $147 million in the first quarter of 2022. The $10 billion market cap logistics company recorded a return on equity of over 37%, depicting its profitability. The TFI stock zoomed by over 15% month-to-date. Number four on our list is ATS Automation Tooling Systems. ATS Automation, on the 17th of July, revealed that its industrial automation unit received an electric vehicle's order of $90 million, according to current exchange rates, from an existing customer. The ATA stock has shot up by over 5% in 52 weeks. And finally, Air Canada. The airline recently partnered with Emirates to grow its airline network to give customers more options and enhance the travelling experience. This mid-cap stock rose by almost 10% in July and, based on data taken from Revinitiv, had an RSI of 45.07 on July 21. Now that you're up to speed, hit that bell icon to stay up to date and boost your financial IQ. I'm Holly Shields for Calcine Media.
Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Calkine Media's growing platform, Calkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Calkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at calkine.com.au. As if the cryptosphere isn't already reeling enough, the space now must contend with an insider trading scandal. The name at the centre of the scandal is Ishan Wahi. Now first and foremost, who is Ishan Wahi? Wahi is an ex-manager of the Coinbase exchange. He's accused of having used confidential information about the forthcoming listings of crypto assets, including the XYO token, on the exchange to make illicit profits. His brother, Nikhil Wahi, is a co-accused, and the Wahi brothers were arrested on Thursday in Seattle in America. Wire fraud charges have now been brought against the two, and another accused in the fraud is one Samir Ramani, a Houston resident who is a longtime friend of Ishan Wahi. The Wahi brothers are mentioned as Indian citizens in the document released by the Securities and Exchange Commission, also known as the SEC. The related civil proceedings by the SEC now help to shine a light on insider trading. The SEC's document mentions how the three used insider information on soon to be listed crypto assets and traded these assets ahead of the listing to book profits. They're said to have made more than 1.1 million US dollars in illicit wealth by engaging in these activities. So with all that said, what exactly is crypto insider trading? Well, the modus operandi of an insider trading case resembles that of any typical securities fraud. The perpetrators use the confidential information about soon to happen events for their advantage. And to preserve the interests of investors, the SEC and other regulators across the world are like on. Hello, I'm James and thanks for joining me on Cowkind TV for the top ASX buzzing stocks of the day. In this show, I'll take a look at four stocks buzzing off the back of positive early morning results or from significant announcements. First up is buy now, pay later company Sezzle, who today provided their market update on key financial metrics for the second quarter ending on the 30th of June 2022. This small cap company's underlying merchant sales for the second quarter of 2022 have increased by 1.9% on a year-on-year -year basis and its total income grew by 6.8%. In June 2022, the company launched a subscription service called Sezzle Premium, providing consumers with a number of additional features and benefits relative to the company's core pay-in-for products. As of the 27th of July 2022, its total subscriptions exceed 47,000. Commenting on the results, Sezzle's executive chairman and CEO, Charlie Yukame, stated that in the last few months, they have launched 40 million US dollars worth of revenue and cost savings initiatives as they move towards profitability and positive free cash flow generation. Moving on now, and online sports betting platform PointsBet reported a 28% increase in net gains in the fourth quarter of the 2022 financial year. The company also witnessed a $598.6 million turnover, which is up by 21% on the previous corresponding period. In June, a member of the Sasaquana International Group of Companies, SIG Sports Investment Corp, became PointsBet's largest shareholder, paying $94.2 million. Our third stock worth keeping a close eye on today is Australian gaming, entertainment and hospitality company, the Star Entertainment Group. 
It provided an update on its expected financial year 2022 revenue, with early financial year 2023 trading performance also included as part of its balance sheet position. The company expects to report a normalised revenue of $1.53 billion Aussie dollars and net debt to be $1.15 billion in the 12 months to the 30th of June for 2022. Star Entertainment noted that due to higher than average rainfall in financial year 2022 and the impact of COVID-19, the Queen's Wharf Brisbane Integrated Resort development is now expected to open in the second half of the 2023 calendar year. The company has $513 million of liquidity on hand with undrawn facilities of $433 million and cash on hand of $80 million. And the fourth stock to keep tabs on today is Australian financial technology company Prosper Group. Today, Prosper Group provided a trading update for the fourth quarter of the 2022 fiscal year. The company's revenue is up by 61% against the previous corresponding period, while its closing loan book is up by 64%. Prosper observed significantly higher demand for funds from small business across Australia and New Zealand. Commenting on the results, co-founder and chief executive officer Greg Moshal said that the company's hard work has translated into record-breaking results, including the $104.6 million loan, which originated, of course, in June. All right, that's all for this edition of the top ASX buzzing stocks for the day. Another episode is coming your way on Monday. Until then, make sure to keep it locked here on Kalkai and TV for the latest market insights and business news. I'm James, signing off for now. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV. NFT artist Ape Brave Club headlines Tomorrowland, what it means for Web3. So what is Web 3.0? Also dubbed Web 3 and sometimes referred to as the metaverse, it is an anticipated move of the internet towards a setting where users, not companies, will dominate. As of now, tech giants like Google and Facebook have excessive control over people's browsing experiences. Web 3.0 claims to decisively mark an end to this. Please subscribe to the channel, Sage here for Calkine Media. But the reach of Web 3.0 is still limited. DeFi protocols, which claim to be part of the Web 3.0 movement in finance, have had a mixed bag spell so far, comprising successes and failures. Now an entrant by the name of Ape Rave Club is claiming to usher in the shift of music and entertainment towards Web 3.0. Let's explore this in detail. So what is the Ape Rave Club? Very limited information on the Ape Rave Club project is available in the public domain at this stage. The official website has links to the Twitter account and also a YouTube channel. However, the subscriber count on YouTube is not even 100 as of yet and any content is yet to be uploaded. So what is indicated on the website of Tomorrowland? A Belgian music festival is that Ape Rave Club is linked to the popular Board Ape Yacht Club or BAYC NFT project, which is based on the Ethereum blockchain. Tomorrowland's blog also suggests that BAYC number 9184 is behind the Ape Rave Club. Ape Rave Club is in the news because of a recently concluded performance on Tomorrowland's stage. 
It is being said that the performance was led by an NFT artist. Pictures of the performance where an artist donning a BAYC NFT mask can be seen playing music have been shared by A Prave Club on its Twitter handle. Tomorrowland and Ape Rave Club. A renowned music festival, Tomorrowland, has been running for the last 17 years. But now, according to the latest blog on its website, Tomorrowland is entering the NFT space with its Medallion of Memoria collection, which will provide special access to its events. Ape Rave Club's Tomorrowland performance is being touted as the first of its kind event by a digital artist. And meanwhile, in the wider NFT verse, Beeple remains arguably the most popular artwork creator. Viewpoint. The coming together of Tomorrowland and Ape Rave Club can be viewed as a small step towards Web 3.0, whether it will mark a decisive shift of entertainment towards decentralised internet is yet to be seen. For now, the wider cryptocurrency and NFT versus passing through a deeply subdued phase where prices of assets have fallen sharply. Only time will tell if 8 Brave Club's NFT artist status can make an impact for long. Please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to be notified of the latest videos. For more information and regular updates, please head to the website calchimedia.com. I'm Sage for Calchi Media. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calkine TV. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Calkine Media's growing platform, Calkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Calkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at calkine.com.au. Hello and good afternoon. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Holly Shields here for Calcane Media and welcome to another edition of Executive Corner Expert Talks. Today we'll be exploring Classify, the game-changing health and fitness platform that's shaking up the personal training industry. And joining us today to share their insights is none other than CEO and co-founder Tristan Rushworth. Tristan, thanks very much for coming on the show today. It's great to have you with us. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Pleasure to have you on. First of all, could you walk us through some of the challenges people face in building their personal training businesses? Yeah, absolutely. So we see that there's kind of three key challenges that personal trainers face when they're building a business. The first is a is a lack of time because um, a traditional face-to-face -face PT business, PTs work really long hours because their clients want to work out before work or after work. Um, and then often they're, they're not able to earn enough money. There's a really scary industry stat that 80% of new personal trainers leave within the first year because quite often they can't make enough money. And one of the key reasons we think uh, for that is that they're not typically trained on how to run a business. Um, and then the third thing is around mindset, not typically having the confidence to charge enough for the work that they do or having the right systems in place to, to build a successful business. It's interesting, and how does Classify step in here and help those looking to pursue a career in personal training? Yeah, so we're a technology and software business, so a big part of what we do is we provide all the, all the tech that they need in one place to build a really successful business, whether it be online um, or also helping them get more efficient uh, with their face-to-face -face business. But then two other kind of key areas that we help them with is we help them with marketing, so we help 
provide more, uh, give them the, the tools and the systems and also the knowledge uh, to get more leads into their business. Um, and then the final thing that we really help them with is, is getting really good at sales, so having really good conversations with potential clients to turn them into customers. That's incredible. And in your view, are those the sort of pillars needed to succeed in the online personal training world? Yeah, so I think that that's kind of the basics. That's what, the, that's what in our view, is, is kind of like the foundations for building a really good business. But then, um, you know, one of the most important things is obviously getting results for clients. Um, if you're really good at getting results for clients, like in most businesses, a client's going to stay with you for longer. They're also going to um, refer other people to you. Then as a personal trainer grows, it's then really important in, in our view to have really good systems and processes in place so that personal trainers can then scale their impact without creating lots of additional complexity and headaches for them in their business. Because most personal trainers are solo entrepreneurs. So, you know, um, the number of clients, uh, as the number of clients increases, the, the amount of time that a personal trainer has in a week doesn't increase. So they need to get really kind of efficient and, and uh, slick at what they're doing, both to you know, build a great business for themselves, but also to deliver a great service for their clients. Absolutely, and I'm sure it can be especially daunting for those new PTs entering the industry. Yeah, it's it really is. It really is, and you know, a, typically a new personal trainer will join the industry. They'll go through their fitness qualifications. They'll start to learn how to coach clients and how the, how the how the muscles and body works. But in what we the big gap that we want to fill is that um, most personal trainers, when they go through their qualifications, are not kind of really taught how to build a business and how to sell how to market themselves and how to piece together different bits of technology so we aim to make it a really simple straightforward process to, to start working with clients to start growing their business and start building a successful business that's great to hear because it is such a crucial step to have that education and framework in place there now, you've been quite successful so far. You've recently partnered with industry expert Ollie Carson to create the Classify X Supercharged program, which sounds awesome. Could you tell us a bit more about this program? Yeah, absolutely. So what, what, what we've kind of specialized in doing is, is uh, giving personal trainers a really good start. So we kind of use the analogy of we are uh, kind of experts at getting personal trainers to base camp. So getting them to sort of, 5,000 pounds or 9,000 Aussie dollars per month. And then what Ollie specializes in doing is taking the coaches that are ready, um, helping them scale the summit, whether that's be uh, helping them to earn sort of 20,000 plus Aussie dollars a month or hiring other trainers to come and work in their business. Ollie kind of is an expert in taking trainers to that next level. Um, and a lot of what he works on is, is mindset um, and helping personal trainers uh, charge their worth, um, all using our kind of t the classified technology and systems um, as, as the foundation for everything uh, running really efficiently in their business. Um, but Ollie's kind of like a, he's a, he's a sales and marketing expert in the fitness in industry. He's built and run uh, his own personal training business uh, over several years and he got so good at that that um, he just had a lot of demand for people wanting to learn from him so it was a it was a great partnership um, because we both kind of got similar values and similar beliefs about how, how to build a successful business. Well it does sound like a great partnership there and uh, it sounds like a great fit for you so that is good to hear. Now, I'd love to know how does Classify help trainers in turning leads into customers with smart automations? Yeah, so there's, there's, se there's several things that we do. Um, the first is that we build every coach a website and then we set up smart automations on the website to generate leads. So everything from um, automated email sequences. I mean, a lot of people think that email's dead uh, in the fitness industry. It's certainly a great will, <coughs> excuse me, a great way to, to build and nurture new relationships with clients. Um, and then we also set up automations that just run in the background for trainers to, to help them grow their business, whether it be from having social media posts, the, the templates that are done for them and they, that they can schedule through our systems and our technology. Um, but then as a trainer, 
trainer grows, um, there's a lot of automations that run in the background to do things like ask clients for testimonials, ask clients for referrals. These are the kind of conversations that tr personal trainers uh, often find uncomfortable. So we aim to take these really important things and just have them running in the background uh, to help trainers to keep growing their business. Right. It sounds like you're really able to step in there and take the legwork out for these these PTs and make the system overall much smoother for them. Yeah, that's that's what we aim to do. So we aim to to automate a lot of the repeatable tasks that um, uh, that a trainer often doesn't like doing or finds time consuming. But what we what we want to do is we want to give trainers a system in their business that doesn't automate everything because in our view, personal training is still a super personal service. I think when you sign up for a personal trainer, you're signing up because you want to work with that person. So there's, there are definitely key parts in the customer journey that we see that are, that are, that are really important for the, for the trainer to step in to make sure uh, that that strong relationship is maintained uh, and that there's still a strong coaching aspect to it. Um, but yeah, we try to, try to automate and really systematize this so that a trainer knows what they should be doing, when they should be doing it, um, which clients they should be focusing on. Um, we aim to make it really, really simple for, for trainers to be knowing what they should be doing next in their business. That's terrific. It sounds like you're really offering them the best of both worlds there. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we really try to. And we try to make it fun for them to run their business as well. And, and also, you know, help them um, with support and guidance along the way. Um, because you know, running a solo entrepreneurial business can be pretty challenging because you have to wear lots of different hats. Um, so we, we aim to get a really good balance between providing the technology and systems and then also the support and guidance and, and, and also trying to make it fun for them as well. Absolutely, that is so important there. Now Tristan, we'd love to know what are your objectives for Classify for the rest of 2022? Yeah, so we're we're still a relatively early stage startup. Um, so we've got some big big growth ambitions this year, uh, and that includes uh, expanding into different countries. So at the moment we're predominantly UK based, um, but we're looking to take our first steps overseas and looking to uh, to join you guys uh, down under later this year, which which we're really really excited about. Um, and then also just continuing to launch new features and new services for our customers. Um, we've, we're only kind of starting to scratch the surface with, with what we believe we can do to, to help personal trainers. And we're really excited because there are hundreds of thousands of, of personal trainers in English speaking markets alone that um, in the main up until, up until recently have been kind of going through this journey on their own. And you know, we, we aim to make this a lot, lot simpler and, and help lots of personal trainers become really successful. Uh, and in the process, you know, help uh, lots of people become fit and healthy and, and achieve their uh, personal health goals. Right, that is the ultimate goal at the end of the day. But um, overall, great to hear, very exciting stuff. And it sounds like you have a really big year ahead of you with lots of exciting expansion and uh, new features on the horizon. So I'll definitely keep an eye out for everything you've got going on. But uh, with that said, thanks very much for making time for us today, Tristan. It's been really great to have you here on Executive Corner Expert Talks. Thank you. It's been great speaking to you. Pleasure to have you on. Thanks for your time as well, viewers. If you've just joined us, that was Tristan Brushworth, the COO and co-founder of Classify. And if you missed any part of that chat, you can catch the full interview on our YouTube channel here at Calkine Media. I'm Holly Shields for Calkine TV. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. China. 
the proverbial thorn in the side of the world of geopolitics. A country that has become more and more emboldened and aggressive on the world stage with each passing year. Now, it's not merely the opinion of civilians. On Sunday, Mark Miley, a US Army general who sits as the Joint Chiefs Chairman, iterated his concerns surrounding China's ever-growing aggression over the past five years. Miley is currently on a trip to the Indo-Pacific to shore up the US's alliance with nations in the region and act as a counterbalance to China. He was in Indonesia on Sunday and will head to Australia this week to meet with Indo-Pacific Chiefs of Defence. That's according to AP. Miley's trip echoes the sentiments of the Biden administration, who have turned their focus to the Indo-Pacific region to solidify the country's allegiances and keep close tabs on China. Of particular concern of late has been an increase in the number of dangerous intercepts of US and allied vessels, including that of Australia, Japanese and Canadian ships. These ships are being stopped in a confronting manner during their trips to Asia. Miley was quoted as saying, the message is the Chinese military in the air and at sea have become significantly more and noticeably more aggressive in this particular region. As a result, Milley has ordered a comprehensive review of interaction with Chinese forces over the past five years. Taiwan remains a key concern both strategically and geographically. Taiwan acts as a great competitor to many of the products that China makes, subsequently providing a breakup of their production monopoly and, geographically, it's close to many Western affiliates and crucial shipping routes for the West. More than once this year, China has sent groups of warplanes near Taiwan. The governments of China and Russia also sent jets over the seas near Japan during President Biden's visit to the region in May. Now, with the military beginning to up the ante in their opposition to China, the next 12 months could be very interesting. But quite simply, it's refreshing to finally see the West take a stand against a very hostile force. How would you like to see the likes of Australia and the US take on China? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and share the video. For more content, you can subscribe to the channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Two years into COVID, how is the coronavirus evolving? Two years ago, when the world was getting gripped in the clutches of the COVID virus, no one in the world exactly knew what was knocking on their doors. The COVID-19 pandemic, which till now has claimed the lives of millions of people globally, has posed several challenges to scientists across the world. Please subscribe to the channel. Sage here for Kalkine Media. Back when the virus was fairly new, several scholars and researchers had pointed out that the virus would not be eradicated. They suggested it would rather become endemic. This pathogen was expected to join the family of all the other coronaviruses that had been existing and circulating in humans for decades. Now, two years later, this virus has spread around the world and has been replicated billions of times. And as per the World Health Organization, all viruses, including COVID, change over time. Most changes have little to no impact on the properties of the virus. However, some changes are capable of affecting the virus's properties. This can include the virus's potential to spread, the performance of vaccines, the associated disease severity, therapeutic medicines, diagnostic tools and other public health and social measures. Until now, the case of COVID is not over in nations across the world. An unprecedented number of infections are being reported worldwide. And now experts claim that in this situation, the virus has more chances than it needs to mutate and sustain its impact. Thank you for joining us on this report. If you've been 
impacted by COVID and the third wave in Australia, please comment in the videos below and like and share it. Subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon, you'll be notified of the latest videos from Kalkine. But for more articles, head to the website, it's kalkinemedia.com. I'm Sage for Kalkine Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, Continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Kalkine Media's growing platform, Kalkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Kalkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at kalkine.com.au. Hello and thanks for tuning in. I'm Holly Shields here for Metaverse, and today we'll be exploring the virtual real estate landscape with the pioneer firm Terra Zero, which develops, acquires and finances innovative Metaverse projects and businesses. And joining us today is none other than Director and CEO Dan Reedzik. Welcome to the show, Dan. It's great to have you with us. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to have you on. Now, first of all, could you walk us through what exactly TerraZero does as a metaverse land developer? What's your role in the ecosystem? Yeah, so TerraZero uh, has three main business units. We have a studio, uh, which works with brands like Bacardi and Estee Lauder and Miller Lite to create events and activations within the metaverse worlds uh, for their marketing purposes. Uh, the other part of our business is platform development. So when we started the company, one of my partners said, okay, Dan, <clears throat> you gotta buy some land. I said, well, where do we buy land? And he said, I don't know. And then I said, well, which world do we buy it in? He said, I, I don't know. And so we decided that we would create tools that bridge the real world with the metaverse. And one of those is Amadea. So Amadea.com will be launching next month. Uh, users can come uh, primarily small businesses and brands and they can come and buy, sell, or rent land, buildings, concert venues, whatever you need uh, for the metaverse. And then the third part of our business is data analytics, is understanding what people are doing in the metaverse, why they're doing it, how they're doing it, uh, and just understanding trends so that our clients, which are you know Fortune 500 brands, know where and, and what to do with their activations in the metaverse. That's incredible. It sounds like you really have a, a broad reach there when it comes to the Metaverse ecosystem. Um, that, uh, that platform you mentioned, Amadea, is launching next month. Is that correct? Yep, it's Amadea.com. Um, it'll have thousands of parcels available. Something that we have you know, learned over the course of uh, the young history of the company is uh, when we first started the company, we, we thought that brands and businesses were going to want to buy land and they were gonna to wanna to sell land. And what we've learned very quickly is, uh, first of all, they don't wanna buy land. And the reason is, is because land is represented as an NFT that resides on a blockchain, which CFOs and auditors uh, don't really like having on their balance sheet. Um, and secondly, something that's important about the metaverse worlds is that in the real world, location, location, location is, is key uh, to real estate and where you have land, where you buy it, where you rent it. In the metaverse, everything is, uh, we can teleport. So when we do an activation for Bacardi, we just did this last week, 
uh, and one of their brands, which is Angel's Envy, we recreated a distillery inside the metaverse and avatars could go in and, and learn how to make their bourbon, order products from the metaverse to their real, uh, to their real house. Um, and in general, what we find is uh, that the brands will simply put the coordinates in whatever marketing they're doing, whatever a t a Twitter they're doing or, or, or anything else to drive traffic. So users can simply click on that and be tra transported right into the scene. Uh, so location is not as important as in the real world. Well, my background, I was previously the CEO of DMG Blockchain, which was one of North America's largest uh, Bitcoin mining companies and blockchain analytics companies. Um, and what, you know, so I've, I've seen the, the bear markets, I've seen the crypto winters twice in my career. This will be the third time. Um, what we find is, is every few years, because it's such a new technology, you kind of need to have it blow up and get rid of the, um, the second rate uh, coins or lands or whatever it is in order to let uh, consumers you know, figure out which are the ones that survive. And so what we found when we first started the company, we felt that people were buying and selling land and they were sitting on it uh, as an asset, something that would appreciate over time. The problem with that is that um, if you go into a metaverse world and one out of every 10 parcels of land has something on it, then the, the, the consumers are not going to go to that world and therefore the price is going to obviously reduce. Um, what we've seen and what we focus on is we focus on decentralized worlds. So there's, there's, there's going to be hundreds of different metaverse worlds out there like Decentraland and Sandbox. And they will all cater to different things. Some will be for gamers, some will be more for social media, some will be for shopping, some will be like Manhattan where it's your office and you conduct business. Um, so they'll all have different purposes. What is important is, is, is decentralization. So right now what you have is you have decentralized metaverse worlds and centralized. Decentralized means there's no CEO, there's no company that makes decisions. It's essentially run as a democracy. Um, and so as a company, we focus on decentralized worlds. And the other reason is similar to something like Bitcoin, the way that it's built is that the land parcels are finite. In Decentraland, for example, only 90,000 parcels of land can ever be available. Um, when Facebook launches Horizons, it's obviously a centralized metaverse world, and therefore the number of parcels of land could double, triple, quadruple overnight. That's interesting there, and um, it sounds like the value, perhaps, of virtual land once purchased is potentially volatile. Is that something that, that you find? Yeah, that's one of the reasons Amadea makes so much sense. So you, you have, on one hand, you have someone that owns land. On the other hand, you have brands and businesses that want to build an event, a store, whatever they want inside the metaverse. The problem is, is that since the deed of the land is essentially an NFT, uh, the issue is, is that the owner of the land doesn't want to give that NFT to the brand or the company uh, for the duration of whatever they're doing on, on the land. And the, and the brand doesn't want to trust the owner with the NFT because they could essentially deface the activation or the, uh, or the store or the billboard or whatever they're doing. So Amadea links renters with owners, almost like an Airbnb, but for the metaverse world, and we hold the NFT for the duration of the rental period so that both parties uh, are, are satisfied. And this is done using smart contracts. That's, I think, a really important development there because I can imagine that uh, perhaps rental relationships can be quite complex when it comes to decentralized land and spaces. There's no customer service in the metaverse. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the entire thing is built. You know, when I was at DMG, I understood and liked Bitcoin but I really liked blockchain technology that made it work and created a trustless environment on which to transact between multiple parties without a third party. And you know, while I was at DMG, we tried creating different platforms to blockchainize things like supply chain management of controlled products. And they didn't really work very well as did very few blockchain applications after crypto. When I was exposed to the metaverse and I realized that every concert venue, every building, every wearable, every avatar, every piece of land was simply an NFT that resided on a blockchain, I realized that this was the next use case of blockchain technology. 
so yes, you do have uh, you do have some 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 issues when it comes to uh, renting land and making sure that your brand IP is protected, which is exactly why we build a smart contract that negates the need for trust between two parties. That's, uh, I think, really important, especially that you take care of that bridging issue, because that is great to see overall. Now, Dan, I'd love to know, would you advise prospective buyers to invest in virtual real estate now at the moment, or perhaps wait until the metaverse is more developed? No, this is the internet in 1993. Um, it really is the very early stages. So as I said before, there'll be hundreds of metaverse worlds. In fact, we speak with tens of the ones that are being developed right now, and I'll, I'll explain why, uh, but there will be thousands of projects that don't end up being worth anything because remember, in order to create a new destination or a metaverse world, you have to have two things. You have to have stuff to do and for people to, and people to come and visit and interact with your world. If you, if you don't have the people, you're not going to get the brands that are going to build the cool activations like we talked about for, that we've done with Miller for Super Bowl or with Bacardi or some of the, the, the great stuff we do with Estee Lauder. Um, so, so you're going to be in this situation where many, many worlds will fail. And so hedging, hedging a bet on a piece of land in a virtual metaverse world that has not matured is probably not a very wise idea. Um, now, something that we're doing to increase the value of land around our particular activations is we're building essentially destination cities. Um, and so these cities, the whole point is obviously to bring people there and give them things to do and then sprinkle around some of our brand activations, some of the retail stores. I mean, something that's really interesting about the metaverse is in the 1980s, Nike had one way to sell us a pair of shoes. It was a, it was a store on a street. In the 1990s, Nike had a new way to interact with us and sell us a pair of shoes. It was e-commerce. The metaverse represents a third way for Nike to communicate with and interact with its customers and sell them a good or service. I truly believe that any company right now that has uh, an e-commerce presence will have a v-commerce presence uh, in the future. We just finished a campaign with Jimmy John's. Jimmy John's is a very large sandwich company uh, in the United States. And essentially what it was, was we, we built a replica Jimmy John's restaurant. People were invited to go in. They were able to interact with and build their own sandwich, learn about the ingredients, all those kinds of things. And right now it was a submit your sandwich and then there's gonna be a vote to choose the meta sandwich. But we do have the technology in place right now where the user could pay for that sandwich inside the metaverse and have it appear uh, at their real house. And that would be one of the first iterations of what we call v-commerce. And that's the reason that people are so excited about the metaverse. It is just the next version of the internet. Thanks for your time as well, viewers. If you've just joined us, that was the director and CEO of Terra Zero. They're doing some incredible stuff in this space, so do keep an eye out. I'm Holly Shields for Metaverse. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, Continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Hey there, I'm James for Kalkine Media, and in this video, I'll take you through insider trading and some of the most scandalous instances of the crime. Just before I do, though, you can subscribe to the channel for more content and press the bell icon. Insider trading happens when investors get a hold of information or data of a publicly listed company that is yet to be made public to sell and purchase the securities. However, accusing someone without any substantial proof can be extremely murky. 
Sometimes, investors with good analyzing skills and on-the-ground research can also mint money. But if the investor gets a hot tip from someone inside of a company, it can be a clear case of insider trading and that person can end up in jail. Media personality Martha Stewart was involved in an insider trading incident in 2001, for example. Stewart sold 4,000 shares of biopharmaceutical company I'm Clone Systems using a piece of information from a broker. The United States Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA, denied the company's cancer drug review and the share price fell once the news was released. Now, while many investors lost heavily, the family and friends of the CEO of the company were completely unscathed. The government agency, US Securities and Exchange Commission, or the SEC, later found that the numerous executives had sold their stock based on the instructions of a share broker. Stewart also got her hands on the information, and as a result, she sold a vast number of shares and was later caught and convicted of insider trading. Of course, such trading is illegal and is closely monitored by regulators in different countries. Another recent infamous case of insider trading comes from right here in Australia. At the age of 24, Lucas Camay became one of the most successful traders in the country. He turned 1.5 million Aussie dollars into 2.54 million dollars within 25 minutes by simply trading from a toilet cubicle. Camay had a great job at the National Australia Bank in Melbourne with a salary of approximately $200,000 per year. However, his entire life came crashing down in a $7 million insider trading case, emerging as one of the biggest ever insider trading scandals in recent times. Camay was sharing inside information with his university friend Christopher Hill from his NAB office, an action that ultimately landed both of them in jail. An insider of the company trading in publicly available information is a legal side of insider trading. In 2020, Kodak's share price surged drastically and left the market in a sense of amazement. However, that hike was short-lived. The media reported that Kodak's top employees were offered stock options the day before the loan announcement. Following this, the company announced that the loan application to fund Kodak Pharmaceuticals was currently on hold, but the company denied any wrongdoing. The case is still wide open and the financial world is still awaiting the results. Sometimes the information is not leaked intentionally but reaches a specific group who could benefit from the news. For example, another case involving a columnist for the Wall Street Journal. R. Foster Winans wrote a weekly article called Heard on the Street. As an outsider but still a media person, he was in contact with the traders and most of the financial world. Off the back of that, he teamed up with a broker and would write about stocks in his column whose prices would then go up or down. Knowing the information about the stocks in advance, the broker he was connected to traded before America read and talked about those particular issues. The broker then shared the profit with Winans for his intelligence, but later they were caught by the US Securities and Exchange Commission. Even though the column was the personal opinions of Winans, the material was legally deemed the property of the Wall Street Journal, and for that matter was deemed to be insider trading. Many have tried to profit from advanced knowledge of securities, but it's an extremely dangerous game with severe risk if caught. So rather than organize a funnel of illicit information, you'd be better off subscribing to Calkine and pressing that bell icon so that we can keep you informed of all the relevant content. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine.
Artificial intelligence, once a trope of science fiction, is now a bona fide trillion dollar industry and is expected to grow to 14 trillion US dollars by the year 2030. Companies now use AI to execute any number of complex tasks and some of the top AI companies are amongst the fastest growing businesses listed on the Nasdaq. Take Nvidia for example, which is currently the most valuable semiconductor business in the US. The current demand for AI services has boosted NVIDIA's business significantly, with the company reporting a 46% increase in total revenue this past quarter compared to 2021. The future of NVIDIA looks bright as well, with developers currently working on the world's fastest AI supercomputer, dubbed EOS. Artificial intelligence is also in big demand in the defense agencies around the world. Palantir Technologies, for one, a company that specializes in security and defense AI tech, was recently awarded a contract by the U.S. Department of Defense to integrate the Army database of personal and data security. Then there are companies that use AI in nearly every facet of their business. Alphabet, for example, uses AI to drive targeted ad business in Google and YouTube. It also develops AI to use in creating driverless cars. Right now, every major tech player has a division dedicated to machine learning, and while this is exciting technology, it's still far from realizing its full potential. And it is clear that it is well on the way, though. Now that you're up to speed, hit that bell icon to stay up to date and boost your financial IQ. I'm Holly Shields for Kalkai Media. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calkine TV. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Calkine Media's growing platform, Calkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Calkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at calkine.com.au. As the UK grapples with the cost of living crisis, more people attempted to engage in illegal activities like insurance fraud, according to the Insurance Fraud Bureau. Between July 2021 and June 2022, as many as 5,058 new people were added to the IFB's register, signalling a rise of 17% in just a year. The IFB also pointed out that there are more chances of people who are unemployed or in the lower income group committing insurance fraud than any other segment. The IFR is accessed by 82% of the country's general insurance market. And whenever a new claim pops up to be fraudulent, the information is stored on the register. Insurers can either deny services to such individuals or businesses or charge them higher due to increased risk. So in light of this, let's explore some insurance stocks listed on the LSE and see how they've been faring. The first one is Aviva. The leading British financial service firm offers a vast range of insurance products. Aviva's 12-month return currently stands at around negative 21% and its EPS sits at 0.50. The company holds a market cap of 11.1 billion pounds. Next is Prudential. Prudential is a British financial service company listed on the benchmark FTSE 100 index with operations in multiple countries. Over the past 12 months, PRU's share value has plunged by around 27%, while its year-to-date return meanwhile has slipped around negative 22% as well. The stock has a negative EPS of 0.78. Prudential holds a market cap of around 27.1 billion pounds. Next is Admiral Group. Another FTSE 100 listed financial service player is Admiral Group, which offers several insurance products. 
With market cap of £5.2 billion, the stock has nosedived by about 47% over the past year. And that concludes our list. Now that you're up to speed, hit that bell icon to boost your financial IQ. I'm Holly Shields for Kalkine Media. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV. Welcome to CalKine, I'm Rose Jacobs, thanks for joining me today. Cryptocurrencies can confuse many thanks to assets having a contrasting price trajectory at any given time. So-called bellwether assets, Bitcoin and Ether are both in the red right now, but a few others like Ethereum Classic are gaining. Even though this can also be the case in traditional assets like listed shares, what can confuse cryptos is the abrupt spike in the value of an asset. This time it's Neoteric or NTRC crypto, which only recently made its debut on CoinMarketCap. So what is Neoteric crypto and is it safe? Let's explore it more now in detail. Neoteric is one of the newest cryptos on the block. CoinMarketCap, which tracks over 20,000 cryptos a day, started tracking Neoteric in mid-July. The project claims it is a soft fork of a DeFi protocol, RFI, and Liquid. The Neoteric protocol is built using the Binance Smart Chain. It's claimed and the NTRC token was launched on PancakeSwap. So what it promises is more or less similar to other DeFi protocols, yield farming and liquidity. NTRC is to be paid as a fee for any transaction and this fee, Neoteric claims, is distributed among all the holders. As of now though, the dashboard is not operational and the website has very limited information. So we ask, is Neoteric safe? Well, it's with new availability restricted to PancakeSwap. It has the long road ahead with the project having to prove its yield farming capabilities in the already overcrowded DeFi space. CoinMarketCap started tracking Neoteric crypto this month and according to a tweet by the Neoteric, the market cap reached US $800,000 in just one day. No long-term price data is available at this stage. Major hold and earn platforms including Celsius and Voyager have recently lost their sheen, which means extreme due diligence is required in Neoteric's case. Separately, Bitcoin, the oldest and biggest crypto asset, is having a rough ride this year, with the price down more than 50% since January. Today, the NTRC token is trading at nearly US $0.02. And what is stunning is the 24-hour price jump, which is almost 2,000%. CoinMarketCap reflects Neoteric Crypto's self-reported market cap as over US $13 million. So the bottom line is this crypto is a new asset in the market without a very high trading volume below US $1 million. However, the price of this token has jumped steeply. Neoteric claims to provide yield farming and related services, but for enthusiasts, due diligence must be preferred step first. Remember that cryptocurrencies are associated with a high degree of risk, so it goes without saying that you should do your homework before investing. That's the latest with this report. Thanks for joining me. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. 
Calkine Media's growing platform, Calkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Calkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at calkine.com.au. Six months of Russia-Ukraine war. Here are the key dates. Till now. Russia and Ukraine's heated war hasn't calmed since it began. Innumerable twists and turns of events and various shocking developments later, both of the nations are standing at the same distance they once were when the war began. One of the deadliest wars of Europe, which began with Russia's aggression against Ukraine for joining NATO and Russia's nearing Ukraine's border in January, transformed into a full-blown war in February. And almost half a year later, the entire world has borne the consequences of it. Please subscribe to the channel, Sage here for Kalkai Media. When in February 2022, Ukraine's European allies turned against Russia and imposed sanctions against the country, and two days later, Russia began the invasion of Ukraine. Now, a couple of days later, by the end of February, even when both the nations tried to attempt ceasefire talks, nothing could be achieved. With the arrival of March, heartbreaking reportage from the war-torn country of Ukraine came out. The number of refugees flowing out of Ukraine increased. But on March the 21st, despite all the heart-wrenching hardships, Ukraine refused Russia's demand to give up. And meanwhile, various Russian oligarchs and diplomats have to bear the consequences of sanctions imposed against them by various European countries. The country even witnessed the departure of various prominent brands from its land. Be it Netflix, Starbucks or even L'Oreal, Russia had to bid goodbye to a few of the world's favourite brands. With the arrival of April, the Russian troops started marching towards Kiev and surrounding cities like Butka, where heartbreaking scenes of atrocities were unveiled. And as the war waged, speculations emerged that various other European nations like Sweden and Finland exhibited the will to join NATO. Seeing the power balance shift, Russia started testing new missiles which were capable of causing widespread destruction. By the end of the month, Putin even threatened European nations about scaling up nuclear efforts. With no signs of peace in May as well, the war kept on waging. And in the light of events, Sweden and Finland both applied to join NATO. And the royal family of Britain opened their house to Ukrainian refugees, just like thousands of other Brits. And as the war reached its 100th day on June 3rd, Russian forces seized a fifth of Ukraine since the invasion began. Russian forces make their way to Ukraine's easternmost city of Severodonetsk and cause massive damage. In the light of these developments, Russia has cut gas deliveries to Europe through Nord Stream 1 gas pipeline to 40% of capacity, and Russia started to revert the sanction in form of restrictive control of gas supply to the rest of Europe. 19th week in the war, as the month of July begins, and Russia continues to invade Ukraine's residential areas like Sehivka and Lyschensk city, where Russia later claimed victory as well. So later in the month, Ukraine cut ties with North Korea over the recognition of separatist regions. And later in the month, Russia opened the Nord Stream 1 gas pipeline. But as both the nations pass 150 days of the war, now the situation still looks quite grim. The future and ties of both the European nations seem to be in an unpredictable sphere. And will the war end any time soon? is the question on the minds of millions of people who are witnessing and being affected by this ghastly war. If you like this information, please give it a like, share and comment on the video below. Subscribe to the channel. Have you had a Ukrainian refugee in your house here in Australia? Let us know how it's gone for you. 
please press the bell icon. You'll be notified of the most recent videos from Kalkine. But for more updates, please head to the website. It's kalkinemedia.com. My name's Sage for Kalkine Media. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Kalkine Media's growing platform, Kalkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Kalkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at kalkine.com.au. Does Rally and Radical, RAD Crypto, have any rationale? Is it a pump? Does every rally or drop in the price of a crypto asset owe itself to a valid reason? Bitcoin's dropping this year, and although there has been a few major blows, like Terra USD's fall, no event justifies Bitcoin losing more than half its value so far. At the same time, the startling rise of Bitcoin and altcoins like Axie Infinity and Solana in 2022 seems to have been triggered without any solid reason. Mostly, the crypto market is said to be driven by sentiments and the same sentiments seem to have ushered in a stunning rally in an altcoin named Radical RAD. What exactly does Radical do in the blockchain cryptocurrency space? And what is the logic behind its current surge? Let's explore. What exactly does Radical do? The phrase that Radical uses is peer-to-peer -peer stack for building software. Its projects itself as a participant in Web 3.0. The so-called decentralized version of the internet with support for collaboration on code development. Radical boasts no centralized control of any entity and zero censorship. It claims to provide code sharing services without the interference of any third party. By one measure, it is something built on Git, with the crypto asset at the heart of all arrangements. Smart contracts and code sharing with the help of Ethereum have been introduced by Radical's on-chain services. It is inviting developers to build decentralized platforms that can be owned by the builder. And users can sponsor projects and communities can be funded by floating digital assets like non-fungible tokens or NFTs. Radical Crypto RAD serves as the native governance token of the Radical ecosystem. And this means the token makes the ecosystem decentralized and owned by community members. As of writing, the market cap of the token is nearly 120 million US dollars, with a surge of almost 100% over the past few hours. The price per token has soared to nearly $3.80 US, as against under 2 US dollars only just a few hours before writing this report. The 24 hour trading volume of the RAD token is up more than 350% as of writing. So, what's fueling the surge? There is nothing concrete that can justify the appreciation of the RAD token in a matter of a few hours. There has been no recent listings. Binance listed the RAD token in October last year and this listing did appreciate the token's price. The only other major event is a recent report about the infusion of capital by VC firm NFX in multiple crypto projects including Radical. For now, the rally in the Radical token does not seem to have been triggered by a major event. And it comes at a time when the total market cap of the cryptoverse has again dropped under 1 trillion US dollars. Bottom line. The surge in the code collaboration blockchain project is being termed by some as a pump. It is notable that the RAD Rad Crypto started this year at 10 US dollars and it has since remained highly volatile. Due diligence by crypto enthusiasts amid this sudden surge is highly advised. Now if you like this information please give it a like, share it and comment on the video below. Subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. You'll be notified every time there's a new video from Kalkine. But for more articles head to the website kalkinemedia.com. My name's Sage for Kalkine Media.
crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. biggest stock market crashes of all times. The idea of a stock market crash is nothing short of a nightmare for an investor. But there have been various such events in the past where the worst nightmares of investors came true. Let's have a look at some of the biggest stock market crashes of all times. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm Sage for Calkine Media. The first event on the list is the Wall Street crash of 1929. The Great Depression arrived with the Wall Street crash of 1929. The thriving times of the 20s were put to an end in 1929 when the stock market contracted exceedingly. The practice of overproduction in those times made consumers rely too much on debt and trust financial instruments beyond their capacities. In 1932, the market plummeted to its ultimate bottom at a staggering 89% below peak. It took almost 25 years for the market to fully regain its pre-cash value. Next on the list is the Japanese asset bubble burst of 1992. The 1980s were crucial times for Japan's real estate and stock markets. Both the institutions had flown to unprecedented heights in the 1980s. In 1992, however, the bubble of inflated real estate and stock prices burst and the Nikkei index fell by nearly half following that. With this stock market crash, the slow-moving Japanese recession began to surface. Moving on, how can one forget the dot-com bubble crash? The transition from the 20th century to the 21st century came with a stock market crash. And when the 2000s arrived, the overvaluation of tech companies in the late 1990s created a bubble about their financial stability and performance. And when the valuations of a company's financial stability didn't match their reality, the bubble burst with a crash. Hence, it's known by the name of the dot-com bubble crash. And last on the list is the most fresh, the COVID-19 crash. The arrival of an unprecedented pandemic caused massive losses to the markets worldwide. And due to the dreadful virus, governments across the world had to shut down entire economies to slow the spread. This resulted in an economic shock that caused massive losses to investors. The Dow Jones Industrial Average lost nearly 13% and the S&P 500 dropped 12% at this point of time. Now, if you like this information, please let us know by giving it a like and sharing or commenting on the video below. Subscribe to the channel and press that bell icon. You'll be notified every time there's a new video from Calkine. But for more updates, we send new articles to the website daily. Please have a look, calkinemedia.com. Sage here for Calkine Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Kalkine Media's growing platform, Kalkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. 
Showcase your brand on Kalkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at kalkine.com.au. Despite the downturn of the crypto market and digital assets more broadly, the space continues to be flooded with new NFT collections. Two of these NFT projects are Crazy Monkey and Gutter Cat Gang. And in this video, I'll take a look at both of them. But just keep in mind that crypto is a volatile space, especially at the moment. And as a result, it's important that you do your own research. Let's begin by taking a look at Crazy Monkey's NFTs. Now, there are two separate sets of NFTs. Crazy Monkeys and Crazy Monkey. The former is listed on the Moonly Marketplace and is a collection of 3,333 digital assets. This set is said to have algorithmically generated assets that use the Solana blockchain network. The mint date of this collection was the 24th of January 2022. As for the other set, Crazy Monkey, it's available on the Foundation NFT Marketplace. This set belongs to Li Tan Tung who is a young visual artist hailing from Vietnam. The collection houses five NFTs and their price is mentioned in the ETH denomination of Foundation. Both of the above two with similar sounding names don't command particularly expensive prices. Now the NFTs might be trending but they are yet to invite those high bids like that of Board Ape Yacht Club and other significant NFT projects. All right, let's now turn our attention to the Gutter Cat Gang NFTs. Gutter Cat Gang is projecting itself as a ticket to an underground Web 3.0 social club. Gutter Cat Gang is being called the premium membership to this club. This is in contrast to other assets with dogs and rats in their names, which represent the base level membership of the gang itself. The premise here is that in the future, of course a hypothetical future, humans inhabit multiple planets and the Earth has been taken over by cats. Other NFTs like Gutter Rats are vying for supremacy over Gutter Cats. The project also has merchandise which includes funky shorts and t-shirts. A total of 3,000 NFT assets of Gutter Cat Gang are currently available on OpenSea and the website shows that there are currently 1,800 owners of these NFTs. Now the floor price for the Gutter Cat Gang collection is mentioned as 6.2 ETH or Ether tokens, which is lower than that of assets such as CryptoPunks and Board Ape Yacht Club, but it's still rather pricey. With Ether's price as of July 28, the cheapest Gutter Cat Gang piece would still cost more than 10,000 US dollars. However, this is still of course worlds away from the selling price of assets created by the likes of Beeple. So, what's your take on these two different NFT collections? Are you planning to invest in them? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and share the video. For more content, you can subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. I'm James, reporting for Calkine. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Will the breakout in the trend line change the price trend for Rio Tinto Limited? Rio Tinto Limited on the ASX's RIO is an Australia based mining and metals company operating in many countries across the world. RIO has witnessed a sharp correction of 23.85% from the high of 120 Australian dollars 7 cents marked on June the 8th, 2022. 
to a low of 91 Australian dollars 91 cents. This was registered on the 15th of July 2022. Rio's prices closed up by 1.87% on Tuesday's trade and outperformed some of its peers such as Illumina Limited on the ASX's AWC which increased by 0.34% and Oz Minerals Limited on the ASX's OZL which increased by 1.11%. Please subscribe to the channel, Sage here for Calcone Media. Let's now analyse RIO technically for short term. On the weekly chart, it has been observed that the prices had taken support from the rising trend line. However, looking at the weekly time frame, Rio's prices have breached its falling trend line resistance, which could push the move even higher. The prices of Rio have been reversing from the oversold levels, which is shown by the RSI 14 day period. When Rio's stock was trading near the lower range with a reading of 35.25, the prices of the stock trading above the breakout zone are accompanied by a rise in volume. Rio Tinto has invested US $188 million or Canadian $240 million with an aim to increase the production capacity of low carbon, high quality aluminum billets at the Alma smelter in Lac Saint-Jean, Quebec by 202,000 metric tonnes. Now on the positive side, if the prices sustain around the current levels, then the next resistance level may be close to 112 Australian dollars, which may act as the resistance in the near term. On the lower side, however, important support levels are at 87 Australian dollars, followed by even lower at 80 Australian dollars. Technical indicator analysis. On the weekly chart, the momentum oscillator RSI 14 day period is recovering from the lower levels and is currently showing a reading of approximately 42.20. However, the prices are still trading below the trend following indicator of the 21 day period and 50 day period SMA, simple moving average, which may act as resistance levels for the stock. After analysing the current price action coupled with the technical indicator, Rio Tinto Limited appears to be recovering from the major rising trend line. A sustainable upside move from the current level may test its initial resistance and a downside move below the support levels might bring some correction for the stock. Thanks for joining us on that report. Now if you do like this information, please give it a like, share and comment on the video below. Subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon, you'll be notified of the most recent videos from Calkine. But for more articles, head to the website calkinemedia.com. I'm Sage for Calkine Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Kalkine Media's growing platform, Kalkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Kalkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at calkine.com.au. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Calkine Media's growing platform, Calkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Calkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at
www.ghostbusiness.com.au. Why is LimeWire making a splash in the NFT space? Remember that cryptocurrencies are associated with a high degree of risk, so it goes without saying that you should do your homework before investing. LimeWire is the name that all Y2K teens would profoundly remember. The platform originally a peer-to-peer -peer file sharing service provider has now undergone a complete revamp. It's made its comeback. And what comes with this new version? Well, let's find out. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm Sage for Calkine Media. The revamped version of LimeWire emphasizes music NFTs. This might resemble the company's previous stint when it enabled free peer-to-peer -peer music sharing. The two key collections right now on LimeWire are the platform's original series and a yet-to-be-launched digital asset linked to musician Travis Barker. It tested its original NFTs ahead of going live. And now the official website confirms that many of the assets from this collection have been sold to collectors. LimeWire Originals has 10,000 assets, resembling some other popular NFT projects like that of CryptoPunk and Bored Ape Yacht Club. Other music NFTs available on LimeWire include Sylvia Boy and Samuel Herb. Some others, including singer Brandy, are yet to be made available for sale. One of the primary reasons behind the recent spike in LimeWire's popularity could be its nostalgic branding technique. A new promotion video shared by the company has stirred the netizens. It starts with two kids using LimeWire's file sharing services to download music on a desktop. The grown-up versions then use the LimeWire NFT platform to get hold of music NFTs. Even though LimeWire is now making waves in the NFT circles, the space is led by names like Beeple, Pack, and CryptoPunks. Beeple is an artist who collaborated with singer Madonna on her recent NFT auction project. Beeple and Pack remain the highest priced NFT artists. The asset of CryptoPunks and its close competitor, Bored Ape Yacht Clubs, have also invited lucrative bids, with some assets having fetched millions of dollars. Thanks for watching this report. Now, if you do like the information, let us know by giving it a like, sharing, and commenting below. Please subscribe to the channel. If you press the bell icon, you'll be notified every time Calkine releases a new video. But for more articles, head to the website calkinemedia.com. Sage here reporting for Calkine Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Hello and welcome back to Kalkine TV. This is another edition of Executive Corner Expert Talks. And today we'll be exploring the first hotels DAO on the blockchain, D Hotels. The community-driven hotel marketplace allows users to own and manage a part of a hotel. And joining us to share their insights is co-founder and CEO Diamante Jankowski. Welcome to the show. It's great to have you with us. Good morning. Thanks so much for inviting us. It's so it's a pleasure, pleasure to, have to be you here. On. It's great to be here and pleasure to have you on. Now to kick things off, could you walk us through how exactly your revolutionary platform works? Absolutely. So, um, firstly, I would like to start with our mission. Why we, did, why we created the platform and what was our initial idea. So, uh, since I was coming from the hospitality sector before and uh, one of my CEO and co-founders, Gabriela, she was from um, investment banking and blockchain. 
So we thought that that's a very great idea to combine those things into one and to let people and to educate people to invest. So we wanted to create a very easy platform which stands on the real physical assets, but it's combined as well with the crypto and the blockchain. So we decided to tokenize the hotels and to let people, ordinary people like mom or your mom to invest by easily clicking two, two buttons on her phone. So um, also, um, what is the hotels all about shortly? So we are tokenizing hotels and basically um, all the hospitality real estate. We are letting others to tokenize their real estate as well. And uh, that's going to be very easy way for many, many people to invest to, you know, looking at the, today's economic situation. Um, we believe that it's mandatory to educate and more and more people to show how it is, how all the risks should be, you know, diversified and what are the profits and uh, basically we, we are willing, you know, I think that my colleague uh, Gabriela Sio will uh, join us here today as well. So she will explain a little bit more in details how the model could work. But at the moment, as I said, that the hotels is a DAO. So that means that people would not only own the hotel, but they will have the decision making power, meaning that it's going to be decentralized management. People will have ability to, for example, issue the notes that, okay, we don't like the branding of the hotel. Let's change it. Everybody's going to vote and um, then we'll uh, have to implement the same. So uh, the thing is that the DAO principle is not that uh, our team or anyone on top going to decide which hotel to buy or, for example, which, how to manage it. It's going to be all left to the, our token holders, meaning uh, our investors, right? So, you know, many people may ask, so why I cannot buy Kempinski shares? Why can't I buy, buy Marriott shares? So the thing is that, of course, you can. You'll have um, some stocks, but you won't be able to say anything. You won't be able to get a chance to be involved into the process, right? Um, for Bifas, you have the ownership of the real hotel, meaning that the property, the real property belongs to you. And of course, you have all decision-making powers, meaning on uh, strategic questions, uh, brandings, and uh, management. That's incredible. I mean, it sounds like you've had a great journey so far and really fascinating venture there. So is that the benefit, would you say, of having a decentralized hospitality sector? Well, um, in our team, we do have the general manager of Kempinski uh, and other, actually, uh, other um, hospitality experts. So we believe that these days, um, the decision-making process is very slow and the implementation is even more slower. So um, that's the insights what we received you know, from uh, the investors, from the experts. And we believe that this concept, this DAO concept would make things way easier, way faster, and you'll get the, how, to, how can I express myself? Uh, you'll have the insights from the customers uh, because people who will own the token holders, I'm pretty sure that everyone would like to visit uh, their own hotel at least for a week uh, to stay there and to have a good time. So, you know, once you're staying at your own hotel, you're having a different view and you're looking for the different eyes, right? So that's the thing that people will be able to issue the token, not, not a token, issue the note, and other investors will vote and all the decisions will be made way, way, way faster. Absolutely. That is an amazing concept. It'd be great to be able to do that and have that governor, Diamante. It's been really great to hear insights. Pleasure to have you on the show. If you've just joined us, that was the co-founder and CEO of the game-changing Hotels DAO, D Hotels. And if you missed any part of that chat, you can catch the full interview here on our YouTube channel at Calkine Media. Make sure to stay tuned. I'm Holly Shields reporting for Calkine TV. Thank you for watching Calkine TV. We've got some trendy news to share with you. My name's Sage. In the Australian real estate market, what to expect?
Well, the next five months will be crucial for homeowners as steep declines are expected in the Australian market. Also reflected in the United States housing market after the pandemic boom, which saw house prices soar close to 40% higher. The higher interest rates are about to start causing the housing prices in many markets to fall. House prices in Australia are expected de to decrease by close to 5%. In the next five months and by the end of 2023, it's only expected to decline further. With existing data from PropTrack, Property Market Outlook, July 2022, supporting prices to fall by about 15%, by the end of 2023, it was reported by news.com.au. The report released Wednesday evening show that units will also see their values decline in the range of 2 and 5% across the nation in 2022. And if you're looking to purchase regionally, Northern Territory, Victoria and New South Wales all saw the sharpest declines with prices falling 24.9%, 17.3% and 17% respectively in each of those regional states. The 2023 outlook is set to deepen the decline in capital cities to close to 10%. To put that in today's terms, this could see current prices fall 15% from existing levels. Sydney and Melbourne property owners will see their valuations decrease by the end of 2023, with the impact of rising interest rates affecting the investor sentiment, increasing the fear, uncertainty and doubt in buyers even in the next five months. Brisbane house prices are expected to only decline minimally by the end of 2022, however, and joining next year's decline will be Canberra, Hobart, Darwin, as well as Brisbane, all expected to decline close to 10%. Levels that Sydney and Melbourne could see by the end of this year. The markets have been presenting some irrational readings during this time of supply chain delays, energy market restructures, and pandemic quantitative easing, but hopefully this report will offer property investors some indication as to how to strategize their portfolios. Thanks for joining us on this trending news. Please keep watching for more live expert talks and market insights. Sage signing off. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Calkine Media's growing platform, Calkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Calkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at calkine.com.au. Popular online game Minecraft created NFT Worlds in February this year, and with NFT Worlds, it now brings Minecraft into the Web3 era, combining the popular online game with the metaverse. The project is split into a thousand unique NFT worlds, where NFT holders can create play-to-earn metaverse experiences. Minecraft is a popular online 3D computer game where players can build structures across a variety of different environments and terrains. Set in different virtual worlds, the game involves gathering resources, building structures and then also combat. Minecraft was first released in 2011 and has since become the best-selling video game of all time and it can be played across a variety of platforms, ranging from smartphone to PC. As a combination of Minecraft and NFTs, NFT Worlds uses the Minecraft engine, which allows players to use tools such as World Edit and MC Edit to build virtual worlds. NFT Worlds is currently one of the more in-demand NFT projects with more than 100 million users worldwide. Meanwhile, NFT Worlds native token, WILD or World, has performed quite well of late, with a rise of 7.26% in the past five days compared to the wider crypto market, which is down by 0.38% in the same period. 
The Investors Observer, which offers a sentiment score on a wide variety of cryptocurrencies, has offered a very bullish rating for NFT worlds over the past five days, based on its volume and price movement. But what about you? Are you bullish on NFT worlds? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and share the video. For more content, you can subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. What is a recession and what are the types of recession? A recession is a macroeconomic phenomenon characterized by a dip in economic activity, a fall in aggregate demand and soaring unemployment levels for an extended period of time. While some experts define the onset of recession as a negative economic growth rate for two consecutive quarters as a technical recession, the COVID-19 pandemic rang bells of a technical recession across the globe in 2020. During a recession, the economy faces sluggish retail sales, crushed consumer confidence and a dip in business sentiments, job losses, reduced manufacturing output and sales, with even a decline in the nation's overall gross domestic product or GDP. Economic monitoring agencies such as the National Bureau's Business Cycle Dating Committee maintains a chronology of United States business cycles in the forms of peaks and troughs. And while the peak is defined as the month in which several macroeconomic indicators reach their highest level, a trough is identified as the month in which the economic activity reaches a low point and begins to rise again for a sustained period. The period between a peak and a trough is a contraction or a recession and the period between the trough and the peak is an expansion. So here are some of the leading indicators of looming threats of economic recession. Negative economic growth rate, yield curve inversion, sharp stock market declines, dip in unemployment, asset bubbles, sudden economic shock, excessive debt and high inflation levels. Because the US is the world's largest economy and has robust financial and trade linkages with several other economies, most of these internationally synchronized recession outbreaks also coincide with US recessions. While there's no specific classification system to define recession shapes, economists tend to refer to four key shapes of recession and the resultant economic recovery. V-shaped recession. Recessions that start with a sharp fall in economic growth but then discover a bottom and rebound strongly are categorized under V-shaped recessions. U-shaped recession. These are recessions that commence with a relatively slower fall in economic growth but then stay at the bottom for multiple quarters before turning around and reviving. These are classified under a U-shaped recession. A W-shaped recession. Recessions that initially start with a V-shaped recession but then turn back down again after exhibiting false signs of recovery, demonstrating a down-up, down-dip shape akin to W are deemed W-shaped recessions. L-shaped recession. Recessions in which economic growth quickly falls and fails to stand back up are termed as L-shaped recessions. Though V-shaped recessions are a best case scenario for an economy, L-shaped recessions that offer no hope of economic revitalization are believed to be the worst case scenario. Thanks for joining us on the report. Now, if you do like this information, let us know by giving a like, sharing and commenting on the video below and subscribe to the channel. Do press the bell icon. You'll be notified of the most recent videos from Kalkine. But for more articles, head to the website, kalkinemedia.com. My name's Sage for Kalkine Media.
Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Welcome to Expert Talks by Calcane TV. I'm Sage. Today's guest is Jordan Tentori, CEO of Zemi Limited. For some background, Zemi Limited is an innovative Australian Internet of Things company that targets to enhance the connectivity of electrical devices from homes through to high rises. So to find out more about this expanding and pulsing industry, we have invited the CEO himself, Jordan Tentori, to share insights with us today. Welcome to the show, Jordan. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Glad to have you join us, Jordan. So, Internet of Things is your biz, and hasn't it been buzzing in recent times? Indeed, it has been buzzing. <laughs> um, it's actually quite incredible. When you think it was only a few generations ago we saw electricity adopted in the home, from lighting to hot water and appliances like the radio and the TV, and then in less than a lifetime we've seen computers and the Internet and smartphones changing how we communicate, take photos and do business, and even stream entertainment. And now yes. the IoT, or the Internet of Things, is a pretty simple concept where anything that can offer economy or sustainability or convenience or entertainment in turn becomes a device connection opportunity. So it's a very exciting time, and you've seen Google and Apple and Amazon changing this with the smartphone now, and voice control which we've learnt from a young age and I think that anyone can enjoy technology from young to old and it's really seen the IoT grow at an incredible pace. To answer your question, there's more connected devices on the planet today than people with analysts expecting the device count to triple by 2030. Wow, and 2030 is really not so far away when we come to think of it. Totally. There's been some, like you said, it, it's made the life of elderly people so much easier, which you'd think doesn't really match up. But it's wonderful how you said the young and the old can enjoy this. How do you see the IoT segment growing to the scale that it's expected to in the coming years? Yeah, I think, look, the, the growth has definitely put uh, pressure on supply pipeline. Um, there's been significant growth in different industries. Um, things like electric cars are using nine times the components now. Uh, the world is rolling out 5G connectivity, towers and phones and everything being upgraded. But also in the recent two years, we've seen that consumer demand with many people working from home, spending more time at home. You know, the demand of consumer electronics um, and indeed smart home or connected IoT devices is growing significantly. So it is putting pressure on supply chains. Um, for Zimmy, we've, we've definitely had to react to this. We've established a bonded inventory of key components to help mitigate this risk. But initiatives such as the CHIP Act passed by the US Senate last year, which includes 52 billion of federal funding, is helping decentralize supply of electronics and, and, and we hope it will improve in time. Wonderful, thank you so much, Jordan. Zimmy has been expanding as well with the growth in the sector and its product range has evolved and grown with the introduction of multi-dimmer switches to its family of smart switches. What are the next plans for expanding the product portfolio, please? Yeah, we first introduced PowerMesh, which was a family of smarter switches, which quite easily adds smart control in any home with your existing lighting, fans, doors or appliances, simply by swapping the switch. So we've made announcements by expanding that range, um, but we've also announced Sonoa, which is our smartest range of premium glass switches with the power to do more. This includes our new accessibility range, which enables us simple things for everyone. Um, some things we take for granted, people with disabilities, it's really satisfying seeing that everyone can benefit from these devices in the home or office. And generally, people are becoming more educated now on the many smart things that they can do. We're also, yes. we're also expanding our portfolio into safety, 
Uh, we recently announced the New Zimmy Smoke Connect. Uh, in Australia, smoke alarms are indeed legislated, and we wanted to innovate with connected smoke alarms. So we've got the new Smoke Connect that can even make a phone call to you. So no matter where you are in the world, if there's smoke detected in your home, you're the first to know. So this is just one of the many exciting developments we have coming up. So yeah, look out for more, more announcements from Zimmy. That's great. It's hard not to be passionate about what you do when it's evolving at such a great pace, expanding at such a great pace and coming out with such fantastic safety features as well. So how is your company placed on research and development within the IoT market? Yeah, the smart home or smart spaces is evolving more than ever before. Apple, Google, Amazon, and other companies have come together over the last couple of years to implement a new connectivity standard called Matter. And this just means that there's a seamless connection between all the different companies' devices, which will make it easier for people to adopt this in the home without the complications of how to set it all up. Zimmy is indeed developing a new Matter module, um, and we'll roll that out in our devices in the year ahead. But we also look to expand to global markets where we can fast track other manufacturers to market with this solution. Secondly, we are investing significantly into AI or artificial intelligence, which can provide more value from the devices as they gain the intelligence in your lifestyle. I'm very passionate about this topic because the intelligence of automating things or the very little things, it could be just simply avoiding a house fire by turning off a heater that was accidentally left on or manage precious resources like electricity and water for a more sustainable lifestyle that's based on your behaviour. So plenty of uh, developments and very exciting to be part of it. That's great to hear. So as we reach the end of the discussion, and before we hear about your goals for the next 12 months or your vision, can we talk a little bit about tips for use and safety, especially in regards to manufacturer passwords. I think that's where sometimes people can fall short to um, exploiters of the situation and, and the products. How can people avoid um, the exploitation from bad actors? Yeah, look, security is always a big concern. And uh, I think what's really good is uh, technologies like Bluetooth or proximity sensing is making things much safer in the home. Uh, the elimination of passwords just by you being present uh, is a, a really solid way of security and it means that people can't hack from elsewhere in the world. But all of these smart home products are essentially hosted on Amazon and Google and share the same security and encryption that we see with banking and probably other areas that are more desirable by hackers than perhaps turning your light off or on in your smart home. Right. Thank you so much for clarifying that. So where do you see your company to be in 12 months from now? Yeah, well, at Zimmy, we've done a lot of the hard work to position us for our next phase of growth. And the next 12 months is exciting indeed. We've established an excellent partner network in Australia. Uh, we have Trader Electrical distributing to over a thousand electrical wholesalers, which support the electricians across the country, plus over a hundred beacon lighting stores where customers can go in and get help with the design of their smart home. Harvey Norman Commercial, another important partner, are providing solutions from the home to high rises. And finally, we've partnered with Steeline, Australia's largest door manufacturer, and Polyair, Australia's largest air conditioning manufacturer, and they're providing the industry what's required to really get everybody enjoying this technology, uh, indeed from their homes and in their office. So I'm really excited for the year ahead. And more importantly, I'm very grateful to be a part of this very exciting time as everything that can be connected is. Thank you so much, Jordan. Best of luck with your plans moving forward and for joining us today. We appreciate your time. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. If you just joined us, we had a very interesting discussion with Jordan Tentori. He's a CEO of Zimi Limited, an Internet of Things business. If you missed any part of the discussion, please head to Kalkine Media's YouTube channel and keep watching Kalkine Media for more of these expert talks and live market updates till the next episode. Stay apprised and invest wise with Kalkine Media. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Kalkine Media's growing platform, Kalkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. 
Showcase your brand on Kalkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guest team at kalkine.com.au. The year 2022 hasn't been very kind to UK stock market, but the market has still managed to stay afloat despite facing rough times. Since the beginning of the year, the UK's FTSE 100 index has lost around 4%, but even after that, it's performed relatively well compared to other global markets. So in light of this, let's take a look at three FTSE 100 volume leaders that investors may want to keep an eye on. The first one is Lloyds Banking Group. Shares of the UK-based provider of financial services, Lloyds Banking Group rallied by 1.43% on Friday. Lloyds currently offers investors a dividend yield of 4.8% per year, and its EPS also lies in the positive zone at 0.08. But the stock's year-to-day return and one-year returns stand at negative 12% and negative 12 as well, respectively. Another stock to keep tabs on is Barclays. Shares of the globally operating banking company rallied by 2.05% on Friday. Barclays currently offers investors a dividend yield of 4% per year and its EPS also sits in the positive zone at 0.38. The stock's performance, however, has depreciated lately and its year-to-day return and one-year return stands at around negative 20% and negative 12% respectively. Another one is Vodafone Group. Shares of the leading British telecom firm rallied 0.96% on Friday. Vodafone has enjoyed better luck lately with both a year-to-date return and one-year returns giving positive returns of 15% and 9% respectively. And that concludes our list. Now that you're up to speed, hit that bell icon to stay up to date and boost your financial IQ. I'm Holly Shields reporting for Calcane Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Privacy coins are cryptos that have two primary objectives to provide users with privacy and data security. Now, these coins also use blockchain technology in a distributed ledger. While most crypto transactions on a blockchain are generally public, they are recorded on a public ledger. Privacy coins, as the name suggests, provide anonymity during transactions. Blockchain transactions are hard to conceal from public view, so it's easy to identify an individual's address. On the other hand, privacy coins use a cryptocurrency tool to hide the user's wallet balance and address. Let's look at the top three privacy coins under one US dollar. Oasis is a leading privacy-focused scalable layer one blockchain. Its protected architecture offers a high throughput and low gas fees. The next-gen Web3 platform powers applications related to decentralized finance, GameFi NFTs, and the metaverse. Oasis had a market cap of $257 million, and its fully diluted market cap is $511.3 million. The token's maximum and total supply are $10 billion, and its current circulating supply is $5.03 billion. It returned 5.93% gains in the last 30 days, and it can be traded on Binance, KuCoin, and Gate.io. Now, Status is a mobile and desktop-based decentralized OS browser and a messaging system. It allows users to interact with a network from anywhere and at any time. It's like client Ethereum node allows access to Ethereum dApps through an application installed on the user's mobile phones and tablets. 
to send encrypted texts or access their wallets. Its market cap is $103.7 million. Its fully diluted market cap is $203.6 million. It returned 19.22% gains in the last 30 days. The token's total supply is $6.8 billion, and its current circulating supply is $3.47 billion. The token is traded on exchanges such as Bittrex, OKX, and Upbit. Now, Verge is a blockchain that provides decentralized payment networks with a feature to integrate the privacy tool Tor into its Verge Pay wallet for keeping transactions anonymous. Its market cap is $58.14 million and its fully diluted market cap is over $58.31 million. The token's maximum supply is $16.55 billion and its total and current circulating supply is around $16.5 billion. It returned 18.42% gains in the last 30 days. The XVG crypto can be traded on exchanges such as Binance, HitBTC and Huboy Global. The crypto market is volatile and prone to various cybersecurity risks. Investors should carefully evaluate the digital assets and the broader market before investing in cryptos. Now, if you like the information in this video, you can like, share and comment on it. You can also subscribe to our channel and you can press the bell icon for notifications for our latest videos. I'm Rachel signing off for Kalkine. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV. The Australian Council of Superannuation Investors, or AXI, has released a report on the salaries of some of the biggest company CEOs. Salaries on the list of the top 10 range from $9 million to hundreds of millions. Despite temporary pay cuts for CEOs during the height of the pandemic, most salaries have increased overall. And in this video, I'll take you through the top five highest paid CEOs of ASX listed companies, starting with number five, Brad Banducci, the CEO of Woolworths Group, with a salary of 11.7 million Aussie dollars. Woolworths, the retail giant, has seen booming business despite the loss in consumer demand during the pandemic. The company has long been established as one of the biggest supermarket chains in Australia. And Woolworths has a rich history and has been in business since the 1920s. Brad has been the CEO of Woolworths since February 2016 and has seen his salary increase consistently throughout his time in charge. Number four, Shamara Wickramanayaka, the CEO of Macquarie Group, with a salary of 14.6 million Aussie dollars. Macquarie CEO Shamara is the highest paid woman and person of colour in the position of CEO in Australia. The 60-year-old assumed the role in December 2018, following a career as a lawyer and banker. She was ranked 24th in the list of the most powerful women in the world for the year 2021 by Forbes. Number three is Greg Goodman, the CEO of Goodman Group, with a salary of 37.1 million Aussie dollars. Goodman Group is an infrastructure company and has become one of Australia's largest property businesses. The company is engaged in building property parks around the world, with many of them being situated here in Australia. Greg Goodman founded the company back in 1989, and the company was then listed on the ASX in 1995. Greg has been the CEO since the company's inception. And the second highest earning CEO of an ASX listed company is Paul Perrault, the CEO of CSL Limited with an incredible salary of 58.9 million Aussie dollars a year. CSL has been one of the most crucial companies to operate during the pandemic as it significantly contributed to developing the COVID vaccine. Over the years, CSL has become the world's third largest biotech company. It was founded in 1916 as a federal government department before being privatised in 1994. Paul was appointed as the managing director and CEO of the company in July 2013. And the top spot is jointly held by the co-founders and co-CEOs of Afterpay, Anthony Eisen and Nick Molnar, who take home an insane salary of $264.2 million Aussie dollars each year. Afterpay grew exponentially during the pandemic due to the non-EMI loans made available by the company. 
Many individuals were able to delay the payments on everyday use items thanks to Afterpay. Due to this feature, buy now pay later companies quickly became consumer favourites in times when most Aussies' incomes were impacted. Anthony and Nick founded the company in October 2014 and have overseen its growth since that time, acting as co-CEOs. Not a bad sum to take home, right? Are you surprised at the amount some of the CEOs on this list are being paid? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and share the video. And for more content, you can subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. I'm James, reporting for Calkine. Crypto talk by Calkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors. Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Welcome to Expert Talks by Kalkine TV. I'm Sage. Today's guest is Aidan Slack Watkins from AXO Fight Club. NFTs have made a huge appearance in the art world and philanthropic circles last year, you may have noticed, raising money for many worthwhile causes. And today's guest, AXO Fight Club, combines the power of celebrity with conservationism in an impact NFT project to help raise awareness and funds for the critically endangered axolotl amphibian species. Axolotls are unusual as they reach adulthood without going through metamorphosis like other amphibians. Well, here to tell us more is Aidan Slack Watkins, an NFT expert from AXO Fight Club. Welcome to the show, Aidan. Hey, how's it going? Great to see you. Yes, thank you so much for being available. Now, I understand you also run another NFT project called Divine Dragons, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Awesome. Well, could you share the mission behind your impact project, AXO Fight Club? Yeah, absolutely. So you mentioned a little bit about it, but really the purpose of our project is to try and help save the endangered axolotl. Um, it's a really interesting sort of anomaly of a creature because as a pet in pet stores, it's a really widespread, widely owned animal. Um, a lot of people own it in their households as pets. They're very popular across the world um, in the millions in pet stores. However, the estimates for their wild population at this point are less than a thousand. Um, so it's sort of this weird, I guess, uh, um, uh, it's, it's strange that so many people are so aware of them as pets and so few people are aware that they are as endangered as they are. So I yeah, the mission, the mission of our project basically is to try to bring awareness and a global community together around the axolotl. That's so interesting that you raised that because I was just looking into it as well. And in Australia, it says that you can buy them as pets, but we can't actually bring them in legally into the country. So it's a very interesting um, creature. Like there's so many, are they, are they bred? Is that how they're in the millions yeah. in the households? Exactly, yeah. So the, the ones that are owned as pets are actually, for the most part, bred in labs. Um, they cross them with the DNA of another um, salamander species to give them their pink hue or, you know, there's different skin colors they can have as pets. But basically, the pet axolotls are not able to go back to the wild. The wild is not a suitable environment for those um, pet axolotls. You know what they actually remind me of? They look a little bit like the sea monkeys that, that we used to see in mad comics, like way back when. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so please explain what the corporate benefits for AXO Entertainment Group, who I believe is run by actors Gabriel Soto and Irina Beva. What are the benefits to collaborate with the conservationist Dr. Luis Zambrano, please? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a, 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 wide, a wide set of board members and, um, and, and co-founders and a really amazing reach to, um, to a lot of the Latin American community. Um, Dr. Luis Zambrano is someone we got in touch with early in the project. 
it's really important to us as a project that is emphasizing conservation to be able to show and prove that the funds are going to the right place um, to prove that we're approaching it in the in the right way with the conservationist attitude in mind um, and really trying to understand what we can do to help um, because you know for us what's the point of building a community around this this species if we can't actually have real impact on on its um, its population and on its conservation status and so part of that partnership is making sure we can do as much as possible for them and involve them as much as possible in, in what we're doing to achieve our goals thank you so what are the main advantages that nfts bring to artists and content creators in your opinion yeah well i think there's a, a lot of a lot of benefits right i think Largely, it comes from interactivity from a community um, and access to special perks and benefits by owning. So, you know, I, I think I think saying what can NFTs do for me as a content creator maybe is the wrong way to look at it. I think a better way to approach it is what can I do for my community through NFTs? Because really, it provides a higher level of quality in terms of interaction, more involvement for, from your community and rewards for that involvement. And it just brings the community together in a deeper way. That's great. Thank you for that. And how important is community building? You've just mentioned it a little bit there. Could we elaborate on the community building aspect of impact projects such as the Exo Fight Club? Definitely. Well, I'd say it's the, it's the most important thing. Um, you know, having a, a great community that's willing to support the cause and really believes in the direction that your project is going in. I think for any brand or any company or any conservation effort or you know any institution in the world, it's critical, right? And that's no different with NFTs. You need to be able to build that community around your project. You need to be able to um, facilitate that community and get them excited about being, in a way, partial owners of the community themselves, right? And and it's sort of a, a virtuous cycle, right? Where it just sort of keeps building and building and building and you get these amazing people around that want to help and be a part of it and they can continue to contribute and benefit from that contribution. So I would say in the end, it's really all about community. Absolutely. And I see that being a real advantage to NFTs as well, and that inner contact, sorry, the interconnectivity it can bring. But sometimes, unfortunately, it's misunderstood for the shady side, the multi-level marketing schemes and things like that. Um, do you have any um, insights to share on that from your experience in NFTs? Yeah, I mean, you know, I've been in NFTs for two years. I've seen a lot of shady stuff, obviously. Um, I think that it's really important to make sure that you're transparent about your identity, right? I mean, I'd say on a base level, that's why I'm I'm here and showing my face and that's something that a lot of people wouldn't do in this, this NFT world. Um, the transparency of the people behind it, the transparency, again, through our partnership with LRE is a great example of this, but the transparency of what you're gonna do, being able to prove it, and on the blockchain, you can prove it, right? So. You know, there's a lot of projects where that'll that'll leave and take the money and not put it towards what they said they were going to put it put it towards. And on the blockchain, you can see that. But if there's no face behind it, there's no accountability. So um, I think that's a, a really really important part of it. And I think we're also moving towards a, a phase in NFTs where uh, governments are feeling more comfortable about enforcement behind um, shady dealings, and they're getting better at being able to track those things. Mm -hmm. And I think in a lot of ways, that's a good thing because I think it makes this entire industry and market more, more stable, more, um, more inviting for larger investors and uh, just a better environment to participate in. Absolutely. Just that uh, ethical, ethically conscious aspect definitely will attract probably a better quality of investors and a community. So with people being involved and your project incentive being incentivized by benefits what do people actually get from buying nfts in the axo fight club project yeah well um the goal of our entire community is to build an ecosystem around this this axolotl conservation effort um, and for people to be able to not only contribute money but also ideas and time towards that conservation effort so Basically, everything we're doing is trying to incentivize that participation. Um, on, a, on a base level, through our partnership with LRE, we are able to provide owners of our NFT with access to and adopt an axolotl program, which we're helping create through that partnership. Um, so basically, everyone that buys an NFT will receive updates and images of a specific wild axolotl and, um, and you know, really get that connection in that way. Um, 
you know, consistently through that, through, you know, in an ongoing way through that project. Uh, on top of that, we're building out metaverse experiences for our buyers to participate and metaverse items for them to be able to claim if you do our, own our NFT. And those metaverse environments themselves, we've been working a lot on, on, on starting to design and put together, but they really are driven by learning about the axolotl, um, playing games driven by our story about our axolotl characters and, and more broadly about the current plight of the axolotl. Um, and earning rewards through that process of, of playing and being able to use those rewards again to contribute back into the uh, in, into the conservation effort. Um, so our, yeah, our long term goal really is just to encourage um, a community participation in in the project to encourage people to be excited about the axolotl and educate themselves about the axolotl um, and give back as much as possible to the restoration effort. That sounds great. I'm really seeing this ed edutainment sector of NFTs and, and blockchain really taking off. And I see there's potential for that to become big uh, with classrooms becoming really exciting places with VR and becoming more tech tactile. Do you think your project could head into that sort of virtual reality in, the, well, you mentioned the metaverse. Um, do you think there could be virtual reality games and AR games coming out in the future as well? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the technology stack that has evolved around all of this and, and the, the opportunities going forward are really as broad as you can imagine. Um, I think there's infinite possibilities for where we can go. We've been having some really interesting conversations with some extremely exciting partners, um, which will definitely be able to enable that sort of, uh, of an experience um, and even actually broaden our reach with nonprofits potentially past you know, LRE, but still obviously funneling everything back to LRE, but sort of expanding a global reach behind the effort to help conserve the axolotls. So we have tons of exciting partnerships coming up and um, absolutely the goal, I think, behind really what, sh at least what should be the goal, and I think a lot of people have spent a lot of time in NFTs, the goal behind NFTs in general is more interconnectivity and integration with as many different experiential technologies as possible. So um, 100%, that's part of our our ongoing goal. Absolutely. Best of luck with that. It was obviously just at the beginning stages and the sky's the limit, like you say. Thank you so much. What an inspiring discussion. Really appreciate your insights today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. And if you just joined us, we had a very interesting discussion with Aidan Slack Watkins, an NFT expert from AXO Fight Club. Please watch the full interview at Calcai Media's YouTube channel and keep watching for more expert talks and market insights till the next episode. Stay apprised and invest wise with Calcai Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine.
build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Kalkine Media's growing platform, Kalkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Kalkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at kalkine.com.au. Phantom FTM crypto rises 8%. Will the momentum continue? The Phantom FTM token rose more than 8% on Monday morning after integrating iGain Finance, a decentralized financial protocol on its platform over the weekend. The FTM token traded at US $0.2825. This was current at 9.49 a.m. Eastern Time. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm Sage for Calkine Media. Do keep watching to find out more. iGain said it's collaborating with Phantom for its ability to process 4,000 transactions per second and it will also benefit from Phantom's compatibility with Ethereum Virtual Machine or EVM. And besides its fast and low cost attributes which eliminates the need for iGain's deployment on layer 2 blockchains. Phantom is a layer 1 blockchain where more than 200 D apps were deployed and iGain could have easy access from their partnership. Last week, Bondex, a decentralized fintech enabled professional talent network, announced collaborating with Phantom to provide Web3 infrastructure and applications for talent acquisition. Announcing another partnership on July 14th, Phantom Foundation said it is cooperating with Maple Block Capital for funds to support DeFi, GameFi, NFTs, the metaverse, DAOs, and infrastructure and middleware projects. So what is Phantom FTM? Phantom is an open source acyclic graph or DAG smart contract platform for dApps and digital assets. It provides developers with an alternative to Ethereum for decentralized services or DeFi using Lacasis, an ABFT consensus algorithm. Phantom also addresses the issue of low transaction speed associated with smart contract platforms. Created in 2018, the Phantom Foundation manages all Phantom offerings and Phantom offers a processing time of one to two seconds per transaction at a fraction of a cent. The Phantom Foundation was created by South Korean computer scientist Ahn Byung Ik. It is currently led by Michael Kong. FTM token. FTM is a native utility token of the Phantom ecosystem used for various functions such as payments including network fees and rewards and staking as well as governance. Phantom's current market capitalization is around 718.9 million US dollars. Its trading volume rose 42.10% to reach 220.6 million US dollars just on Monday alone with a circulating supply of 2.55 billion. The token is available for trading on crypto exchanges such as Binance, FTX, MEXC and even more. Now the bottom line, the FTM token rose 16.02% in one week and the crypto market is risky and investors must carefully evaluate the projects before investing in digital assets. Now if you do like this information, please give it a like, share, comment on the video below, subscribe to the channel, do press that bell icon, you'll be notified every time Calcone releases a new video. But for more articles, we update the website regularly. Please have a look. CalkineMedia.com. Sage here for Calkine Media. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV. PokerBridge token gained attention on July 19, rising by 3.17%. 
The token traded at more than 8.7 US cents after announcing an average annual percentage yield or APY of more than 50% on the staking of PBR tokens on BSC. But first and foremost, what exactly is PokerBridge? PokerBridge is a decentralized protocol for cross-chain functioning. It's designed to work as a bridge between Polkadot and other blockchains. The protocol currently operates on the Ethereum blockchain and PVR is the native token of PokerBridge. The token is used for transactional activities on the network, such as staking collateral, rewards, participating in the initial DEX offerings or IDOs, swapping cross-chain and lending purposes. The Poker Bridge ecosystem includes P2P exchange, deflationary farming, staking, multi-chain and cross-chain AMM, launchpad and also a metaverse. Poker Bridge has so far launched more than 50 different projects and the protocol has more than $10 million of value locked into its staking pools according to its official website. Other upcoming projects are Trade with Wallet, 24-7 customer support, reduced fees and a fully secure platform. Just last week, it announced the completion of its integration with the Binance Smart Chain. Poker Bridge has also migrated its token from Ethereum to BSC to offer its community low fees and faster settlement times. The announcement has resulted in a price increase of more than 77% over the past seven days. Poker Bridge also announced the imminent launch of its Insights platform. The Insight platform of Poker Bridge is one of the core projects by its team, purpose built to educate its community and impart information about the market, other projects, current scenarios, concepts, guides, walkthroughs, and a whole lot more. The platform is currently around 60% completed, and a testnet is set to be launched soon before the fully fledged launch of the platform. The PBR token is of course the native token of PokerBridge and it has a circulating supply of 51.8 million PBR and with a market cap of 4.5 million US dollars. Its total supply is around 77.8 million tokens. PBR's trading volume increased 9.21% to 2.25 million US dollars over the last 24 hours and if you're interested in the project you can trade PBR on the likes of Mexi, KuCoin and Gate.io amongst others. So what's your take on PBR? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and share the video. For more content you can subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, Continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Welcome to Expert Talks by Kalkine TV. I'm Sage. Today's guest is Jordan Tentori, CEO of Zemi Limited. For some background, Zemi Limited is an innovative Australian Internet of Things company that targets to enhance the connectivity of electrical devices from homes through to high rises. So to find out more about this expanding and pulsing industry, we have invited the CEO himself, Jordan Tentori, to share insights with us today. Welcome to the show, Jordan. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Glad to have you join us, Jordan. So, Internet of Things is your biz, and hasn't it been buzzing in recent times? Indeed, it has been buzzing. <laughs> um, it's actually quite incredible. When you think it was only a few generations ago we saw electricity adopted in the home, from lighting to hot water and appliances like the radio and the TV, and then in less than a lifetime we've seen computers and the internet and smartphones changing how we communicate, take photos and do business, and even stream entertainment. And yes. now the IoT, or the Internet of Things, is a pretty simple concept where anything that can offer economy or sustainability or convenience or entertainment in turn becomes a device connection opportunity. So it's a very exciting time. 
and you've seen Google and Apple and Amazon changing this with the smartphone now, and voice control, which we've learnt from a young age, and I think that anyone can enjoy technology from young to old, and it's really seen the IoT grow an incredible pace. To answer your question, there's more connected devices on the planet today than people, with analysts expecting the device count to triple by 2030. Wow, and 2030 is really not so far away when we come to think of it. Totally. There's been, it's... There's been some, like you said, it, it's made the life of elderly people so much easier, which you'd think doesn't really match up. But it's wonderful how you said the young and the old can enjoy this. How do you see the IoT segment growing to the scale that it's expected to in the coming years? Yeah, I think, look, the, the growth has definitely put uh, pressure on supply pipeline. Um, there's been significant growth in different industries. Um, things like electric cars are using nine times the components now. Uh, the world is rolling out 5G connectivity, towers and phones and everything being upgraded. But also in the recent two years, we've seen that consumer demand with many people working from home, spending more time at home, you know, the demand of consumer electronics um, and indeed smart home or connected IoT devices is growing significantly. So it is putting pressure on supply chains. Um, for Zimmy, we've, we've definitely had to react to this. We've established a bonded inventory of key components to help mitigate this risk. But initiatives such as the CHIP Act passed by the US Senate last year, which includes 52 billion of federal funding, is helping decentralise supply of electronics and, and, and we hope it will improve in time. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jordan. Zimmy has been expanding as well with the growth in the sector and its product range has evolved and grown with the introduction of multi-dimmer switches to its family of smart switches. What are the next plans for expanding the product portfolio, please? Yeah, we first introduced PowerMesh, which was a family of smarter switches, which quite easily adds smart control in any home with your existing lighting, fans, doors or appliances simply by swapping the switch. So we've made announcements by expanding that range, um, but we've also announced Sonoa, which is our smartest range of premium glass switches with the power to do more. This includes our new accessibility range, which enables us simple things for everyone. Um, some things we take for granted, people with disabilities, it's really satisfying seeing that everyone can benefit from these devices in the home or office. And generally, people are becoming more educated now on the many smart things that they can do. We're also, yes. we're also expanding our portfolio into safety. Uh, we recently announced the new Zimmy Smoke Connect. Uh, in Australia, smoke alarms are indeed legislated and we wanted to innovate with connected smoke alarms. So we've got the new Smoke Connect that can even make a phone call to you. So no matter where you are in the world, if there's smoke detected in your home, you're the first to know. So this is just one of the many exciting developments we have coming up. So yeah, look out for more, more announcements from Zimmy. That's great. It's hard not to be passionate about what you do when it's evolving at such a great pace, expanding at such a great pace and coming out with such fantastic safety features as well. So how is your company placed on research and development within the IoT market? Yeah, the smart home or smart spaces is evolving more than ever before. Apple, Google, Amazon and other companies have come together over the last couple of years to implement a new connectivity standard called Matter. And this just means that there's a seamless connection between all the different companies' devices, which will make it easier for people to adopt this in the home without the complications of how to set it all up. Zimmy is indeed developing a new Matter module um, and we'll roll that out in our devices in the year ahead. But we also look to expand to global markets where we can fast track other manufacturers to market with this solution. Secondly, we are investing significantly into AI or artificial intelligence, which can provide more value from the devices as they gain the intelligence in your lifestyle. I'm very passionate about this topic because the intelligence of automating things or the very little things, it could be just simply avoiding a house fire by turning off a heater that was accidentally left on, or manage precious resources like electricity and water for a more sustainable lifestyle that's based on your behaviour. So plenty of uh, developments and very exciting to be part of it. That's great to hear. So as we reach the end of the discussion, and before we hear about your goals for the next 12 months or your vision, can we talk a little bit about 
tips for use and safety, especially in regards to manufacturer passwords. I think that's where sometimes people can fall short to um, exploiters of the situation and, and the products. How can people avoid um, the exploitation from bad actors? Yeah, look, security is always a big concern. And uh, I think what's really good is uh, technologies like Bluetooth or proximity sensing is making things much safer in the home. Uh, the elimination of passwords just by you being present uh, is a, a really solid way of security and it means that people can't hack from elsewhere in the world. But all of these smart home products are essentially hosted on Amazon and Google and share the same security and encryption that we see with banking and probably other areas that are more desirable by hackers than perhaps turning your light off or on in your smart home. Right. Thank you so much for clarifying that. So where do you see your company to be in 12 months from now? Yeah, well, at Zimmy, we've done a lot of the hard work to position us for our next phase of growth. And the next 12 months is exciting indeed. We've established an excellent partner network in Australia. Uh, we have Trader Electrical distributing to over a thousand electrical wholesalers, which support the electricians across the country, plus over a hundred beacon lighting stores where customers can go in and get help with the design of their smart home. Harvey Norman Commercial, another important partner, are providing solutions from the home to high rises. And finally, we've partnered with Steeline, Australia's largest door manufacturer, and Polyair, Australia's largest air conditioning manufacturer, and they're providing the industry what's required to really get everybody enjoying this technology, uh, indeed from their homes and in their office. So I'm really excited for the year ahead. And more importantly, I'm very grateful to be a part of this very exciting time as everything that can be connected is. Thank you so much, Jordan. Best of luck with your plans moving forward and for joining us today. We appreciate your time. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. If you just joined us, we had a very interesting discussion with Jordan Tentori. He's a CEO of Zimi Limited, an Internet of Things business. If you missed any part of the discussion, please head to Calkine Media's YouTube channel and keep watching Calkine Media for more of these expert talks and live market updates till the next episode. Stay apprised and invest wise with Calkine Media. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Calkine Media's growing platform, Calkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Calkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at calkine.com don't pay you. There's a new group in the geopolitical arena called I2U2. It's a partnership of four countries. The I stands for India and Israel, and the U stands for the United States and the United Arab Emirates. The group is also known as the West Asian Quad. It's similar to the Quadrilateral Security Dialogue, which was Australia, India, Japan, and the US as members. The first virtual meeting of the I2U2 group was held on the 14th of July. However, its roots go back to 2021 when foreign ministers of these countries met following the Abraham Accords between Israel and UAE. Last week, United States President Joe Biden and Israel's Prime Minister Ayer Lapid connected on a virtual call from Jerusalem with India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi and UAE's Prime Minister Mohammed bin Zayed. Following the virtual summit, four countries released a joint statement which says that these countries aim to harness the vibrancy of our societies and entrepreneurial spirit to tackle some of the greatest challenges confronting our world. The particular focus of the I2U2 group will be on joint investments and new initiatives in water, energy, transportation, space, health and food security. The group also plans to mobilize private sector capital and modernize the existing infrastructure. The I2U2 will also work towards decarbonizing industries and improving the public health sector and vaccine access. On the financial aspect, the governments plan to strengthen the startups and develop critical emerging and green technologies. 
All these areas will be taken care of while carefully ensuring near and long term food and energy security. The four nations of I2U2 have inherent maritime interests across the world and therefore free and open global commons are imperative for their growth and prosperity. A combination of these four nations underpinned by issue-based convergence of maritime safety could ensure the security of trade and economic interests of these nations at sea. Notably, amongst other points, the West Asian Quad Summit also highlighted the importance of the Abraham Accords and other peace activities that normalize ties with Israel between Arab countries. The Abraham Accords signed in 2020 brought Israel and a group of Arab Gulf countries led by the UAE into official partnership and recognition. It will be interesting to see how these four countries engage in an existing strategic partnership to promote discussed initiatives and investments. Now if you like this video you can like, share and comment on it, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can press the bell icon for notifications for our latest videos. I'm Rachel for Kalki Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. The USA's governmental space agency NASA and Russia's space agency Roscosmos have signed an agreement to collaborate for the flights to the International Space Station. Despite tensions between the two countries over the war in Ukraine, this long sought arrangement will allow Russia's cosmonauts to make a journey on US made spacecraft, while American astronauts will be able to ride on Russia's Zoyas. As reported by both agencies, the arrangement will start in September this year. The first integrated flights will have NASA's astronaut Frank Rubio and two Russian cosmonauts Sergei Prokhyov and Dmitry Pedalin. The flight is scheduled to take place on the 21st of September from Kazakhstan. NASA has also announced another joint mission on the SpaceX Crew-6 will fly out in early 2023. The announcement came along with the news of the departure of Dmitry Rogozin, the former Deputy Prime Minister of Russia for Defense and Space Industry. He was dismissed from his position as Director General of Roscosmos with former Deputy Prime Minister Yuri Bozyov to replace him. As tensions flare between Russia and the US, the development to renew space flights together is being seen as a sign of cooperation. The Roscosmos said in a statement that the agreement is in the interests of both Russia and the United States and will promote the development of cooperation within the International Space Station program. 
Now, if you like the news in this video, you can like, share and comment on it. You can also press the bell icon to get notifications for our latest videos. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Hello and welcome back to Kalkine TV. This is another edition of Executive Corner Expert Talks. And today we'll be exploring the first hotels DAO on the blockchain, D Hotels. The community-driven hotel marketplace allows users to own and manage a part of a hotel. And joining us to share their insights is co-founder and CEO Diamante Jankowski. Welcome to the show. It's great to have you with us. Good morning. Thanks so much for inviting us. It's so it's a pleasure, pleasure to, to have be you here. On. It's great to be here and pleasure to have you on. Now to kick things off, could you walk us through how exactly your revolutionary platform works? Absolutely. So, um, firstly, I would like to start with our mission. Why we, did, why we created the platform and what was our initial idea. So, uh, since I was coming from the hospitality sector before and uh, one of my CEO and co-founders, Gabriela, she was from um, investment banking and blockchain. So, we thought that that's a very great idea to combine those things into one and to let people and to educate people to invest. So we wanted to create a very easy platform which stands on the real physical assets, but it's combined as well with the crypto and the blockchain. So we decided to tokenize the hotels and to let people, ordinary people like mom or your mom to invest by easily clicking two, two buttons on her phone. So um, also, um, what is the hotels all about shortly? So we are tokenizing hotels and basically um, all the hospitality real estate. We are letting others to tokenize their real estate as well. And uh, that's gonna be very easy way for many, many people to invest to, you know, looking at the, today's economic situation. Um, we believe that it's mandatory to educate and more and more people to show how it is, how all the risks should be, you know, diversified and what are the profits. And uh, basically we, we are willing, you know, I think that my colleague, uh, Gabriela Sio will uh, join us here today as well. So she will explain a little bit more in details how the model could work. But at the moment, as I said, that the hotels is a DAO. So that means that people would not only own the hotel, but they will have the decision-making power, meaning that it's gonna be decentralized management. People will have ability to, for example, issue the notes that, okay, we don't like the branding of the hotel, let's change it. Everybody's gonna vote and um, then we'll uh, have to implement the same. So uh, the thing is that the DAO principle is not that uh, our team or anyone on top gonna decide which hotel to buy or for example which, how to manage it it's gonna be all left to the our token holders meaning uh, our investors right so you know many people may ask so why i cannot buy kempinski shares why can't i buy, buy marriott shares so the thing is that of course you can you'll have um, some stocks but you won't be able to say anything you won't be able to get a chance to be involved into the process, right? Um, for Bifas, you have the ownership of the real hotel, meaning that the property, the real property belongs to you. And of course, you have all decision-making powers, meaning on uh, strategic questions, uh, brandings, and uh, management. 
That's incredible. I mean, it sounds like you've had a great journey so far and really fascinating adventure there. So is that the benefit, would you say, of having a decentralized hospitality sector? Well, um, in our team, we do have the general manager of Gempinski, uh, uh, other, actually, uh, other um, hospitality experts. So we believe that these days, um, the decision-making process is very slow and the implementation is even more slower. So um, that's the insights, what we received you know, from uh, the investors, from the experts. And we believe that this concept, this DAO concept would make things way easier, way faster, and you'll get the, how, to, how can I express myself? Uh, you'll have the insights from the customers uh, because people who will own the token holders I'm pretty sure that everyone would like to visit uh, their own hotel at least for a week uh, to stay there and to have a good time. So, you know, once you're staying at your own hotel, you're having a different view and you're looking for the different eyes, right? So that's the thing that people will be able to issue the token, no, not a token, issue the note and other investors will vote and all the decisions will be made way, way, way faster. Absolutely. That is an amazing concept. It'd be great to be able to do that and have that governance option, I think. That would be incredible to be realized. And I understand that D-Hotels offers DeFi vaults through which anyone can really invest in hotel real estate, which is incredible to say the least. But do investors need to be knowledgeable on hotel management? Well, I believe that, yes, um, people who are involved into the business, meaning that they are investing into it. We believe that they are interested and they want to have the right to decide. So uh, we believe that it's a very important part and um, that's why our investors are very active and uh, they believe in, in us, uh, they believe in the idea and we believe that it's gonna be the big thing in the future. We have a really great examples, for example, FrysDAO. Uh, so these guys are doing pretty much the same thing on the restaurants, on the fast food chains. We can see a very, very successful example on that. So we are partnering with them and looking from their perspective, uh, we see the very bright future. I don't doubt that. It is amazing to see how Web3 is really shaking up every sector, specifically hospitality rather. and. Uh, Sounds like you'll be getting in on that as well. Now, could you shed some light for us on your native token and its utility? Absolutely. So basically, our token is utility token. So our token holder, holders will have two options, as I said before. First one is to own the real estate, the real hotel tokens. So this concept is already legalized in Switzerland, in Cyprus, in Estonia. So there is nothing in a gray area as it was before because uh, now the laws are there and the whole process is very clear for us. So token holders will own the real hotel, real estate. Also, they will have ability to manage it. So these are the two parts, right? Also, um, our hotels will be on a metaverse. So people will have a, a chance to walk through them on a metaverse to see what they want to change and they can issue the note on the metaverse as well. The third thing is that it's gamified and uh, it's going to be very easy to issue a note. Then everybody's going to vote. Uh, we'll have a chat so our investors can uh, discuss with them. So it's going to be a very interesting platform that it's not existing as yet. But we are on the process and we believe that uh, it's going to be a very, very great chance for ordinary people, as we say, who are not very much into crypto and a blockchain to learn, to invest, and to get profits. Absolutely. It is certainly a revolutionary idea that you've got there. And at the moment, as I understand it, you're undertaking several funding rounds, if I'm correct, which is certainly exciting stuff. What can we look forward to seeing from D Hotels over the coming months and beyond? Yes. Yeah, so uh, at the moment, we are uh, doing our pre sale. Uh, so Actually, um, we are speaking with the investors who would like to participate in this. So um, everybody is welcome. You can always contact us for the hotels token, and we can, you know, explain the whole details um, 
more and um, we'll go it you know more into it so uh, our team is very big everybody has uh, many years experience in the business so um, I think that everyone who want to join and to become the hotel owners you can you're welcome you know to join us sounds like an incredible opportunity there and uh, you've got an incredible a uh, few months ahead of you and beyond, uh, just judging by your roadmap there. So wish you all the best with that, and we'll definitely keep an eye out for all your future developments. But uh, with that said, thanks very much for joining us today, Dean Monte. It's been really great to hear insights. Pleasure to have you on the show. If you've just joined us, that was the co-founder and CEO of the game-changing Hotels Dow, D Hotels. And if you missed any part of that chat, you can catch the full interview here on our YouTube channel at Calkine Media. Make sure to stay tuned. I'm Holly Shields reporting for Calkine TV. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Calkine Media's growing platform, Calkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Calkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at calkine.com.au. Tiger Global leads crypto-focused Meow's Series A. What is Meow? The crypto world is buzzing with new positive activities. On one hand, cryptos have been gaining of late, with Ethereum being up almost 40% in one week. And on the other day, new deals are underway. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm Sage for Calkine Media. The latest deal has been struck between the crypto market participant Meow and a prominent investment firm, Tiger Global. And this comes amid some negative movements, including crypto companies like Voyager and Celsius filing for bankruptcy. And the deal might instill some new confidence in enthusiasts. Let's explore some more. What is Meow and Tiger Global's deal? Meow, a firm that focuses on yields for corporate treasuries, has released a statement about raising 22 million US dollars in Series A. This funding round was led by Tiger Global with others like the FTX Exchange and QED investors in participation. In the statement, Meow has stated its objective of using the funds for developing its stablecoin focused product. The company CEO, Brandon, Ah, Vanagi has talked about the potential of stablecoins, crypto tokens pegged to assets like a fiat currency or gold, in revolutionizing the world. So what is Meow? Meow is a new company founded only last year with the primary focus on corporate treasuries. It claims to devise high yield strategies with up to 4% yield for corporate treasuries. How Meow achieves the goal while also assuring the corporate treasurer about the financial prudence and sustainability of the strategy will become clearer with time. Meow's founder has talked about stablecoins on multiple occasions and stablecoins have stable prices which move with the price of the asset they are pegged to. For example, Tether has a price of US $1 thanks to its peg with the US dollar. However, even stablecoins can be risky and this year's Terra USD crash was the biggest such blow to stablecoin enthusiasts. Meow might focus on stablecoins in its new products, which is also indicated in the blog released after the Series A funding. So, is Meow safe? Meow is a very new market participant. It asserts a 100% track record and full compliance with regulations in the United States. Cryptocurrencies are not properly regulated in the US, which makes it a little complex to decipher Meow's claim just at the moment. The company also states that all funds are stored with industry-leading lenders and custodians. But ever since crypto-focused companies like Celsius, which promised high yields, have experienced liquidity concerns, 
investors are more cautious. After a steep fall in prices, cryptos have rebounded of late, which can, for now, keep negative sentiments like the cryptos are based on greater fool theory, remark at bay. The bottom line. What is making the news right now is the US $22 million funding round of Meow. By all measures, this is not a very high ticket deal in the crypto world, where new tokens can start their journeys easily with million dollar market caps. Meow's corporate treasury focused services, however, make it a little different than other crypto companies. Now, if you like this information, please give it a like, share, comment on the video below and subscribe to the channel. Press the bell icon. You'll be notified of the most recent videos from Kalkine. But for more articles, do head to the website kalkinemedia.com. My name's Sage for Kalkine Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. The UK government is set to reveal a draft law this week, exploiting its post-Brexit liberties for establishing its own financial rules. Although, according to the statements given on Monday by a policymaker designate, the Bank of England might not be having the adequate number of resources for fulfilling an additional goal of retaining the UK's status as a competitive global financial hub. So amid the rising inflation and political uncertainty, UK investors may consider some blue-chip dividend stocks to protect and potentially multiply their hard-earned money. The first of which is Vodafone Group. The leading telecom firm is providing a yearly dividend yield of 5.9% to its investors. Its one year and year to day returns of 12.2 and 16.53% respectively. The stock had a positive EPS of 0.07. Imperial Brands. The British tobacco brand has a market cap of 17 billion pounds and a positive EPS of 3.0 and a yearly dividend yield of 7.5%. Imperial Brands had both one-year and year-to-day returns in favourable positions, giving them returns of 17% and 16% respectively. Next is British American Tobacco. The UK-based cigarette producer had a positive EPS of 2.97 with a yearly dividend yield of 6.2%. BAT offered decent one-year and year-to-day returns to shareholders as of the 19th of July, which stand at 23.05% and 28% respectively. Now that you're up to speed, hit that bell icon to boost your financial IQ. I'm Holly Shields for Kalkine Media.
Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Several UK businesses are bracing for more challenging times as key supply routes for their chemical imports are likely to be affected by severe weather conditions. Water levels in the Rhine River in Germany, a vital shipping route for British chemical imports from Europe, are dangerously low due to the heat wave, putting the trade in doubt. According to reports, the route is on the brink of being shut down for shipping traffic as the water levels have dropped to below one metre at the town of Cove, a bottleneck point on the transport artery. This comes as Europe is facing one of its worst heat waves and temperatures are expected to increase further in the coming weeks, likely hitting record levels in some parts of the continent. And in response to this, chemical suppliers are now preparing to avoid the route for their exports and use rail or road if the river becomes too tough to traverse. However, experts fear this will impact the supply chain as not using the optimal route will have a ripple effect. On the other hand, if imports are impacted, British chemical manufacturers may benefit from it. So that said, let's have a look at some London listed companies that may be at an advantage from the situation and analyse their investment prospects. The first one is Crota International. Crota manufactures and sells specialty chemicals in several regions around the world. With a market cap of £9.4 billion, this FTSE 100 index listed stock has had a one year return of negative 12%. CRDA's EPS, meanwhile, stood at around 2.3. Another stock to eye is Johnson Mathy. The UK-based metal chemical company operates through four segments, that is health, clean air, efficient natural resources and new markets. On Monday, the firm said it'll build an £80 million gigafactory at its existing site in Royston. Shares of the company have depreciated, however, by over 32% over the past one year, while the stock's year to day return stood at 2.5%. The FTSE 250 constituent currently has a market cap of £3.7 billion. Another one is Synthoma. Synthoma is a chemical company that specializes in sustainable water based polymer solutions, operating in the UK, US, Europe, and Asia. Its share price has nosedived by more than 54% over the past 12 months and by over 42% on a year-to-date basis. The EPS, meanwhile, currently stands at 0.01. Synthoma has a market cap of around £1 billion. Now that you're up to speed, hit that bell icon to stay up to date and boost your financial IQ. I'm Holly Shields reporting for Calcane Media. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Kalkine Media's growing platform, Kalkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Kalkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at calkine.com.au.
Dent crypto experienced a surge of 11% in the 24 hours over July 18 and 19, but its one-day volume fell over 47%. Now before we take a look at the reasons behind these developments, let's first assess the project itself. Dent describes itself as a revolutionary digital mobile operator that provides users with a wide range of products and services. It provides eSIM cards, mobile data plans, call minute top-ups and a roaming free experience. According to its website, it harnesses the power of blockchain technology to create a global marketplace for mobile data liberalisation. The project has a huge mobile device user base and its services and products are available in more than 140 different countries. It also has many renowned enterprise partners including Samsung Blockchain, the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance and also Telecom Infra. The Dent Wireless project was co-founded by Tero Katajainen and also Maiko Linakmaki and it was launched in 2017. Its native utility token, DENT, is an Ethereum-based ERC-20 token. Although DENT had no new updates to share on Tuesday, the market's positive momentum may have pushed the token's price higher. On June 23, though, it did announce that it was partnering with WiFiMap.io to provide the best possible eSIM user experience. DENT's recent listing on the Kraken exchange on July 1 could have also helped the token gain traction. Dent was priced at 0.11 cents on July 19, up by 11.18%, while its volume for the trailing 24 hours fell by 47.97% to 42.79 million US dollars. It also has a market cap of 109.53 million US dollars, and its fully diluted market cap is more than 110 million dollars. The token has a total supply of 100 billion tokens, and its current circulating supply is 99.01 billion. It has returned gains of more than 30% in the last 7 days, whilst also increasing by 29.3% over the past 30 days. The DENT token has experienced a price range of 0.11 cents to 0.07 cents over the past 30 days, and if you are interested in investing in the token, you can find it on Kraken and the likes of Binance and KuCoin. Are you bullish on DENT? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and share the video. For more content, you can subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. I'm James, reporting for Cowkine. Crypto talk by Cowkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, Continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Video streaming crypto company Theta Network's Theta token surged 7.42% to $1.27 US on Monday amidst gains in the global crypto market. Though no new company update could be attributed to the rally, the market's rebound to its former valuation of over $1 trillion US dollars could be a factor in people's renewed interest in digital assets. The crypto market tipped below the trillion dollar mark in mid-June, but on Monday it rose 4.76% to 1.02 trillion US dollars, helped by gains in major cryptocurrencies. So with all that said, what is Theta? Theta is a video streaming network powered by a blockchain. The project was co-founded by Mitch Liu and Jie Long in 2018, and Liu is a gaming and video industry veteran who earlier co-founded the video streaming platform Tapjoy amongst several other startups. His previous projects included gaming startup GameView Studios and the live streaming platform Theta TV, whose dApps were the first to be built on the Theta protocol. Long also has several years of experience in gaming, virtual reality and design automation. In 2019, Theta's mainnet was launched, a decentralized network to share bandwidth and computing resources on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. The open source platform uses a proof-of-stake consensus mechanism and it caters to dApp developers. 
Both content creators and viewers can earn rewards by sharing bandwidth and resources. The platform delivers video streaming at a low cost, generating more profit for the platform and its creators. That is, corporate investors include Sierra Ventures, Samsung and Seraph amongst others, and the project partners include Lionsgate, MGM, Decentraland, Clayton, GameTalk and also Chainlink. The network runs on the native blockchain and its two native coins are Theta Network or Theta and Theta Fuel or T Fuel. While Theta is the governance token, T Fuel is the utility token of the platform. The commodity run Guardian nodes support the Theta Network and its enterprise validators include Google, Binance, Gumi, Blockchain Ventures and also Samsung. Theta's market cap is 1.27 billion US dollars and its trading volume increased by 78.25% to 73.44 million US dollars with a circulating supply and a total supply of 1 billion tokens. The token itself can be traded on crypto exchanges including Binance, Mexi, OKX and also BitGet. So what are your thoughts on Theta? Do you think it's a project with a big future? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and share the video. For more content, you can subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. I'm James, reporting for Cowkind. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV. A bag of your favourite candy might not be as amicable as you think it is. Skittles recently had a lawsuit filed against it. It is a product made and marketed by the Wrigley Company, a division of Mars Incorporation. The lawsuit filed by Janelle Tams from Oakland, California, alleged that Skittles contains excess amounts of titanium dioxide. The lawsuit has underlined that Mars has been aware of the risks posed by the candy and they even committed to phasing out its usage but still has failed to do so. The filing has also thrown light on the substance that was outlawed in France in 2019. The potentially dangerous ingredient is used artificial colouring in the candy. It gives a white base to the candy. Titanium dioxide, also known as TiO2, is a frequently used chemical in foods, paints and other cosmetics. It's very often used as a bleaching, shining and dismantling agent in products. The material is not often used as an additive since the late 1940s. Its usage has increased over recent decades and the lawsuit alleges that Mars did not alert consumers to the risks of eating a sweet that contained titanium dioxide. The perils of titanium dioxide are such that it has been banned as a food additive in Europe due to concerns around its posed threat to DNA, which can also cause cancer. Around six years back, the Mars Corporation had announced that they would be working towards removing this substance from their candy products by 2021. But midway into 2022, the trial has come as a reality check. Thanks for joining us in the report. If you like the information, please give the like, share, comment on the video below, subscribe to the channel, do press the bell icon. You'll be notified of the most recent videos from Kalkine. But for more information, head to the website. It's updated regularly, kalkinemedia.com. This is Sage for Kalkine Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine.
Welcome to another edition of Expert Talks by Calkine TV. I'm Sage, your host. Today's special guest is going to share insights from the real estate market. Leanne Pilkington, the CEO of Lang and Simmons. And the real estate sector has been trending as the market changes to meet the current volatile economic climate after last year's property boom. Lang and Simmons offers a full range of real estate services from their website encompassing sales, property management, short and long term leasing, project marketing, strata management and more. So here to share her valuable insights is Leanne Pilkington, CEO of Lang and Simmons. Welcome to the show, Leanne. Thanks so much for having me. Well, it's great for you to join us today, being such a long-standing business uh, in operation for over 50 years. Can we start with what are Lang and Simmons business objectives? As a business, we just had a shareholder um, a franchisee buyout 12 months ago. Um, so we've got new ownership and the ownership is very focused on growth um, of the, the brand, but also of our individual business owners. So we feel that our role as a franchisor is to find the pain points for individual uh, businesses and help provide solutions to, to solve those pain points. Sounds great. So at present, I suppose the pain point is the price of houses, maybe the construction materials that are being used to build some high-rise buildings. <laughs> In your opinion, what macroeconomic factors are influencing the real estate market, please? Well, certainly, uh, you, you're quite right. Prices have gone through the roof during COVID. They have come or they're starting to come back in some areas at the moment as a result of the high interest rate. So interest rates, um, the global economy, the war in, uh, in Ukraine, inflation and consumer confidence. And it's that last one, it's that consumer confidence that has plays a massive part in the real estate, um, in the real estate industry and the, the massive impact on the volume of properties that are, tr are transacting. Exactly, and with more interest rate hikes looming, um, it's, there's quite a sentiment of uncertainty and, and fear, exactly. Do you agree then that Sydney and Melbourne are shifting to a buyer's market? Absolutely, yeah, there's no doubt about that. Um, and but each area, so anybody who is looking at buying or selling needs to really stop looking at the headlines in the media and they need to actually drill in and have a look at what's actually happening in their market in the price point for their particular property because we are certainly seeing those prices coming back more significantly in some areas and in some um, price points than in others. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, very it varies from capital city to capital city. Is is that what you mean? Not just capital, but yes, definitely varies uh, between capitals. But even within Sydney as a market, um, for example, we're seeing um, prices jumped very dramatically in the Northern Beaches, for example, and um, we're finding that they're coming back at a faster rate than in some of the other in some of the other areas. Sure. And what's the differentiation on? that point in regards to freestanding homes to apartments, for example? Well, as you highlighted with uh, construction materials, there's been certainly some concerns around the construction of high rise, um, not just the materials used, but you know the whole development and building um, process has been caused into qu uh, called into question with some um, defects in some fairly high profile buildings. So there's definitely um, uh, concern um, and, and reticence around buying in some high-rise complexes, there's no doubt. Thank you for that. So Leanne, what are the biggest myths um, people have to decipher on their real estate investment journey? Well, I think that we get a little bit caught up um, with interest rates. Um, so Yes, interest rates are rising. Yes, we have to be very mindful of being able to afford what those interest rates are likely to be um, in, in coming years because obviously uh, real estate investment is a long-term investment. But I think we need to get less caught up in the actual number. You know, I'm from the generation that was paying 19% interest rates and, and, um, and I survived, right? Um, it's not about that number. It's about what we can afford. 
And, uh, and the reality is that you're probably spending the same amount of money um, when you're buying a property. You're just spending more on interest rate, uh, on the interest component and less on the principal. But the actual repayment typically is going to be around the same because that's what you can afford. Um, so, j yeah, just don't get so caught up in, in what, what that interest rate is. Just be mindful of actually what you can afford to pay. Would you say, just throw this into the mix here, that a myth would be that you're always going to make money from an investment into property? I think people need to be very mindful that property is a long-term investment. Um, certainly, um, we have had periods of time where that investment has grown very quickly. Um, but we can't, that's just not always going to be the case. It's a long term investment. I think we need to also get less caught up in the trying to pick the cycle. Everyone tries to pick, you know, I don't want to buy now because I think the prices are going down. Well, unfortunately, by the time we reach the bottom of the market, um, three months has gone by before we actually realised that was the bottom. Okay. So trying to, to, trying to catch the market like sell at the high and, and buy in the low. Not even the uh, real estate experts managed to get that right. No. Um, so the governments have been trying to push policy towards making homes more affordable for frontline workers, mm -hmm. I think is the current platform for the new government. Yep. Um, and also some social housing as well, community housing. Um, in mm -hmm. regards to how your insights can help the future purchasers, maybe the first home buyers, how yep. can investors future-proof their purchases according to you? Oh, look, I think it's all, about, um, it's all about the research you do before you buy. Um, so from an investment perspective, people need to be really mindful if they're buying to live in it or they're buying um, to invest it because you don't necessarily invest in an area where you want to live. You invest in an area that has the infrastructure um, around um, th that's going to be a desirable location for people to rent. So around hospitals or universities, around train lines, transportation, those kind of things are really important when it comes to, um, when it comes to investing in property and always make sure that you do your research around um, strata searches and building um, inspections, all of that sort of stuff needs to be done to make sure that you have got a really safe, viable, long-term property. Great. Thank you so much. Before you go, we're reaching the end of the discussion here. Um, what are your insights on off the plan or those deals that sound almost too good to be true that they'll pay part of your deposit for you? Any insights on that before you go? Typically, if things are too good to be true, um if they look too good to be true, they are. There's a reason that those kind of discounts, you know, give away cars and all kinds of crazy things, they're trying to entice you into buying and there's a reason behind it. So make sure that you do your research and you, uh, you know who's building it, you know who the developers are and you know what the comparable prices are in the market and get independent um, confirmation of what the expected rent is going to be. Don't just take what you've been, what's written on the brochure. Okay, thank you so much. Sounds like being brave and bold will help investors on their real estate journey. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today, Leanne. And if you just joined us, we had an informative discussion with Leanne Pilkington. She's the CEO of Lang & Simmons. To watch the full recording, head to Calkai Media's YouTube channel. Keep watching for more of these live expert talks and market insights. Till the next episode, stay apprised and invest wise with Calkai Media. Hi, I'm James Preston and thanks for joining me on Cowkind TV for a trending news update. Fitness franchise F45 is reeling in the wake of co-founder Adam Gilchrist stepping down from his role as CEO and chairman of the board of directors. The announcement has had a catastrophic result for the company's share price, which experienced a massive dip of 60% on Wednesday US time to a low of just 79 cents. A far cry from its floating price on the New York Stock Exchange last July of $16.10 a share. Alongside Gilchrist's resignation, the company will also be laying off 110 staff from its head office in a bid to ease concerns surrounding changing macroeconomic and business conditions. 
F45 had planned to unveil 1,500 new franchises this year, but will now aim for less than 450, with its forecast revenue slashed from $275 million to $130 million. The company believes the decision to cull 45% of its corporate workforce will help to ensure positive cash flow moving forward. Despite the backing of Hollywood A-listers like Mark Wahlberg and also superstar former footballer David Beckham, expansion has been difficult for the company since the pandemic began, with loans difficult to come by for the anticipated $250,000 cost to set up a gym. With Gilchrist's departure, independent board director Ben Coates, who was also the managing director of Cool Guardian Investments, will now act as interim CEO. And here at Calkine, we'll keep you up to date with all the latest developments from F45 and other major players across American, Australian and global markets. So make sure to keep it locked here on Calkine TV and don't forget to subscribe. I'm James, signing off for now. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calkine TV. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Calkine Media's growing platform, Calkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Calkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at calkine.com. What is Avarice Crypto and is it safe? Cryptocurrencies were initially launched as digital currencies powered by the blockchain tech. With the passage of time, the definition seems to be changing. Most cryptos today represent a particular project. For example, the audio token represents a decentralized music streaming service, Audius. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm Sage for Calkai Media. So as of writing this report, crypto assets like Bitcoin and Ether are extending their gains with Ethereum now being almost up 45% over the last week. Avarice Crypto is the latest entrant in the already inundated field of crypto assets. Even though not yet listed on the major crypto exchanges, Avarice Crypto is trending in the cryptoverse. The dictionary meaning of the term Avarice is extreme greed. What is Avarice Crypto and what does the project do? Let's explore. So what is Avarice Crypto? Avarice is a project within the decentralized app or dApp subcategory of cryptocurrencies. It is largely concentrated on the Binance Smart Chain and the BNB token. BNB is one of the top five crypto assets with market cap of over 40 billion US dollars as of writing. Avarice's DeFi is inviting users to partake in auctions where the BNB crypto can be staked for Avarice's native AVC token. The next step is the staking of the AVC token which Avarice claims helps earn daily interest. It is also stated that the duration of staking can increase the staking bonus of the user and additionally it says that BNB dividends are paid in proportion to the quantum of stake tokens. The process it is claimed is automated using smart contracts. The platform can be accessed using a smartphone and Avarice also has a lucrative referral system. The entire process of staking can be understood as buying the native AVC token using the BNB crypto. Is Avarice Crypto safe? 
Well, avarice is a very new entrant in a field that is already teeming with tens of thousands of crypto assets. The crypto has its hopes pinned on users staking their BNB holdings to buy the native AVC token with a view to earn interest and bonus. A few days back, the project tweeted about rewarding YouTubers for posting videos promoting the project. A DeFi protocol, which Avarice claims to be, can be complicated. It is being touted as a new way of finance where lenders and borrowers function without an intermediary like a bank. So to put things in perspective for you, Celsius Network, which is considered a DeFi platform, grew before crashing and it has now filed for bankruptcy. The AVC token is neither listed on major price tracking platforms like CoinMarketCap nor on any major exchanges like Binance. And even though such things do not have much to do with the authenticity of any cryptocurrency, they at least bring in some positive sentiments. So the bottom line. Avarice is a new crypto project in the field of DeFi. The native token AVC is yet to list on major exchanges. Additionally, how the interest and bonus parts would work will become clear only with the passage of time. And for now, it is inviting crypto enthusiasts to buy the AVC token by using BNB. Thanks so much for joining us. If you do like this information, please give it a like, share, comment on the video below, subscribe to the channel, press that bell icon, you'll be notified of the most recent videos from Calkine. But for more articles, please head to the website, calkinemedia.com. I'm Sage for Calkine Media. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph, sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calkine TV. It takes time and perseverance to find the ideal blend of investments. And the availability of those assets may deter younger investors who have recently started to examine the market. In particular, inflation, interest rate increases, and a general market decline have all increased volatility. For new investors, there is fortunately hope, with some excellent investment choices available that not only provide some relief from that volatility, but they also have the potential for long-term income growth. Let's have a look at the top two Toronto Stock Exchange listed stocks and find out why they're worth exploring. The first one is Bank of Montreal. BMO stock has declined in 2022, as has the stock of all major banks. But despite that decline, the company appears to be an option for long-term and growth-oriented investors. And speaking of expansion, BMO attempted to buy Bank of the West late last year. The acquisition deal has not yet been completed, but it's expected to allow the Bank of Montreal to operate in several additional areas in the US. The agreement can also help BMO become one of the largest banks in the important markets like California. In the second quarter of 2022, the bank reported earnings per share jumping to 713 from 1.91 the previous year. Meanwhile, the common equity tier 1 ratio increased to 16% from just 13%, same comparable period. And then for the third quarter of this year, the bank increased its dividend by six cents and said it will distribute 1.39 per unit to shareholders of its common shares. Another stock to look at is Northland Power. Adding a few defensive assets is essential during times of increased market instability. Utilities like Northland Power could be one of the options in this regard. The company is one of Canada's largest independent power producers and it has business operations across North America, Latin America, Asia and Europe. In April, the utility business announced a new worldwide rebranding strategy and said it's committed to creating a sustainable and carbon neutral environment. This is one of the reasons Northland Power could gain traction with the environmentally conscious investors. In the first quarter, the utility business's sales amounted to $695 million, up from $612 million in the first quarter of 2021. Plus, net income jumped to $287 million from $151 million a year ago. And that concludes our list. Now they're up to speed, hit that bell icon to boost your financial IQ. I'm Holly Shields for Calcai Media.
Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV. Not so long ago, non-fungible tokens, or NFTs for short, made their way into the world of digital art, games and music industries. Now NFTs have taken the world by storm as they enter the film and television space. Building on the Blockchain Foundation, NFTs are offering various benefits to the entertainment industry, like preventing piracy. They also provide a safe space for users to deal with other intellectual property related issues. NFTs are reshaping the entertainment industry and leveraging the power of pop culture while offering production houses and additional revenue source. Filmmakers now have a new way to share their content with audiences and some of the recent films like Dune, Zero Contact and In the Mood for Love have their own NFTs. So what are the latest trends that are driving our entertainment industry? Let's explore. Released in September 2021, Zero Contact was the first Hollywood feature film to be produced. It was released as an NFT on the world's first direct-to-customer full-length film distribution and viewing NFT platform, Vuli. Another hit television show, Stranger Things, you may have heard of that, too released its NFTs. Who doesn't know one of the biggest music festivals, Coachella? It issued NFTs for entry passes this year. However, this has been a one-sided transaction for a long time. While the entertainment industry is able to profit from the NFT application, users, on the other hand, are not getting anything out of it. So, to make the playing field even, one big trend in the NFT space is aiding users watch to earn. Like a blockchain-based browser, Brave offers cryptocurrency to its users for watching ads. Another video sharing platform, Kube.com, has NFT marketplaces where users can mint chips and NFTs and sell them. And the users received cryptos as rewards whenever the content received engagement like views, likes, comments or even reposts. Another important trend in the NFT space is play to earn games. The gaming industry has heavily embraced NFTs. The platforms that offer games through blockchain technology have become increasingly popular. One big reason for the popularity is the play to earn feature that provides players rewards like NFTs or cash. One example of such a game is the blockchain based play and earn web 3.0 game B Rex, and according to its website, users can earn real money while playing the game and completing the tasks. The game's total inventory is presented in the form of various NFTs, each belonging to the player. So apart from generating new revenue, non-fungible tokens have given access to the entertainment industry to not rely on giant production houses and produce and release their own content. It will be interesting to see how this glamorous entertainment world takes advantage of NFTs in the future. Now if you like this information, please give it a like, share and comment on the video below. Subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon, you'll be notified of the most recent videos from Calkine. But for more articles, head to the website calkinemedia.com. Sage here, reporting for Calkine Media. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Calkine Media's growing platform, Calkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Calkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at calkine.com.au. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. 
If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. It's been a change of fortunes for the curved Dow CRV crypto. The token that suffered the wrath of the terror collapse along with the bearish crypto winter phase has been struggling for almost a month now. But in the past 30 days or so, it has managed to spark a comeback, registering gains of close to 117% according to CoinGecko. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm Sage for Calkine Media. Curve is primarily a DEX or decentralized exchange for stable coins, which uses an e-automated market maker, or AMM for short, to ensure liquidity. Curve had launched its DAO in August 2020 and is powered by Ethereum's blockchain that uses multiple smart contracts and connects to multiple exchanges to offer the best possible rates. One of the unique benefits of the CRV protocol is that it offers seamless swap facilities to other cryptos such as DAI or DAI. CRV Crypto offers lower slippage rates and cost-effective fees in order to ensure that users can get better returns with best interest rates. So why is CRV token rising? Although the exact reason for its rally is still unclear, but on 18th July it was added on First Trade Securities online investment brokerage, First Trade's platform offers the users the feature of interoperability between all available products and investment types. This allows them to gain exposure to other asset classes with as little as one US dollar. The news seems to have buoyed the market participants as well as it saw its RSI zoom to 63.68 during the intraday trading session. The ADX saw an upward swing with the directions indicating a movement upwards, assuming this continues. The MACD line reflects ADX view with the signal line well below the MACD line. However, the momentum is not that strong to indicate a massive rally, but enough to keep the market participants interested. How is CRV price faring? The 88th ranked CRV token was up by 9.88% on Tuesday and was trading at US $1.28 with a trading volume of US $338,529,350 US dollars, according to CoinMarketCap. The token enjoyed a live market cap of US $668,412,837. And CRV's good market performance seems to also have a positive effect on its volume as well. The volume was up by 85.54 on the 19th of July when this report was written. But while the CRV has seen an upswing, it's also important to note that amid the current volatility, it is best to tread carefully to ensure that one doesn't chase wild dreams based on mere speculation. In a speculative market such as cryptos, it's best to go ahead with proper market research. Now, if you like the information, please give it a like, share and comment on the video below. Subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon. You'll be notified of the most recent videos by Kalkine. But for more articles, do head to the website. It's kalkinemedia.com. My name's Sage for Kalkine Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine.
Why did Santos on the ASX ticker as STO shares close higher on Tuesday? Shares of Santos Limited improved on the ASX 19th July 2022 along with its peers. The surge in the commodity prices has been pushing the shares of Santos higher on Tuesday. Please subscribe to the channel Say to you for Calco and Media. The shares of Santos closed 1.117% up at Australian $7.24 apiece. The S&P ASX 200 closed lower today, dropping 37.50 points or 0.56% to 6,649.60. And sectors ended mixed. Nine of 11 sectors were lower along with the S&P ASX 200 index. Energy was the best performing sector, gaining 2.45% today and 4.13% in the last five days. So what's happening with Santos's share price? Alongside many energy stocks, Santos's shares registered a significant gain on the ASX on Tuesday. The share price is driven by the overnight surge in the oil prices globally and according to a media source, oil prices shot over five US dollars on Monday. The weakness of the dollar supported the oil prices. The surge in the oil price can also be driven by the news that Saudi Arabia refused to commit to increasing future oil production, but instead said it would examine market conditions. U.S. West Texas Intermediate or WTI oil prices increased by 5.1% to reach U.S. $102.60 and Brent crude futures for September delivery settled at U.S. 5.1% up to US $106.27 a barrel. Shares of Whitehaven Coal Limited on the ASX's WHC posted a gain of 4.75%. That was current at 3.55 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time to become a top performer on the ASX 200. The shares might be driven by the quarterly report shared on the ASX yesterday. And shares of Woodside Energy Group Limited on the ASX ticker as WDS gained 3.26%. And New Hope Corporation Limited also gained on the ticker as NHC up by 3.84%. Historical performance of Santos. The shares have surged by around 6% in the last five trading sessions. On a year-to-date basis, the shares surged by around 9.70%. And in the last 12 months, the shares surged by 6%. And in the five years, the share price increased by a whopping 122%. The 52-week range of Santos is about $5.84 Australian through to $8.85 Australian with a price to earnings ratio of 15.66. Thanks for joining us and if you do like the information, give it a like, share, comment on the video below and subscribe to the channel. If you press the bell icon, you'll be notified every time Calkine releases a new video. But for more articles, head to the website calkinemedia.com. My name's Sage for Calkine Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Kalkine Media's growing platform, Kalkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Kalkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at calkine.com.au. Stablecoins are all set to get a major boost in the UK on the 20th of July. The new Chancellor of Exchequer, Nadine Zahawi, will table the much-awaited new markets bill in Parliament for the governance of the digital assets. The fiat-tied coins have been under the watch following the collapse of Terra in May. And later, 
The crypto lost its peg too, which led to losses worth billions. Now in a bid to control the situation, Zahawi will introduce the all-important new markets bill, which is aimed at strengthening the UK's financial system post-Brexit. Although there is a lack of clarity on what it will entail for the stablecoin market, the Chancellor is expected to deliver on the vision of an open, green and technologically advanced financial services sector that will be globally competitive. In May this year, Her Majesty's Treasury hinted that it will regulate stablecoins as legal tender. Prince Charles has said that bringing a bill on this idea will strengthen the regulatory powers to tackle illicit players and thereby reduce economic crimes. The timing of the new markets bill is critical considering the UK is facing one of the worst periods of economic crisis due to the inflation and cost of living issues. Plus, this can also be viewed as a positive step as an official announcement may usher up the markets, which managed to reclaim the one trillion US dollar mark after seeing months of bearishness. Earlier this month, Bank of England Deputy Governor John Cunliffe hinted that the UK will definitely see the implementation of the stablecoin rules before August. Earlier, former Chancellor Rishi Sunak had announced that he wishes to see the UK as an upcoming crypto hub. More updates to follow. I'm Holly Shields for Calcane Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Deadly bushfires in Australia from 2019 to 2020 destroyed homes, wildlife, agriculture and public infrastructure. Now heat waves are currently taking place across many other countries across Europe, the Middle East and Asia. Temperatures have climbed above 40 degrees Celsius in some places, breaking many long-standing records. So why is the world getting hotter? Well, this map shows surface air temperatures recorded on July the 13th, 2022, over the Eastern Hemisphere. NASA Goddard Space Flight Center's chief of the Global Modeling and Assimilation Office, Steve Pawson, says there is a clear pattern of an atmospheric wave with alternating warm and cool cool values in different locations. However, the large area of extreme and record-breaking heat is another clear indicator that emissions of greenhouse gases by human activity are causing weather extremes that impact our living conditions. As these deadly events become more frequent and more intense, the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies have urged cities and communities to be prepared to avoid further disaster. In Western Europe, heat waves have fueled fires raging across Portugal, Spain and France. In Portugal, temperatures reached 45 degrees Celsius on July the 13th, where more than 3,000 hectares had burned. Similarly, in Spain, Western Madrid, more than 1,500 hectares have already burned. In Italy, a portion of the Malada Glacier in the Dolomites Alps mountain ranges melted and collapsed, killing 11 hikers. Heat waves and fires damage grain crops in North Africa's Tunisia. Its capital, Tunis, recorded a temperature of 48 degrees Celsius, breaking a 40-year record. This year, summer in China has endured three heat waves, which recorded their highest temperature since 1873 of 40.9 degrees Celsius, causing the country's roads to collapse tarmac to melt and tiles to fall from roofs. Heat waves are becoming more common worldwide as the climate crisis worsens. Director of the Red Cross Red Crescent Climate Center, Martin Alsvan, says that with the climate crisis, this heat is part of our new normal. 
Now, if you like this video, you can like, share and comment on it. You can also subscribe to our channel and you can press the bell icon to get notifications for our latest videos. I'm Rachel for Kalkine Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Barnbridge crypto soars 65% despite market crash. What's next? After a period of the brief rally on July 20th, the crypto market dipped significantly on Thursday morning as prices of almost all the major digital currencies declined in the last 24 hours. Amid the declining market, Barnbridge, or Bond, crypto generated significant traction among investors as its price soared by 65% and it was trading at US $12.96 per token, current at 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm Sage for Calcine Media. The rise in the volume of the Barnbridge crypto indicated that it could be gaining investors' attention. And over the last 24 hours, the trading volume skyrocketed 490% to reach US $287.4 million as per coin market cap. The sudden increase in the price and volume of Barnbridge crypto has left crypto enthusiasts wondering about what is causing this surge. Let's find out more. Why is Barnbridge crypto rising? Well, Barnbridge announced on Twitter that its version 2 or V2 is coming soon and will have pools with shorter maturities. The network said that as the industry is moving at a warp pace, people are uncomfortable with locking their assets for a long time. Hence, Barnbridge is looking to offer pools with shorter maturities. And notably, Barnbridge is a risk tokenization system that was established in 2019. It debuted in 2020. Barnbridge functions as a sort of decentralized finance Lego and the bond crypto is the native token of the network. On the Barnbridge network, the bond crypto is utilized for wagering, governance and rewards. Any wallet that accepts Ethereum can store bond, making it simple to access the token. And meanwhile, it is available for trading on major cryptocurrency exchanges like Binance and Qcoin. The bottom line. Barnbridge Crypto is gaining traction despite the fall in the market and however an investor should research and study the use cases of a virtual currency before buying it. At the time of writing, the valuation of the crypto market had gone down by 4.7% as high volatility remains in the market. Any cryptocurrency's rising price and volume shouldn't be the only reason to influence an investor's decision. 
Before investing in digital currencies, it is important to prioritise research and risk assessment. If you like this information, please give it a like, share, comment on the video below, subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon, you'll be notified of the most recent videos from Kalkine. But for more articles, we update the website regularly, please have a look. Kalkinemedia.com, Sage here for Kalkine Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Kalkine Media's growing platform, Kalkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Kalkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at kalkine.com.au. There's no denying that lithium has now emerged as a vital component in many rapidly expanding markets and its demand is anticipated to keep rising because of its use in the batteries fitted in electric vehicles and also the telecommunications industry. Due to its great efficiency and energy density, lithium ion batteries are a preferred battery technology for EVs and consumer gadgets such as smartphones, tablets and laptops. As technology advances and the price of lithium ion batteries drop, lithium became a valuable resource. However, lithium prices have recently seen a rise due to the pandemic's impact on the supply chain and rising demand for the metal. Government policies and measures to reduce pollution have promoted the use of eco-friendly activities such as driving electric or hybrid cars. It's projected that new lithium mining and exploration will occur in more countries due to rising lithium demand, mostly driven by its use in electric vehicles. On this note, let's take a look at the performance of a few lithium companies this year. Core lithium shares have grown almost 60% year-to-date and 335% in the last year. The company is committed to developing and expanding the Finnis Lithium Project in the Northern Territory and South Australia. Another lithium player, Piedmont Lithium Shares, recorded a negative growth of around 32% on a year-to-date basis and was down almost 40% in the last year. Piedmont is a sizable producer of lithium with a wide range of products dedicated to fostering the development of a sustainable energy economy in North America and assisting in the transition to a net-zero society. On the 7th of July this year, the company announced it had got added to US Russell 2000 as one of its members. The business has also been included as a constituent of the Russell Microcap Index as part of rebuilding the Russell Indexes for 2022. Shares of Pilgrim Minerals recorded negative growth of 29.55% year-to-date. The shares have grown around 70% in the last year. Pilgrim Minerals is the world's biggest and most independent hard rock lithium company. In the resource-rich Pilbara area of Western Australia, the Pilgangora operation creates a spondamine and tantalite concentrate. Now, if you like this video, you can like, share and comment on it. You can also subscribe to the channel and you can press the bell icon to get notifications for our latest videos. I'm Rachel for Calkine. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. 
sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV. What is crude oil and how is it produced? Crude oil is a naturally occurring liquid unrefined fuel primarily made of hydrogen and carbon found beneath the Earth's surface in underground reservoirs. Crude oil can be refined for various purposes like vehicles, electricity generation and other petrochemical products. It is a non-renewable asset and cannot be replenished artificially to meet its rapidly growing demand. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm Sage for Kalkine Media. Crude oil is stored in underground reservoir rocks which contain ample storage space in the form of porosity and sufficient permeability so that the deposited crude oil can migrate within the reservoir. The extraction of crude requires giant oil rigs to drill holes up to the reservoir depth and extract the crude using primary, secondary or EOR, that's enhanced oil recovery methods. Conventional oil can be extracted at normal reservoir pressure and temperature conditions, allowing crude oil to flow through pipelines due to pressure differences. Conversely, unconventional oil is hard to extract using the conventional method due to tight reservoir conditions. Special methods like hydrofracturing and horizontal well drilling are used to extract crude oil for unconventional reservoirs. After crude oil is removed from the ground, it is sent to a refinery where different parts of the crude oil are separated into usable petroleum products. These petroleum products include gasoline distillates such as diesel fuel and heating oil, jet fuel, petrochemical feedstocks, waxes, lubricating oils and asphalt. Chemically, hydrocarbons are mainly composed of hydrogen and carbon with an aggregate percentage of 98%. And aside from that, different components like sulphur, oxygen and nitrogen are present in small amounts. The composition of crude oil may vary depending on its place of origin and the pressure temperature condition which formed the crude oil. Light oil can contain up to 97% hydrocarbons, while heavy oil might have only 50% hydrocarbons. The presence of sulphur in crude oil is considered an impurity as it corrodes pipelines and other refining equipment. If a crude oil contains more than 0.5% sulphur, it is known as sour oil. If the percentage of sulphur is less than 0.5%, it is considered sweet oil. The prices and demand for sweet oil in the international market are higher than sour oil. There are three main categories of crude oil, being West Texas Intermediate or WTI, Brent Crude and OPEC Reference Basket that set the pricing benchmark for global oil suppliers. According to US Energy Information Administration, in 2021 US petroleum consumption averaged about 19.78 million barrels per day which included about a million barrels per day of biofuels. US total petroleum consumption was about 8% higher in 2021 than the level in 2020. And lastly, speaking about the highest price of crude oil, historically, crude oil reached an all-time high of 147.27 in July 2008. If you like this information, please give it a like, share, comment on the video below and subscribe to the channel. Press the bell icon and be notified every time a new video is released. But we update the website regularly. Please have a look for more new articles at calkinemedia.com. I'm Sage for Calkine Media. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV.
build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Kalkine Media's growing platform, Kalkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Kalkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at kalkine.com.au. Who are Asia Pacific's most influential celebrities on social media? The power of social media is undenied and undefied as well. There is no doubt in the fact that how well a celeb manages their social media presence largely affects their popularity and relevance these days. Recently, Forbes unveiled the list of Asia Pacific's most influential celebrities on social media and again emboldening the impact of social media on pop culture. Forbes said that it gave special focus to celebrities who defied different odds and managed to remain active and relevant, largely by using social media to interact with their fans, raise awareness and inspire optimism. Please subscribe to the channel, I'm Sage for Kelkine Media. On that note, let's get to know which celebrities made it on the list. First one on the list, the South Korean band Black Pink. This all girls band has emerged as a sensation amongst the youth, be it fashion or the other trends. And Blackpink seems to have taken a lead on all fronts, even when it comes to social media. Its members Lisa, Jenny, Rose and Jisoo are Korea's most followed celebrities on Instagram. Moving on. There is Jackson Yi. Yi is a 21-year-old, multi-talented star from China. He is an actor, a singer and also a dancer. Yi also is the youngest member of the Chinese boy band TF Boys. He has over 86 million followers on the Chinese microblogging website Weibo. It is one of the biggest social media platforms in the country. And now, this name on the list hardly needs any introduction, BTS, you got it. BTS has emerged as one of the world's most successful music groups ever. This boy band has made history and broken several records time and time again in recent years. This year, it ranked 47th on the Celebrity 100 list with earnings of $50 million. And apart from these bright stars, various other celebrities also made it big on the list, like Indian veteran actor Amitabh Bachchan, who, through his social media power, helped raise $7 million for COVID-19 relief, and also the Australian actress Rebel Wilson, who displayed her fitness journey on Instagram and garnered followers and appreciation. Do let us know in the comments if your favourite celebrity made it in the list. Thanks for joining us on the report. Now, if you like this information, please give it a like, share and comment on the video below. Subscribe to the channel, press that bell icon, you'll be notified every time Kalkine releases a new video. But for more articles, head to the websites, kalkinemedia.com. My name's Sage for Kalkine Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Kalkine Media's growing platform, Kalkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. 
Showcase your brand on Kalkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guest team at kalkine.com.au. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calcine TV. Hello once again, Sage here. Great to have your company for the Penny Picks show here on Calkine TV, where we discover the lucrative stocks in the penny space. And the Australian share market is noting gains worth close to 64.90 points or 0.94% today in the afternoon's trade. Similarly, the Small Ordinaries Index also had been marching in the same direction with noted gains worth close to 1.21%. The performance of some penny stocks had contributed to this upward movement and let's take a look at the penny stocks that made it big on the ASX today. First up for you, we've got Incentia Pay. The stock witnessed a spurt of 41.7% today and the Entertainment Lifestyle and Rewards platform operator presented its quarterly activities report for the fourth quarter of financial year 2022. The company reported that its business to consumer revenue grew four times higher than in the past quarter. It also recorded the single largest day of membership sales worth $212,000 in 2022. In Century Pay shares were priced at 1.7 cents in the noon trade. Let's move on to another technology company, way too vat whose shares were also making significant gains worth 29% today, priced at around 4.9 cents during the noon trade. This company today has provided an update on its activities for the second quarter of the financial year 2022. And the company has reported that its transaction volume and number of its small and medium sized business clients shot up during the period. Now I'll just mention that way to vat actually has spoken with me. We have an exclusive interview on Calkine's expert talks show. So please check that out on our YouTube channel, Calkine Media. Next up, Tiny Beans Group stock witnessed a surge of 26.2% and was priced at around 26.5 cents. Tiny Beans is a journaling and photo sharing platform that was founded in 2012. The company unveiled its quarterly activity report for the fourth quarter of fiscal year 2022. A lot of companies have been reporting this season and the company reported revenue growth of 34% over the prior period, hitting 10.9 million US dollars the highest number since its establishment. It also reported overall revenue of 2.6 million US dollars. That's commendable in such trying times in the economy at the moment. 
Apart from our top penny picks, the shares of battery metal explorer Minrex Resources were racking up gains worth 17.1%, as were the technology shares and investment company Digital X. Now, on the contrary, the worst performers were the shares of Nitrile Glove manufacturing company VIP Gloves. They fell by 25%, and the shares of the software company Dubber dropped as well by 23.7%. So yes, it's been reporting season for the tech stocks. We've seen a lot of major names reporting. And those were the names in the penny space that have done some reporting. So now it's time to wrap up the show. I guess the penny stocks do have an impact on the overall market. Maybe not as much as the blue chips, but they're worth the look. However, investing in penny stocks does require sufficient capital, a high risk appetite and proper due diligence. So these are important words to mention as we close off. In case of the absence of any of these three, investors could find themselves in deep financial trouble. And we don't want any of our esteemed Calcine clients to find themselves there. So please take care when investing in this high-risk space. So that's all for this edition of The Penny Picks. Another episode will be coming your way. And until then, keep it locked on Calcine TV for the latest market insights and business news. Stay here reporting for Calcine Media. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calcine TV. Dent Crypto experienced a surge of 11% in the 24 hours over July 18 and 19, but its one-day volume fell over 47%. Now before we take a look at the reasons behind these developments, let's first assess the project itself. Dent describes itself as a revolutionary digital mobile operator that provides users with a wide range of products and services. It provides eSIM cards, mobile data plans, call minute top-ups and a roaming free experience. According to its website, it harnesses the power of blockchain technology to create a global marketplace for mobile data liberalisation. The project has a huge mobile device user base and its services and products are available in more than 140 different countries. It also has many renowned enterprise partners including Samsung Blockchain, the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance and also Telecom Infra. The Dent Wireless project was co-founded by Tero Katajainen and also Maiko Linakmaki, and it was launched in 2017. Its native utility token, Dent, is an Ethereum-based ERC20 token. Although Dent had no new updates to share on Tuesday, the market's positive momentum may have pushed the token's price higher. On June 23, though, it did announce that it was partnering with WiFiMap.io to provide the best possible eSIM user experience. Dent's recent listing on the Kraken Exchange on July 1 could have also helped the token gain traction. Dent was priced at 0.11 cents on July 19, up by 11.18%, while its volume for the trailing 24 hours fell by 47.97% to 42.79 million US dollars. It also has a market cap of 109.53 million US dollars and its fully diluted market cap is more than 110 million dollars. 
The token has a total supply of 100 billion tokens and its current circulating supply is 99.01 billion. It has returned gains of more than 30% in the last 7 days, whilst also increasing by 29.3% over the past 30 days. The DENT token has experienced a price range of 0.11 cents to 0.07 cents over the past 30 days, and if you are interested in investing in the token, you can find it on Kraken and the likes of Binance and KuCoin. Are you bullish on DENT? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and share the video. For more content, you can subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. I'm James, reporting for Cowkine. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Video streaming crypto company Theta Network's Theta token surged 7.42% to $1.27 US on Monday amidst gains in the global crypto market. Though no new company update could be attributed to the rally, the market's rebound to its former valuation of over $1 trillion US dollars could be a factor in people's renewed interest in digital assets. The crypto market tipped below the trillion dollar mark in mid-June, but on Monday it rose 4.76% to $1.02 trillion US dollars, helped by gains in major cryptocurrencies. So with all that said, what is Theta? Theta is a video streaming network powered by a blockchain. The project was co-founded by Mitch Liu and G.A. Long in 2018, and Liu is a gaming and video industry veteran who earlier co-founded the video streaming platform Tapjoy amongst several other startups. His previous projects included gaming startup GameView Studios and the live streaming platform Theta TV, whose dApps were the first to be built on the Theta protocol. Long also has several years of experience in gaming, virtual reality and design automation. In 2019, Theta's mainnet was launched, a decentralized network to share bandwidth and computing resources on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. The open source platform uses a proof-of-stake consensus mechanism and it caters to dApp developers. Both content creators and viewers can earn rewards by sharing bandwidth and resources. The platform delivers video streaming at a low cost, generating more profit for the platform and its creators. Theta's corporate investors include Sierra Ventures, Samsung and Seraph amongst others, and the project partners include Lionsgate, MGM, Decentraland, Clayton, GameTalk and also Chainlink. The network runs on the native blockchain and its two native coins are Theta Network or Theta and Theta Fuel or T Fuel. While Theta is the governance token, T Fuel is the utility token of the platform. The commodity run Guardian nodes support the Theta network and its enterprise validators include Google, Binance, Gumi, Blockchain Ventures, and also Samsung. Theta's market cap is 1.27 billion US dollars, and its trading volume increased by 78.25% to 73.44 million US dollars, with a circulating supply and a total supply of 1 billion tokens. The token itself can be traded on crypto exchanges, including Binance, Mexi, OKX, and also BitGet. So, what are your thoughts on Theta? Do you think it's a project with a big future? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and share the video. For more content, you can subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. I'm James, reporting for Cowkine. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph, sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV.
A bag of your favourite candy might not be as amicable as you think it is. Skittles recently had a lawsuit filed against it. It is a product made and marketed by the Wrigley Company, a division of Mars Incorporation. The lawsuit filed by Janelle Tams from Oakland, California, alleged that Skittles contains excess amounts of titanium dioxide. The lawsuit has underlined that Mars has been aware of the risks posed by the candy and they even committed to phasing out its usage but still has failed to do so. The filing has also thrown light on the substance that was outlawed in France in 2019. The potentially dangerous ingredient is used artificial colouring in the candy. It gives a white base to the candy. Titanium dioxide, also known as TiO2, is a frequently used chemical in foods, paints and other cosmetics. It's very often used as a bleaching, shining and dismantling agent in products. The material is not often used as an additive since the late 1940s. Its usage has increased over recent decades and the lawsuit alleges that Mars did not alert consumers to the risks of eating a sweet that contained titanium dioxide. The perils of titanium dioxide are such that it has been banned as a food additive in Europe due to concerns around its posed threat to DNA, which can also cause cancer. Around six years back, the Mars Corporation had announced that they would be working towards removing this substance from their candy products by 2021. But midway into 2022, the trial has come as a reality check. Thanks for joining us in the report. If you like the information, please give it a like, share, comment on the video below, subscribe to the channel, do press the bell icon. You'll be notified of the most recent videos from Calkine. But for more information, head to the website. It's updated regularly, calkinemedia.com. This is Sage for Calkine Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Welcome to another edition of Expert Talks by Kalkine TV. I'm Sage, your host. Today's special guest is going to share insights from the real estate market. Leanne Pilkington, the CEO of Lang and Simmons. In the real estate sector has been trending as the market changes to meet the current volatile economic climate after last year's property boom. Lang and Simmons offers a full range of real estate services from their website encompassing sales, property management, short and long term leasing, project marketing, strata management and more. So here to share her valuable insights is Leanne Pilkington, CEO of Lang and Simmons. Welcome to the show, Leanne. Thanks so much for having me. Well, it's great for you to join us today, being such a long-standing business uh, in operation for over 50 years. Can we start with what are Lang & Simmons business objectives? As a business, we just had a shareholder um, a franchisee buyout 12 months ago. Um, so we've got new ownership and the ownership is very focused on growth um, of the, the brand, but also of our individual business owners. So we feel that our role as a franchisor is to find the pain points for individual uh, businesses and help provide solutions to, to solve those pain points. Sounds great. So at present, I suppose the pain point is the price of houses, maybe the construction materials that are being used to build some high rise buildings. <laughs> In your opinion, what macroeconomic factors are influencing the real estate market, please? Well, certainly, uh, you, you're quite right. Prices have gone through the roof during COVID. They have come or they're starting to come back in some areas at the moment as a result of the high interest rate. So interest rates 
um, the global economy, the war in, uh, in Ukraine, inflation and consumer confidence. And it's that last one, it's that consumer confidence that has plays a massive part in the real estate, um, in the real estate industry and the, the massive impact on the volume of properties that are, tr are transacting. Exactly, and with more interest rate hikes looming, um, it's, there's quite a sentiment of uncertainty and, and fear, uh, exactly. Do you agree then that Sydney and Melbourne are shifting to a buyer's market? Absolutely, yeah, there's no doubt about that. Um, and but each area, so anybody who is looking at buying or selling needs to really stop looking at the headlines in the media and they need to actually drill in and have a look at what's actually happening in their market in the price point for their particular property because we are certainly seeing those prices coming back more significantly in some areas and in some um, price points than in others. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, very it varies from capital city to capital city. Is is that what you mean? Not just capital, but yes, definitely varies uh, between capitals. But even within Sydney as a market, um, for example, we're seeing um, prices jumped very dramatically in the Northern Beaches, for example, and um, we're finding that they're coming back at a faster rate than in some of the other in some of the other areas. Sure. And what's the differentiation on? that point in regards to freestanding homes to apartments for example well as you highlighted with uh, construction materials there's been certainly some concerns around the construction of high rise um, not just the materials used but you know the whole development and building um, process has been caused into qu uh, called into question with some um, defects in some fairly high profile buildings so there's definitely um, uh, concern um, and, and reticence around buying in some high-rise complexes, there's no doubt. Thank you for that. So Leanne, what are the biggest myths um, people have to decipher on their real estate investment journey? Well, I think that we get a little bit caught up um, with interest rates. Um, so yes interest rates are rising yes we have to be very mindful of being able to afford what those interest rates are likely to be um, in in coming years because obviously uh, real estate investment is a long-term investment but i think we need to get less caught up in the actual number you know i'm from the generation that was paying 19 percent interest rates and and um and i survived right um, it's not about that number it's about what we can afford and, uh, and the reality is that you're probably spending the same amount of money um, when you're buying a property. You're just spending more on interest rate, uh, on the interest component and less on the principal. But the actual repayment typically is going to be around the same because that's what you can afford. Um, so, j yeah, just don't get so caught up in, in what, what that interest rate is. Just be mindful of actually what you can afford to pay. Would you say, just throw this into the mix here, that a myth would be that you're always going to make money from an investment into property? I think people need to be very mindful that property is a long-term investment. Um, certainly, um, we have had periods of time where that investment has grown very quickly. Um, but we can't, that's just not always going to be the case. It's a long term investment. I think we need to also get less caught up in the trying to pick the cycle. Everyone tries to pick, you know, I don't want to buy now because I think the prices are going down. Well, unfortunately, by the time we reach the bottom of the market, um, three months has gone by before we actually realised that was the bottom. Okay. So trying to, to, trying to catch the market like sell at the high and, and buy in the low, not even the uh, real estate experts managed to get that right. No. Um, so the governments have been trying to push policy towards making homes more affordable for frontline workers, mm -hmm. I think is the current platform for the new government, yep. um, and also some social housing as well, community housing. Um, in mm -hmm. regards to how your insights can help the future purchasers, maybe the first home buyers, how yeah. can investors future proof their purchases according to you? Oh, look, I think it's all about um, it's all about the research you do before you buy. 
Um, so from an investment perspective, people need to be really mindful if they're buying to live in it or they're buying um, to invest it because you don't necessarily invest in an area where you want to live. You invest in an area that has the infrastructure um, around um, th that's going to be a desirable location for people to rent. So around hospitals or universities, around train lines, transportation, those kind of things are really important when it comes to um, when it comes to investing in property and always make sure that you do your research around um, strata searches and building um, inspections, all of that sort of stuff needs to be done to make sure that you have got a really safe, viable, long-term property. Great, thank you so much. Before you go, we're reaching the end of the discussion here. Um, what are your insights on off the plan or those deals that sound almost too good to be true that they'll pay part of your deposit for you? Any insights on that before you go? Typically, if things are too good to be true, um if they look too good to be true, they are. There's a reason that those kind of discounts, you know, give away cars and all kinds of crazy things, they're trying to entice you into buying and there's a reason behind it. So make sure that you do your research and you, uh, you know who's building it, you know who the developers are and you know what the comparable prices are in the market and get independent um, confirmation of what the expected rent is going to be. Don't just take what you've been, what's written on the brochure. Okay, thank you so much. Sounds like being brave and bold will help investors on their real estate journey. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today, Leanne. And if you just joined us, we had an informative discussion with Leanne Pilkington. She's the CEO of Lang & Simmons. To watch the full recording, head to Calkai Media's YouTube channel. Keep watching for more of these live expert talks and market insights. Till the next episode, stay apprised and invest wise with Calkai Media. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Calkine Media's growing platform, Calkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Calkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at calkine.com.au. What is Avarice Crypto and is it safe? Cryptocurrencies were initially launched as digital currencies powered by the blockchain tech. With the passage of time, the definition seems to be changing. Most cryptos today represent a particular project. For example, the audio token represents a decentralized music streaming service, Audius. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm Sage for Calkai Media. So as of writing this report, crypto assets like Bitcoin and Ether are extending their gains with Ethereum now being almost up 45% over the last week. Avarice Crypto is the latest entrant in the already inundated field of crypto assets. Even though not yet listed on the major crypto exchanges, Avarice Crypto is trending in the cryptoverse. The dictionary meaning of the term Avarice is extreme greed. What is Avarice Crypto and what does the project do? Let's explore. So what is Avarice Crypto? Avarice is a project within the decentralized app or dApp subcategory of cryptocurrencies. It is largely concentrated on the Binance Smart Chain and the BNB token. BNB is one of the top five crypto assets with market cap of over 40 billion US dollars as of writing. Avarice's DeFi is inviting users to partake in auctions where the BNB crypto can be staked for Avarice's native AVC token. The next step is the staking of the AVC token, which Avarice claims helps earn daily interest. It is also stated that the duration of staking can increase the staking bonus of the user. And additionally, it says that BNB dividends are paid in proportion to the quantum of stake tokens. The process, it is claimed, is automated using smart contracts. The platform can be accessed using a smartphone and Avarice also has a lucrative referral system. The entire process of staking can be understood as 
buying the native AVC token using the BNB crypto. Is Avarice crypto safe? Well, Avarice is a very new entrant in a field that is already teeming with tens of thousands of crypto assets. The crypto has its hopes pinned on users staking their BNB holdings to buy the native AVC token with a view to earn interest and bonus. A few days back, the project tweeted about rewarding YouTubers for posting videos promoting the project. A DeFi protocol, which Avarice claims to be, can be complicated. It is being touted as a new way of finance where lenders and borrowers function without an intermediary like a bank. So to put things in perspective for you, Celsius Network, which is considered a DeFi platform, grew before crashing and it has now filed for bankruptcy. The AVC token is neither listed on major price tracking platforms like CoinMarketCap nor on any major exchanges like Binance. And even though such things do not have much to do with the authenticity of any cryptocurrency, they at least bring in some positive sentiments. So the bottom line. Avarice is a new crypto project in the field of DeFi. The native token AVC is yet to list on major exchanges. Additionally, how the interest and bonus parts would work will become clear only with the passage of time. And for now, it is inviting crypto enthusiasts to buy the AVC token by using BNB. Thanks so much for joining us. If you do like this information, please give it a like, share, comment on the video below, subscribe to the channel, press that bell icon, you'll be notified of the most recent videos from Calkine. But for more articles, please head to the website, calkinemedia.com. I'm Sage for Calkine Media. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph, sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calkine TV. It takes time and perseverance to find the ideal blend of investments. And the availability of those assets may deter younger investors who have recently started to examine the market. In particular, inflation, interest rate increases, and a general market decline have all increased volatility. For new investors, there is fortunately hope. With some excellent investment choices available that not only provide some relief from that volatility, but they also have the potential for long-term income growth. Let's have a look at the top two Toronto Stock Exchange listed stocks and find out why they're worth exploring. The first one is Bank of Montreal. BMO stock has declined in 2022, as has the stock of all major banks. But despite that decline, the company appears to be an option for long-term and growth-oriented investors. And speaking of expansion, BMO attempted to buy Bank of the West late last year. The acquisition deal has not yet been completed, but it's expected to allow the Bank of Montreal to operate in several additional areas in the US. The agreement can also help BMO become one of the largest banks in the important markets like California. In the second quarter of 2022, the bank reported earnings per share jumping to 713 from 1.91 the previous year. Meanwhile, the common equity tier 1 ratio increased to 16% from just 13%, same comparable period. And then for the third quarter of this year, the bank increased its dividend by six cents and said it will distribute 1.39 per unit to shareholders of its common shares. Another stock to look at is Northland Power. Adding a few defensive assets is essential during times of increased market instability. Utilities like Northland Power could be one of the options in this regard. The company is one of Canada's largest independent power producers and it has business operations across North America, Latin America, Asia and Europe. In April, the utility business announced a new worldwide rebranding strategy and said it's committed to creating a sustainable and carbon neutral environment. This is one of the reasons Northland Power could gain traction with the environmentally conscious investors. In the first quarter, the utility business's sales amounted to $695 million, up from $612 million in the first quarter of 2021. Plus, net income jumped to $287 million from $151 million a year ago. 
And that concludes our list. Now they're up to speed, hit that bell icon to boost your financial IQ. I'm Holly Shields for Calcane Media. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV. Not so long ago, non-fungible tokens, or NFTs for short, made their way into the world of digital art, games and music industries. Now NFTs have taken the world by storm as they enter the film and television space. Building on the Blockchain Foundation, NFTs are offering various benefits to the entertainment industry, like preventing piracy. They also provide a safe space for users to deal with other intellectual property related issues. NFTs are reshaping the entertainment industry and leveraging the power of pop culture while offering production houses and additional revenue source. Filmmakers now have a new way to share their content with audiences and some of the recent films like Dune, Zero Contact and In the Mood for Love have their own NFTs. So what are the latest trends that are driving our entertainment industry? Let's explore. Released in September 2021, Zero Contact was the first Hollywood feature film to be produced. It was released as an NFT on the world's first direct-to-customer full-length film distribution and viewing NFT platform, Vuli. Another hit television show, Stranger Things, you may have heard of that, too released its NFTs. Who doesn't know one of the biggest music festivals, Coachella? It issued NFTs for entry passes this year. However, this has been a one-sided transaction for a long time. While the entertainment industry is able to profit from the NFT application, users, on the other hand, are not getting anything out of it. So, to make the playing field even, one big trend in the NFT space is aiding users watch to earn. Like a blockchain-based browser, Brave offers cryptocurrency to its users for watching ads. Another video sharing platform, Kube.com, has NFT marketplaces where users can mint chips and NFTs and sell them. And the users received cryptos as rewards whenever the content received engagement like views, likes, comments or even reposts. Another important trend in the NFT space is play-to-earn games. The gaming industry has heavily embraced NFTs. The platforms that offer games through blockchain technology have become increasingly popular. One big reason for the popularity is the play-to-earn feature that provides players rewards like NFTs or cash. One example of such a game is the blockchain-based Play and Earn Web 3.0 game B Rex, and according to its website, users can earn real money while playing the game and completing the tasks. The game's total inventory is presented in the form of various NFTs, each belonging to the player. So, apart from generating new revenue, non-fungible tokens have given access to the entertainment industry to not rely on giant production houses and produce and release their own content. It will be interesting to see how this glamorous entertainment world takes advantage of NFTs in the future. 
Now if you like this information, please give it a like, share and comment on the video below. Subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon, you'll be notified of the most recent videos from Calkine. But for more articles, head to the website calkinemedia.com. Sage here, reporting for Calkine Media. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Calkine Media's growing platform, Calkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Calkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at calkine.com.au. Crypto talk by Calkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, Continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. It's been a change of fortunes for the curved DAO CRV crypto. The token that suffered the wrath of the terror collapse along with the bearish crypto winter phase has been struggling for almost a month now. But in the past 30 days or so, it has managed to spark a comeback, registering gains of close to 117% according to CoinGecko. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm Sage for Calkine Media. Curve is primarily a DEX or decentralized exchange for stable coins, which uses a e automated market maker or AMM for short to ensure liquidity. Curve had launched its DAO in August 2020 and is powered by Ethereum's blockchain that uses multiple smart contracts and connects to multiple exchanges to offer the best possible rates. One of the unique benefits of the CRV protocol is that it offers seamless swap facilities to other cryptos such as DAI or DAI. CRV Crypto offers lower slippage rates and cost-effective fees in order to ensure that users can get better returns with best interest rates. So why is CRV token rising? Although the exact reason for its rally is still unclear, but on 18th July it was added on First Trade Securities online investment brokerage, First Trade's platform offers the users the feature of interoperability between all available products and investment types. This allows them to gain exposure to other asset classes with as little as one US dollar. The news seems to have buoyed the market participants as well as it saw its RSI zoom to 63.68 during the intraday trading session. The ADX saw an upward swing with the directions indicating a movement upwards, assuming this continues. The MACD line reflects ADX view with the signal line well below the MACD line. However, the momentum is not that strong to indicate a massive rally, but enough to keep the market participants interested. How is CRV price faring? The 88th ranked CRV token was up by 9.88% on Tuesday and was trading at US $1.28 with a trading volume of US $338,529,350 US dollars, according to CoinMarketCap. The token enjoyed a live market cap of US $668,412,837. CRV's good market performance seems to also have a positive effect on its volume as well. The volume was up by 85.54 on the 19th of July when this report was written. But while the CRV has seen an upswing, it's also important to note that amid the current volatility, it is best to tread carefully to ensure that one doesn't chase wild dreams based on mere speculation. In a speculative market such as cryptos, it's best to go ahead with proper market research. 
Now, if you like the information, please give it a like, share and comment on the video below. Subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon. You'll be notified of the most recent videos by Calkine. But for more articles, do head to the website. It's calkinemedia.com. My name's Sage for Calkine Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Why did Santos on the ASX ticker as STO shares close higher on Tuesday? Shares of Santos Limited improved on the ASX 19th July 2022 along with its peers. The surge in the commodity prices has been pushing the shares of Santos higher on Tuesday. Please subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned for Calcone Media. The shares of Santos closed 1.117% up at Australian $7.24 a piece. The S&P ASX 200 closed lower today, dropping 37.50 points or 0.56% to 6,649.60. And sectors ended mixed. Nine of 11 sectors were lower along with the S&P ASX 200 index. Energy was the best performing sector, gaining 2.45% today and 4.13% in the last five days. So what's happening with Santos's share price? Alongside many energy stocks, Santos's shares registered a significant gain on the ASX on Tuesday. The share price is driven by the overnight surge in the oil prices globally. And according to a media source, oil prices shot over five US dollars on Monday. The weakness of the dollar supported the oil prices. The surge in the oil price can also be driven by the news that Saudi Arabia refused to commit to increasing future oil production, but instead said it would examine market conditions. U.S. West Texas Intermediate or WTI oil prices increased by 5.1% to reach U.S. $102.60 and Brent crude futures for September delivery settled at U.S. 5.1% up to US $106.27 a barrel. Shares of Whitehaven Coal Limited on the ASX's WHC posted a gain of 4.75%. That was current at 3.55 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time to become a top performer on the ASX 200. The shares might be driven by the quarterly report shared on the ASX yesterday. And shares of Woodside Energy Group Limited on the ASX ticker as WDS gained 3.26% and New Hope Corporation Limited also gained on the ticker as NHC up by 3.84%. Historical performance of Santos. The shares have surged by around 6% in the last five trading sessions. On a year-to-date basis, the shares surged by around 9.70%. And in the last 12 months, the shares surged by 6%. And in the five years, the share price increased by a whopping 122%. The 52-week range of Santos is about $5.84 Australian through to $8.85 Australian with a price-to-earnings ratio of 15.66. 
thanks for joining us and if you do like the information give it a like share comment on the video below and subscribe to the channel if you press the bell icon you'll be notified every time Calkine releases a new video but for more articles head to the website calkinemedia.com my name's Sage for Calkine Media So talk by Kalkine, the crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me Sage to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Kalkine Media's growing platform, Kalkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Kalkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at kalkine.com.au. Stablecoins are all set to get a major boost in the UK on the 20th of July. The new Chancellor of Exchequer, Nadim Zahawi, will table the much awaited new markets bill in Parliament for the governance of the digital assets. The fiat tied coins have been under the watch following the collapse of Terra in May. And later, the crypto lost its peg too, which led to losses worth billions. Now, in a bid to control the situation, Zahawi will introduce the all-important new markets bill, which is aimed at strengthening the UK's financial system post-Brexit. Although there is a lack of clarity on what it will entail for the stablecoin market, the Chancellor is expected to deliver on the vision of an open, green and technologically advanced financial services sector that will be globally competitive. In May this year, Her Majesty's Treasury hinted that it will regulate stablecoins as legal tender. Prince Charles has said that bringing a bill on this idea will strengthen the regulatory powers to tackle illicit players and thereby reduce economic crimes. The timing of the new markets bill is critical considering the UK is facing one of the worst periods of economic crisis due to the inflation and cost of living issues. Plus, this can also be viewed as a positive step as an official announcement may usher up the markets, which managed to reclaim the one trillion US dollar mark after seeing months of bearishness. Earlier this month, Bank of England Deputy Governor John Cunliffe hinted that the UK will definitely see the implementation of the stablecoin rules before August. Earlier, former Chancellor Rishi Sunak had announced that he wishes to see the UK as an upcoming crypto hub. More updates to follow. I'm Holly Shields for Calcane Media. So talk by Kalkine, the crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me Sage to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Deadly bushfires in Australia from 2019 to 2020 destroyed homes, wildlife, agriculture 
and public infrastructure. Now, heat waves are currently taking place across many other countries across Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. Temperatures have climbed above 40 degrees Celsius in some places, breaking many long standing records. So, why is the world getting hotter? Well, this map shows surface air temperatures recorded on July the 13th, 2022, over the Eastern Hemisphere. NASA Goddard Space Flight Center's chief of the Global Modeling and Assimilation office, Steve Pawson, says there is a clear pattern of an atmospheric wave with alternating warm and cool values in different locations. However, the large area of extreme and record-breaking heat is another clear indicator that emissions of greenhouse gases by human activity are causing weather extremes that impact our living conditions. As these deadly events become more frequent and more intense, the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies have urged cities and communities to be prepared to avoid further disaster. In Western Europe, heat waves have fueled fires raging across Portugal, Spain and France. In Portugal, temperatures reached 45 degrees Celsius on July the 13th, where more than 3,000 hectares had burned. Similarly, in Spain, Western Madrid, more than 1,500 hectares have already burned. In Italy, a portion of the Malada Glacier in the Dolomites Alps mountain ranges melted and collapsed, killing 11 hikers. Heat waves and fires damaged grain crops in North Africa's Tunisia. Its capital, Tunis, recorded a temperature of 48 degrees Celsius, breaking a 40 year record. This year, summer in China has endured three heat waves, which recorded their highest temperature since 1873 of 40.9 degrees Celsius, causing the country's roads to collapse tarmac to melt and tiles to fall from roofs. Heat waves are becoming more common worldwide as the climate crisis worsens. Director of the Red Cross Red Crescent Climate Center, Martin Alsvan, says that with the climate crisis, this heat is part of our new normal. Now, if you like this video, you can like, share and comment on it. You can also subscribe to our channel and you can press the bell icon to get notifications for our latest videos. I'm Rachel for Kalki Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Barnbridge crypto soars 65% despite market crash. What's next? After a period of the brief rally on July 20th, the crypto market dipped significantly on Thursday morning as prices of almost all the major digital currencies declined in the last 24 hours. Amid the declining market, Barnbridge, or Bond, 
crypto generated significant traction among investors as its price soared by 65% and it was trading at US $12.96 per token, current at 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm Sage for Calci Media. The rise in the volume of the Barnbridge crypto indicated that it could be gaining investors' attention. And over the last 24 hours, the trading volume skyrocketed 490% to reach US $287.4 million as per coin market cap. The sudden increase in the price and volume of Barnbridge crypto has left crypto enthusiasts wondering about what is causing the surge. Let's find out more. Why is Barnbridge crypto rising? Well, Barnbridge announced on Twitter that its version 2 or V2 is coming soon and will have pools with shorter maturities. The network said that as the industry is moving at a warp pace, people are uncomfortable with locking their assets for a long time. Hence, Barnbridge is looking to offer pools with shorter maturities. And notably, Barnbridge is a risk tokenization system that was established in 2019. It debuted in 2020. Barnbridge functions as a sort of decentralized finance Lego and the bond crypto is the native token of the network. On the Barnbridge network, the bond crypto is utilized for wagering, governance and rewards. Any wallet that accepts Ethereum can store bond, making it simple to access the token. And meanwhile, it is available for trading on major cryptocurrency exchanges like Binance and Qcoin. The bottom line. Barnbridge Crypto is gaining traction despite the fall in the market. And however, an investor should research and study the use cases of a virtual currency before buying it. At the time of writing, the valuation of the crypto market had gone down by 4.7% as high volatility remains in the market. Any cryptocurrency's rising price and volume shouldn't be the only reason to influence an investor's decision. Before investing in digital currencies, it is important to prioritise research and risk assessment. If you like this information, please give it a like, share, comment on the video below, subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon, you'll be notified of the most recent videos from Calkine. But for more articles, we update the website regularly, please have a look. CalkineMedia.com, Sage here for Calkine Media. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Build better relationships, get connected, heard and noticed. We always believe in getting you the best. Kalkine Media's growing platform, Kalkine TV, helps you connect to an inquisitive audience from across the globe. Interact in a trusted environment. Showcase your brand on Kalkine TV in a seamless and effective manner. We connect and curate content as per your business needs. So why wait? Write to us at guestteam at kalkine.com.au. There's no denying that lithium has now emerged as a vital component in many rapidly expanding markets and its demand is anticipated to keep rising because of its use in the batteries fitted in electric vehicles and also the telecommunications industry. Due to its great efficiency and energy density, lithium ion batteries are a preferred battery technology for EVs and consumer gadgets such as smartphones, tablets and laptops. As technology advances and the price of lithium ion batteries drop, 
lithium became a valuable resource. However, lithium prices have recently seen a rise due to the pandemic's impact on the supply chain and rising demand for the metal. Government policies and measures to reduce pollution have promoted the use of eco-friendly activities such as driving electric or hybrid cars. It's projected that new lithium mining and exploration will occur in more countries due to rising lithium demand, mostly driven by its use in electric vehicles. On this note, let's take a look at the performance of a few lithium companies this year. Core lithium shares have grown almost 60% year-to-date and 335% in the last year. The company is committed to developing and expanding the Finnis Lithium project in the Northern Territory and South Australia. Another lithium player, Piedmont Lithium Shares, recorded a negative growth of around 32% on a year-to-date basis and was down almost 40% in the last year. Piedmont is a sizable producer of lithium with a wide range of products dedicated to fostering the development of a sustainable energy economy in North America and assisting in the transition to a net-zero society. On the 7th of July this year, the company announced it had got added to US Russell 2000 as one of its members. The business has also been included as a constituent of the Russell Microcap Index as part of rebuilding the Russell Indexes for 2022. Shares of Pilgrim Minerals recorded negative growth of 29.55% year-to-date. The shares have grown around 70% in the last year. Pilgrim Minerals is the world's biggest and most independent hard rock lithium company. In the resource-rich Pilbara area of Western Australia, the Pilgangora operation creates a spondamine and tantalite concentrate. Now, if you like this video, you can like, share and comment on it. You can also subscribe to the channel and you can press the bell icon to get notifications for our latest videos. I'm Rachel for Calkine.